are you, man? I'm doing okay. Just having a lazy month. Oh, lazy. Uh, what day is it today? Saturday? I don't know what's going Today's on. Today's a Saturday, and you deserve a break. So we're putting your ass to work, Cork. Yeah. I'm glad you're oh, here, man. I can't really play StarCraft anyway today. I'm, uh, I had my game against Eviador for STPL early, and I just let a bunch of lings in and lost. It was very sad. Fucking drone man with his lings. It's entirely my fault. Is his main uh, Zerg, or does he play yeah. off other races? Uh, he, he, Eviador is the original Van Dominator. But, uh, I mean, he... His I main love is that Zerg. guy. He's like a dinosaur. He's been around forever. Yeah, there's a uh, fed on team liquid about uh, Nazgul where a bunch of yeah. boomers are just talking about uh, the old days. Yeah, they had one thread that they put up and then they deleted the fucking thing and they reposted it because I, I don't think they paid enough respect to Nazgul with the initial post. And anyways, I had like written some heartfelt thing because I used to play with Nazgul. It was my um, connection to GG and Liquid. And I just couldn't remember what I wrote, man. And I couldn't find that old thread, so I just didn't post anything. But it is an epic uh, thread. And uh, yeah, Nazgul, huge name. But Drone was a huge name back in the day. Yep. I know it sounds kind of lame at our age to be like, yeah, this Brood War Gamer was a huge name back in the day, but uh, Liquid and GG were the shit. If you can get into those teams, you were guaranteed better training partners. Although uh, a bunch of them cheated <laughs> during like the first, I think like international StarCraft events. Uh, what was it called? The one uh, where they went to that island. It was in 2000. Even Elki and them were just kind of like, I don't know, they were giving each other wins and that's how they qualified. Well before my time. <sighs> yeah, I think you would have enjoyed those days, Quirk, because it was kind of like freestyling it. It wasn't rigid. You, you had some like wiggle room. You could kind of make shit up. But as long as you had some decent game sense and micro, uh, you were okay. Now you just look like a fool doing anything that's not um, by the book. Anyways, guys, we got uh, we got Quirk in the house, which I'm really glad because we got two Kotas matches, and he's gonna help us make sense of what's going on. We got first, uh, Bonneth versus Mihu. What do you think, Quark? Uh, should be good. I mean, it, Mihu is a fantastic player. Bonneth is obviously Bonneth, so... Yeah. And uh, you casted DeWalt versus Mihu. I think it was two weeks ago. DeVault is on our YouTube, Deep and Quick, DTV. Uh, so I guess you can compare DeWalt's games against him with uh, Bonneth versus Mihu. Yeah, uh, where are they in the BS side? Are they on opposite side of the bracket? I haven't the looked, place? but uh, I don't care. I don't think anybody hasn't watched BSL. Like they're both obviously still in there. Well, um, I'm just thinking, is this going to be a, a preview of the BSL final? Oh man, I don't know. There's been so many upsets. Who knows who's going to make it? But it might be kind of cool. This so, was recently played, like a few weeks ago. Uh, this could be a semi-final, but they're, they're on the same side of the bracket. So, uh, this this is likely to be a preview of the uh, BSL semi-final. Alright, I think I've done everything on my end to try to promote this event. Maybe we can just get into it. Yeah, so the first matchup, Bonnet versus Mihu, and then we'll have DeWalt versus Gorinich, ABZ. I was actually joining the game. Hold on. Okay. You heartbreak bitch. Okay, yeah. So the first map is Heartbreak Bridge. Um, there's going to be some funky maps in this match between uh, Mihu and Bonif, as opposed to the. Uh, the Walt and Mihu one, if you remember, they played on more standard maps. Yeah. The first thing I'm thinking about is, is Bonif going to send out an early probe for Gastiel and Foxy Gate? Because Heartbreak Ridge is out of the meta, has been for a while, and there's a lot of different places you can hide a gateway. I think TT1 was telling me that you can actually just uh, put a pylon in the middle of the map 
or like on the middle side of the wall and then build a gateway inside their base using the pylon on the other side. It's kind of neat. But it doesn't look like there's going to be any kind of... Oh, there's a probe, so this is going to be a gas deal. And that makes a lot of sense because with the Terran at 3 o'clock, their gas is really exposed. So this, uh, this is a smart play. I would expect that Mihu is pretty comfortable with gas deals given that uh, Eclipse is in the, the map pool. Everybody is uh, playing against gas deals all the time at the moment. But that's no reason not to do one. Uh, for me with gas deals, the main thing is just do you have a coherent plan on how you're going to follow it up? Because uh, you can do gas steel, but the Terran knows basically what they're going to do against the gas steel these days. They're going to find the hidden racks. Oh, the third hidden gate if there is one. They're going to eBay block you. They will uh, and then just take their own expansion with Blanco and catch up. So I like gas expands if uh, you have like a clear strategy for what the follow-up is. And I'm sure one of does. Taking his own gateway. And I'm sure he's going to go into gas himself. Although, actually, wait a second. Why is he not building a probe? Okay, he just missed a bit of probe production there. I was like, is he going <laughs> to... There was nothing he could be building. He was saved up a hundred minerals. And he's just microing with the probe. That, he's going to kill an SCV. That's why he's busy. Okay, I'll forgive him for his uh, bad Nexus macro. But, given he killed an SCV. Surprised he's not taking his gas sooner. Because he can see that Mihu doesn't really have any pressure uh, for that. Mihu himself is uh, not. No SCVs attacking the. Okay, now he's going to start attacking it. I'm not uh, too certain on what timings the Terran should be doing to uh, attack. But if still not taking his gas, so this is going to be like a single Zealot Nexus, right? It's got to be. And this is, he's getting away with a lot here, because Mihu's set, sending in the SCV to scout, confirm that it's no gas, and then he's going to come out and do the eBay block. But it's going to be too late. This puts uh, Mihu in a pretty bad position. Uh, he's got to either bunker rush into Zealot across this map, or he's going to have to just take his own CC and just be really behind on gas. Looks like he's going to take his own CC, but it's, you never want to be here as town. Building a fourth marine. Maybe he will bunker rush. Oh, he's going to do it. He's going to block the uh, choke, isn't he? You can, on this map, a single depot will block the uh, choke. If he does that, then he does SCV marine timing. That could actually be devastating. Come on, Mihu. Prove me right. Lifting up his. Okay, I don't understand any part of this. He's lifting up his racks. He built four marines against a single zealot. He built a bunker against a single zealot. His CC is like a good 50 seconds behind the next. Me, he's in a terrible position. This is... He hasn't even finished his gas yet, and Bonus already got 100 gas out of his. This is... This is terrible. This is... How is this going to work? doesn't make... He's not going to get anything done with these marines, so he built way too many marines. He's, his economy is behind, his uh, attack is behind. Like, Bonif's going to have, like, Reaver before me who has tanks. I think this has gone as bad as anything can go for Mihu. This is... and I don't understand it. I, he kept building the... the marines, and I thought, okay, well, yeah, if you keep building marines, if you're going to just do a bunker pressure. He had his SCV standing in the choke. He, he could have done something. There was only one Zealot. Bonif went super, super greedy here. And he got away with it because there wasn't even an eBay block. He just took his own Nexus. Yeah, this is... <laughs> and Bonif is a head-on tech and uh, a head-on uh, army, but he's also a head-on worker. There's no, there's no compensation for me. He's just behind. Bonif even went Robo before range, but because he had a quick second Nexus, he was also able to get a quick second gas. And it's not like his range is late. Is that Nexus misplaced? That looks like a long way between the Nexus and the gas. I think it might be. But 
yeah, this is... Uh, Mihu's not going to be able to do any kind of pressure before Reavers are out. And then he's going to have to contend with a Bonnet Reaver. There's, there's no upside. There, there's no... Well, at least this to talk about for Mihu. He's just behind. So second factory before armory. And the army is not finished at six minutes, so we're not looking at uh, quick upgrades either. Where's the support bay? Oh, it's at the front, okay. So yeah, there's gonna be a Reaver harassing and pressuring. And also this uh, base is gonna be very difficult to hold against Reavers. Like uh, if he goes for turrets, he will need to place like 12 turrets to get a complete turret wall. He's going for Goliaths. That is, uh, that's a better choice, I think, just because they're slightly more mobile. But then he's going to have to contend with a bunch of range dragoons at this front too. Like, there's, <laughs> if you look at, Bonif didn't rush range. He went, uh, re he went Robo before range, and he's still going to have range before siege mode is done. This, this is a silly game. Oh, he's elevating. Of course he is. And this is. <laughs> so bad for the Terran. Range finishes. We're not doing the greatest job of uh, focusing tanks here. So focusing SCVs here. Oh, he's going to get the first tank. And behind this, Mihu has to build more Goliaths because he knows there's a Reaver coming. Oh, and the Dragoon's from the other side of the wall. I'd like to see Bonif getting rid of the mineral patch at the back so he can take his third. Because th this isn't going to kill Mihu, this is just getting him up seven workers. Oh yeah, definitely. Because those Dragoons, uh, he's replacing them, but I don't think he should be replacing them. I think those Dragoons are like early Dragoons just for map control. And then by now he realizes that Mihu's just locked down, he should be uh, going into... A quick third. You notice he started his plus one air. He started his plus one air immediately. And there's his uh, Stargate and Fleet Beacon. These Goliaths have range, so this is, they're going to be good against this Reaver. But oh, he's just going to keep elevating. Okay. I don't know about this. Not against siege mode. Because I mean, the siege mode and range uh, Goliath. How's he actually going to close on this? I, mean, I, well, I guess we'll see, but I feel like the Reaver doesn't have the mobility. I mean, yeah, the Goliath just immediately killed the Shadow. Yeah. I mean, this is a disaster for Terran. Oh. And I don't, I don't even know what to say. I'm, I'm meant to be casting this. I'm just watching and like, yeah, this town's dead. <laughs> He's got two factories, 29 workers. <laughs> I really don't know why Bonif hasn't taken a uh, third, although I guess he doesn't need one to win. He's thinking, well, I'm ahead on economy. I've got uh, carriers coming behind this. I don't need to do anything more than I've done. It's probably, it's it's a playstyle based choice, I guess. For me, I would have uh, stayed on Gateway Tech a little longer and taken a third. He's rushing to Stargate, so he's staying on two bases. I, I don't I don't think it's necessarily wrong, it's just not what I would do. I'd like it if he had uh, his observer seeing the factory, so. Because what we're seeing Mihu do here is science facility and second army. So Mihu's just going to lock down on two bases. Try and recover his work account, try and get to like three, uh, two upgrades. And get, he's telegraphing that really hard. Like, Mihu's saying, I'm not going to push. He's saying, I'm not going to push with his two factories only. That, that means he can't push because he's not going to have any units. So, if Bonif were to scout this with an observer, he could know that he could take all the base on the map and he'd be fine. So, I think that he's missing out on an important scout there. 
And Mihu gets the scan straight on the carriers instantly. Carriers come out of the Stargates and the scan just lands on them straight away. I think Bonneth saw the scan, which is kind of useful for him in that he knows that Mihu knows. But that was like the earliest possible time that the carriers could have been scanned. So that's really good for Mihu. Plus two air is not yet started. That's a bit of a mistake for Bonneth. But I think it's really cool that he has plus one air already. He just went straight into his air upgrades uh, while still doing his elevator. He knew he was going for carriers. Yeah, Mihu is just, he doesn't need to do anything. He's, uh, or he can't do anything. He's just sitting on his two bases waiting. He says, okay, I'm not going to move out. I'm not going to do anything until I have V2. He's going to sit here. So Bonif really should be trying to take the map and uh, focusing on getting his own upgrades. Still no plus two air. This is a, this is a mistake by Bonif. He needs plus two air. Like this is, uh, maybe he thinks he's already started it. Maybe he just didn't have the money and it didn't make. Because I can't imagine he's deliberately not getting plus two air. There it is, he started it. Okay, he's not made out of his, okay, he's made out of his probes now. And yeah, he just needs to play this slow. Just take his own bases. Don't know why that was the place to build a command center. <laughs> That's not where I would have placed it, but okay. He's gonna try another one there. I don't know, Mihu, is this bait? Is that what we're doing? Because, I mean, surely the Reaver's just going to do this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we're just going to send another... <laughs> like, that command center is a liability. I just, just build it anywhere else. Oh, he's so clear on exactly what tank range is. That was right on the edge of it. But yeah, I think Bonnie should have taken a fourth already. Because Mihu is not ever going to attack. Mihu is getting his upgrades. He's got 2-1 uh, almost done. But he do still doesn't have a factory count. He is telegraphing really hard that this game is just going to be him getting free bases. And given that Bonif knows that, I don't see why he's uh, not playing it. Uh, he's not taking a few more bases himself. He doesn't need all these units. All these units are defending against attacks that's never coming. Is it easy to snipe Terran's uh, gas at the natural with the carriers on this map? And it looks like it should be. I uh, I don't haven't played this map a bunch in like twelve years, but yeah, I mean, I mean Terran would be map, screwed, yeah. right? They wouldn't have enough gas to make Goliaths, and you just keep making carriers. Yeah, I mean that that does stand to reason. So I'm two one is finishing gaming, now. Guys. No, I mean, it stands to reason. It's a good comment. So we have now two one uh, finishing, and yeah, they just finished. And the only thing that uh, he's going to do now is wait for free two. So yeah, Bonif is taking uh, 6 o'clock, but he could have taken 6 o'clock a year ago and then also taken bottom right a year ago. There's no need for him to even make units. So Bonif is on plus zero with his forge. He hasn't got a single upgrade. So all these ground units are actually going to become pretty useless soon. Oh, careful with those carriers, Bonif. He loses one, but he gets a bit of compensation with the Reaver. But if you uh, think about how quickly Mihu's heading towards his armor, once he ha has plus three armor, the uh, mech unit is going to have four armor apiece. The Zealots do two hits uh, of eight, which means that Zealot damage is going to be negligible once uh, Mihu has his upgrades free free, assuming Bonif doesn't proceed to get his own upgrades. So, I mean, on the one hand, Bonif is impossibly far ahead and he can't ever lose. On the other hand, I'm a little bit worried about uh, all these ground units because the ground units aren't going to do ship. And if all Bonif is doing is carriers, and it looks like all he wants to do is carriers, I wouldn't mind seeing a second core. It's tough for Terran to get that new expansion up, huh? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not necessarily tough for Terran, it's tough for Mihu because he's like, what, 70 supply behind. I think the lesson here is don't get 70 supply behind. Beautiful. This game started with us seeing 
a guy trying to kill a Reaver with mass SCV. <laughs> and it didn't get any better from then. Those three tanks at the top are doing a lot of work. Like the Dragoons that were set to deal with the tanks are all dead. And now those three tanks are just shelling everything. But the Bonif has noticed, here come the carriers. And yeah, I mean it's there's nothing you can do. I I really hate me who's response to that gas deal. That just wasn't it didn't make any sense. I don't know what he thought was going on, but he went uh, building a bunch of marines into bunker rushing himself against a player who was going single zealot nexus with no gas. Just I let, <laughs> I'm describing me who's response. It just sounds really silly. Like yeah, he he bunker rushed himself. And it's not that's not hyperbole by me. I'm not like trying to make it sound silly. It really was that's just what he did. He's like, yeah, this is the point of the game where you bunker rush your own base. So yeah, th it's, This is over, right? There's no way he's coming back from this. Yeah, it's I mean he should leave. He's got two bases, uh one of which is mined out against a Photos who has the entire map and Max a bunch of carriers. I mean, yeah, but he's not leaving. Is that like a fuck you if you stay in the game? I mean, no, I, I'm not going to... I don't know Mihu. I don't know just what he does. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, some it, players please. like do really want to like play it out to the last worker. Mm. And some players are like, no, nah, this is a waste of time. And it, it just depends on... The, their own preferences, I guess. Okay, yeah, he, he's given up. Yeah, that just made no sense at all for me. I. Bonus build, I think, could have had a bit of optimization in terms of, uh, or not his build order necessarily, his, uh, his strategy. Because once he realized that Mihu was just going to wait for free to upgrades, he could have uh, been a little more aggressive with his expansions. But at the same time, it's uh, Mihu's build was just nonsensical. It just didn't. And he bunker rushed himself. Don't bunker rush yourself. Bunker rush the other player. All right, what's this map about? This map is about the double gas in the corners. This is Polaris Rhapsody. You like this map, Quirk? I oh, don't really know it. It's before my time. Love it. Oh, well, it was during the years when I wasn't playing. I do know that it's another two-player map, and again, uh, with me who in the bottom right, his gas is exposed. I wouldn't be super surprised if Bonif went for a second gas deal, given how that one went. Because me who's just his building of the gas deal just didn't add up. It's. On the one hand, his tech was late, but on the other hand, so was his economy. There was no trade-off. There was no, well, I'll give up this in order to have that. It's just, yeah, I'll do everything badly. Okay, so no uh, gas deal, no proxy in this game. I never noticed this black goo underneath the mineral patches. I guess I was blind this whole time. Not have I. You see it too? Yeah, I, I see it. Okay, so only on the bottom right co side of the middle, so gives them a bit, little bit of depth. No, so far, going normal. Bonif going just gateway. Me going uh, depot into Vax, I'm assuming. We should sell these replays for five bucks a pop. The who? It's, uh, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, the problem with uh, watching Barnet replays is that nobody can do what he does. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay, so Mihu isn't taking his gas. Are we going for a Vax expand here? Is that what we're doing? The SUV just bugging out below his Vax. It just can't move. There we go. The SUV below the Vax. Uh, I've been trying to, to get outside for like 20 seconds. 
And he's looking for the proxy gates. That's a common place to put proxy gates on this map. But Barnip is going straight into uh, the uh, core build and free probes on gas. A lot of players at the moment are doing uh, reduced probes on gas in order to speed up their mining early for quick nexus and delay their range. But that is not what we're seeing. Barnip is going straight for the uh, quick Dragoon with Dragoon range. Oh, don't get gas. Does it not matter if he does? Uh, I think it does matter. Yeah. Oh uh, my god, it happened. I'm not a Terran, so this is going to be speculative. But to me, he's going to. Bonus is going to go to Goon Range. Although I, I wouldn't mind seeing him cancel the probe to get to Goon Range out slightly faster at this point. Because the Goon Range is slowed slightly by the uh, gas deal. And Miku's going to be repairing a bunker for a year. <laughs> like, he will uh, just build a bunker and he will repair it. But even so, against uh, the Goon Range this quickly with no. Gas, it's gonna, it's gonna be a lot of time spent repairing the bunker. And the first Dragoon showing up, the bunker hasn't started. What is me who. Oh, so that's, that's a probe. Never mind. That's, he's doing a. Uh, are we doing Proxy Robo? I think we're doing Proxy Robo. Oh, another thing he could do here is just uh, throw down two more gateways and uh, just do free gate Goon all in. Against a delayed siege mode, free gate Goon all in is pretty strong. Me who's looking for it? Okay, that's cool. Busted. He, yeah, he's gonna find it. Although these uh, marines are now no longer guarding the uh, bunker. <laughs> There's a good chance they'll lose one on the way back. He's gonna lose more than one on the way back. That was worth it for Bonif. Because Mihu does not want to be replacing these marines right now, but he has to because he has no factory. Right. He's a long way from siege mode. A bunker with one marine in it is just a fake bunker. It doesn't do anything. It's you can ignore it. But it has four probes on gas. That's an odd choice. And this second dragoon being all the way back here means that he won't actually get too much damage to the bunker. So this isn't working the way Bonif had originally planned. I think this is not what he had envisioned, because he, I think he was wanting to have a few Dragoons just uh, wailing on that bunker the entire time that the uh, delayed factory was uh, waiting. But his range got delayed by the uh, the gas deal. He didn't get his range on time and he didn't cancel the probe, so he, his range is super late. And then the Dragoons that are meant to be doing the punish, they are not here to do the punish at the right time. So this is Dragoon range against Marines, he shouldn't take any damage. Oh, is this this is going to be like a high latency issue, surely? Bonif well, can micro dragoon against marines with range. He's got no, he should have no trouble doing that. Bonif is down seven workers. I know that the CC was quicker than the uh, Nexus, but I mean something's gone wrong here for him as well. He's down eight workers. I feel like when you do the gas thing, it throws everybody off. And you're just kind well, of we freestyling it from there. We were seeing last game that he was missing a bunch of uh, his his uh, probe timings too. This is down 10 workers. This is like a serious, serious worker deficit. This is, this is a big issue for him. A lot of the things so far this game had gone well. The gas deal was... Okay, he got the three marines, which forced Mihu to kill, or to make another three of them when he really wanted to be going factories. But at the same time, he's down ten workers. Like that is, that's, and his nexus has just gone idle again. He just he's not building workers. And this is like the thing that you tell C rankers to do: is like if you're struggling, make sure that your worker macro is happening properly. This part of PVT is so funny to me, like Terran has to make a bunker, repair it, look at it, it's all up in flames, and then you get a tank out and you gotta make sure that doesn't get sniped, like, Terran's Bonif constantly on the defensive. He's only just started his next probes, he, he just, his probe macro is not happening. It's, this is, this is so uncharacteristic of Bonif. How important are probes though? I mean, I feel like most games that Protoss players win, they build probes. Is that right? Yeah, it's it's a common factor. Maybe Bonnet will prove them wrong. 
And he's gonna have to because he's not been building probes. Was his robo late? And his everything's kind of late. He just got scanned. Who saw everything? The shuttle, the reaver. I... The zealots getting into the shuttle. I think he should have gone robo before range. Because, uh, I mean, he just didn't have the. I guess with the pylon and the proxy gate being scouted, it kind of. He had to abort that thing. But he didn't. He didn't have the, uh, the dragoon counter at the front to actually make the range punish. Do any punishing. Oh, man, he's going to lose that pylon. I really like that thing. Yeah, he's going to get a uh, tower in compensation. No, he's not. But yeah, I think uh, maybe just rushing out the Reaver for the Reaver harass. Because the Assimilator slowed his range, and then he just went with uh, a slow range, trying to do as much damage as he could, but it just wasn't very much damage. And it cost him probes. So the shuttle speed is on its way as is plus one. Nice tour placement. Attack. So we're looking at uh, Bonifacio going into like trying to map control with uh, uh, Mass Dragoon and uh, Speed Shuttles. And obviously Mihu's telegraphing trying to take his third base. Nice nice walls by Bonif. All of these bases are completely safe. That's good. And if he, if he can get on these high grounds... Uh, above the uh, Terran uh, Manuel only. That would be very useful. Because it's... He will always be attacking from a high ground, either from the uh, like double high ground or the single high ground, but uh, he can delay the CC, assuming that he is ready in time. Which he is not. Do we have another shuttle? Okay, so we have uh, Zealots loading into it. one shuttle. Second shuttle has Reaver, so we're going to go for some kind of Bulldog with uh, speed. Because he's still building goons. He's got, what, four as natural, eight goons, and he has three more building and a bunch of gateways coming. Bonif has no late game tech coming. He's, his, his late game tech is he's getting plus one uh, attack on the forge. And the shuttles fly over a mine. So Mihu is already uh, repositioning for this. He's adding a second turret. This is going to go well for Mihu, I think. Yeah, I don't like this, man. So the double shuttle gets one shuttle in, so that's good. But I mean, Mihu's ready. He's got another turret building inside the base. The uh, Zealots have done nothing. That was a really good hit on those tanks. Okay, now he's getting it done. With the uh, tanks forced back to the natural, if he drops a Zealot now to take the tank shot, he could go up the Reaver. Okay, so the tank's been uh, repaired, so that tank is no longer on the menu, but I'm sure he can get more done. The problem Bonif has is that he randomly went all in in the mid game, and he he doesn't have a mid game timing to actually get it done. If you look at where he's at right now, oh that was sloppy. He drops the zealot, so it's only in range of the one tank, draws the tank attack, and then the second moves the shuttle slightly to the right, and is moves into the range of the second tank. Loses Viva for nothing. So yeah, he's on what five nine gateways. He's got speed shuttle uh, finished. He's building more shuttles. He's getting his out legs. He's getting his plus one. But there's nothing actually behind this. He's completely all in. So when you but lose two shuttles like that in a reaver, Terran is likely just to attack you, right? Uh, Terran doesn't need to attack. The, right now, it's the strongest Bonif is going to get. Bonif has nine gateways, three bases, and he's working on his plus one. Behind this, there's there's nothing. There is no late game tech. Now he just started his plus one air, so he's indicating he wants to go carriers. But he doesn't have a fourth base. He doesn't have a Templar archives. Can't even get his plus to attack. If you look at Bonner's position, he's only going to fall further behind. He doesn't. He's going to fall further behind on upgrades. He's going to fall further behind on tech. He's going to fall further behind on economy. Right now it's free base versus free base, and he has fewer workers. There is, there is no upside to Bonnet's position going forward. The only thing it can do is exist right now with a fairly strong timing. So if Mihu were to do what he's doing, which is unseed all his tanks and move out, and that would be definitely not the play. He's not moving out with vultures. Okay, that's fine. He's going for vulture fast. But if 
Mihu does not want to be fighting Bonif before Bonif is invested in the carriers. I like these building depot walls at his front. Yeah, he's teaching. Okay, yeah, Mihu's play here is perfect. He's recognized that Bonif is all in and he's just going to not die to it. This is really strong. Because, I mean, Bonif is behind this trying to go double star get carrier. But it's a triple star get carrier. But again, if we look at this, we think, okay, well, he's behind on air upgrades. He can't even get his ground upgrades. And he's even on economy. Mihu's Goliath are going to destroy this. There's nothing... There's no there's no saving grace for Barnus build. Is this a good carrier map? I think it's Barnus. Every map's a good carrier map for Barnus. But Exactly. At the same time, it's... I mean, I do like he's got all these Master Goons and they're going to be on the high ground, so Mihu can't move out. But Mihu doesn't want to move out. Mihu is winning by doing nothing. And that's that's because Bonus build is incoherent. He's created a situation where Mihu is getting further ahead by, by doing nothing. And that Mihu is going to be content to just keep doing nothing. If you create a situation where your opponent gets further ahead, the more they do nothing, then it's going to be very difficult to convince them to do anything. Hmm. And he's just going to keep getting those upgrades. The, the carry has just started. So if we uh, take out 18 supply of uh, carriers from Bonnef's uh, army, he's below on army. He's worse on upgrades. Silent vessels. I mean, it's I've seen Bonnef come back from worse, but he's not making it easy for himself. And behind it, me, he just wants to take a, a fourth base. He's just locking down this part of the map. But, uh, this push, though, there's no way Bonif stops it. Oh, he's, he's taking fourth base behind the push. But yeah, it's uh, Bonif's peak was like three minutes ago when he laid down nine gateways and got Zealot legs. Since then, he hasn't added Storm. He hasn't... Uh... No Arbiters. Yeah, no Arbiters. No uh, plus two. Bonif, he hasn't progressed. What about the probes, though? We got probes now. We do have probes now, but even but so... But we there's, can't there's... fight with them. Yeah, there's no progression. And the entire window where Bonif was strong, Mihu refused to attack. And now Bonif is really behind. Now Mihu's moving out. And this is just, it's exactly what he needs to do. It's perfect. It's just, it, this is a really clean way of playing it. And we can see Bonif. He's just moving around in the middle of the map with his army. But he knows he can't fight. We can see him just not fighting. He's fighting in the opposite direction of where Terran is. That's running away. Oh, it's a smart play here. I think we're gonna get a. He's gonna right, take we're a gonna look die at in the mines. Oh god. Okay, well the mines will be cleared, so there's that at least. But oh, there's only two tanks. I mean, people. also like, Mihu could just lift off this uh, front center. He's already taken his uh, fourth base. And he's building his fifth. Oh, he's coming around. He's getting sandwiched, guys. Yep. And yeah, I mean, if Bonif had Storm with his army, this would be a different story. But he just doesn't. There's no... There's no actual power to this army. It, this is a mid-game timing army that missed its mid-game timing. It's just... None of this works. Oh, uh, we got browned. Supply's not terrible. Yes, they are. Is it? 18 of that is tied up in carries with no interceptors. Doesn't have a fighting chance. This is over, huh? Bonded blast. I mean, yeah, he's he's behind on upgrades. He's, he's behind on units. He's behind on bases. He's behind on tech. There's no, well, at least he has X. He's just dead. Are you a gambling man, Quark? Anybody in chat want to take Quark's offer? Bet that Bonnet wins this. $2,000, guys, come on. I would like to see Mihu build a few more factories. So the fact that his third is a mineral only is kind of hurting him here. And his fourth is also a mineral only. If we look at his resource mix, he has uh, 3k100. You want more than 10,000 factories. 
I mean, he yeah. really needs to use that gas at three o'clock. He's on two gases <laughs> on five bases. But also, I mean, it's... Barnith is just now getting his uh, plus two attack on the ground. His carriers are below carriers the... Carriers have uh, arrived, man. Okay, now he's, ta now he's taking his gas at three o'clock. That, that will help. Yeah, I think me who's looking at this and being like, shit, I've got 3k minerals, so I can't build Goliath, so I've got no gas. That DT at the top right is not doing his job. You had one job to do, DT. One job. He's got two kills, he did something. <laughs> Just... Okay, he's woken up. Did I lose that Nexus? Nah, not to vultures. Ah, oh, that Nexus is dead, though. And we're seeing that Bonif has the exact same gas issues that Mihu has. If you look at Bonif's army, we have a lot of Zealots. And as previously mentioned, Zealots aren't uh, very good against uh, Terran armor upgrades. They do uh, two small attacks, so the armor gets taken twice. But he's, Bonif has only his men in that gas. He doesn't have a third gas, which means that he can't actually build his carriers. He's building... Right now, there are zero carriers building, zero upgrades building. He doesn't have Storm, he doesn't have any High Templar. This is just the carriers he already has, plus some Zealots, plus some Dragoons. It is a really bad army comp later in the ga game against upgrades. Protoss needs those gas units, and this map here, Bonif never actually secured a third gas. He took the top right, he lost it. He tried to take it again, he lost it again. He's just taken the mid left, but he doesn't have a gas there. Is it easier to engage from this point? It's easier to engage the Terran when the entire army is on the top right. But these Zealots are just uh, meat shields. The Zealots actually aren't doing much in the way of damage. This is going well. We can get this high ground. But uh, you don't accomplish that much, right? It's just... Well, I mean, Mihu doesn't really need this base. Yeah, He's the losing minerals are a... gone. Yeah. And also, it's a mineral only. If you look at Mi Mihu's resource, it's quite clear that, uh, like, he's not worried about minerals. He's worried about uh, his gas. I don't know why he's taking this fight the way he is. And I don't know why he's not building vultures. He's getting run over by Mass Zello, and he's building no vultures at all. He needs more factories, and he needed to mine gas at 3 o'clock. He well, just... he can afford to attack the interceptors at least. Bonnet uh, he... is running low. Me, who's fucking this up? Is it's. You look at this and you think, why on earth, when your third base was a mineral only, did you take a fourth base that was also a mineral only? Because me, who took uh, the uh, six o'clock and then he immediately went for like the inner mineral only. There. And then even when he eventually took a fifth base that was a gas base, he didn't take his gas on it. It was. <laughs> it just didn't make any sense. Bonif isn't mining his Nat Gas, probably. There's only one probe on it. <laughs> I like the probe on timeout. Uh, supplies kind of similar. Yeah, Mihu needs to max out on vultures. He needs to build a few more factories and just max out on vultures. I mean, <laughs> the moment there are no speed lots buffering for the dragoons and carriers, the tank shots just end the fight immediately. Mew's tanks fired and the fight was over. The only thing that Bonif has going for him is that he's made a bunch of speed lots that buffered really effectively in that last fight because it was speed lot for carrier versus Goliath. He's not mining gas at all, eh? He just doesn't seem to like gas. I was talking about Barnet as well. Yeah, Barnet. Well, me who's trying to mine gas, he just doesn't have enough. Barnet doesn't give a shit about gas, apparently. He's like, no, car oh, High Templar overrated. The High Templar carrier combination. Just, he doesn't care about that. Shit. So this is at least good for Mihu. Uh, I know that he just lost that fight pretty badly, but on the other hand, there are only three carriers left, and Bonif hasn't built a carrier. 
in a very, very long time because he hasn't been able to afford one. He got up to like eight carriers and then he's been just losing carriers non-stop since then. He just he's not mining gas. This is this is a weird game. <laughs> just, yeah, as you mentioned, there's that one probe just sitting near the assimilator, just pretending to mine gas. Me, who's nat gas, is basically mined out. Bonus nat gas still has 3k in it. That's how little gas he's mining. Me only has two two SUVs of gas at his uh, for three o'clock. Look at me, he's three o'clock. There's only two SUVs. Oh, one of them's idle. One is idle. He spent this entire game desperately short on gas, wondering why he can't build any the workers are traders in this game. And he's just not mining his gas. If he had mined his gas, he could have plus three armor at this point, which is minus 20% modifier on carrier damage output. Because every uh, carrier do six damage, turn back his base one armor, so it goes down to five damage. So every difference between the armor and the attack is uh, worth 20% uh, damage modifier. So right now, Bonif is plus 20% on his carriers. Should Miho's upgrades be higher than they are? Yeah, but he doesn't have the gas because he took his a third base of the mineral only, took a fourth base of the mineral only, took a fifth base of the gas base, didn't mine his gas forever, and then put two SCVs on it. It's... <laughs> this is a clown game. So I kind of feel for me here, because uh, I do this sometimes in games where I'll be playing the game and I'll be thinking, shit, I feel like I have no gas at all. And I'll say that out loud on stream. I'll be like, yeah, I feel like I have no gas. And then I'll lose the game because I have no gas. I'll go back and watch the replay. And, yeah, like, yeah, I wasn't mining gas. I, d I had my probe standing next to them, but they weren't actually mining it. And uh, <laughs> you feel like such an idiot because you identified that your gas income seemed very, very low and you did nothing. You, you did be like, yeah, something's wrong with my gas. Better not research that at all. And Miku's just... Okay, he's, he's noticed. Three o'clock, he's fixed his gas mining. I think he's probably done the exact same thing this game. He spent most of the game going, shit, I wish I had more gas. I feel like my gas income's really low. Where's all that gas? And then he just didn't look, check whether he was mining it. So yeah, it's I'm losing the, the gas, game. Because I have no gas. Better not investigate that. So, I mean, both players have made this as hard work as they could. Me who uh, went tank Goliath against mass speed lot, didn't build any vultures, despite having like 120 supply and 4k minerals. Didn't have enough factories because he didn't have any gas because he wasn't mining gas. And Barnett just went for weird mid game all in, it didn't work. All right, he's about to have zero probes. Yeah, this is a weird game. I think maybe if that giant attack he did, Bonnet did at 6 o'clock had been at the mid right and de denied that uh, base, he could have actually won this. Just because uh, all the other bases were mineral onlys. But uh, just a very strange game. Both of these players are obviously fantastic air rank players, and also it's not clear that either of them have actually played this game before. We called them clowns, Quirk. No, you said it's a clown game. Yeah. But I mean, I did just say that it's not clear that either of them have ever played this game before. <laughs> That's... <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's just weird. It's... You're weird, Quirk. <laughs> it's... This map is weird. But if just... Didn't ever mine his gases, never went high templar to go with his carriers. And Mihu, maybe out of some sense of solidarity, was like, okay, that's fine, I won't mine any gas or build any Goliaths either. Don't worry about it. 
I know that my mineral income is so much higher than my gas income that they're out of balance, so I just bank 4k minerals. It's just... One of the uh, stranger s rank games I've seen. 27 minute awesome game. Gas bike work, thank you. <laughs> It's tied 1-1, one, one, guys. Nine games. Uh, did you say who you predicted to win? I didn't. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, so game one, Miku had no idea what he was doing. He got gassed on, he just panicked and bunker rushed himself. Uh, game two. <laughs> uh, Bonnet's build was uh, to just not build any probes. He got 10 workers behind in the early games. <laughs> It's like 38 workers to 28. It was a crazy, crazy worker lead for Mihu. Mihu tried to uh, screw it up with his uh, not mining gas against carrier strategy. Where he had five bases and uh, like two and a bit gases. But ultimately, he <laughs> so far ahead he couldn't lose. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't predict this. It's If either of these players start playing properly, they will demolish the other because Right now, they're playing some kind of weird handicap game where they're, they're each trying to win despite something. Alright, what's the map? This map is Aztec, which is a free player map with uh, quite a lot of interesting positional uh, elements. So for these, this position, uh, Bonif uh, has a nice wide ramp facing uh, Mihu. Which is not good for Bonif, and Bonif's uh, middle only is also facing Mihu, which is not good for Bonif. Whereas Mihu can uh, take three bases relatively easily and uh, do uh, timing pushes. So I think this, uh, from the outset, it looks like it favors uh, Mihu in like the mid game, but I suspect that Bonif might be able to do some kind of Viva nonsense. The other you thing know what's about nonsense is these player colors, Quark. And we can't change them, guys. It's going to be all yellow. The uh, other interesting thing about this map to me is that it has a Lost Temple style high ground above the uh, natural. Which nobody really uh, thinks about anymore, but I played Terra on this map a bunch of times. And he would just do the uh, the tanks on the cliff above my natural. It was really annoying. So Bonif just going for standard gateway, Mihu going for depot. I quite like uh, the 16-16-16-16 build on this map because you do want to establish your natural fairly early because it's low ground mains, high ground naturals. So you never want to be contained, you want to take a quick natural but you also don't want to get uh, uh, bunker rushed. If you ever lose control of your ramp then there's no way of getting back into it. Mihu's with his Vax natural, that's good. I think that's strong. If he does a gasless expand it looks like he's going to, then it will secure him the high ground. He can uh, obviously build his CC, build a bunker, and uh, he'll be in a strong position to not ever have to lose his vamp. And Bonif just going straight into uh, core with free probes and gas. So, not Are a huge Are we going to see a gas steal? I mean, we might. He did it last game. But last game he did a gas steal and there was absolutely no plan to do anything with it. He stole the gas, but then the follow-up was uh, pretty impotent. It didn't do anything. Come on, Bonnet. Steal that gas, bro. Third time's the charm. Is he going to do it? I guess so, but I mean, it's last game, he stole the gas, but then he oh didn't get his gosh. ranger time. I've never seen this three times in a row, Quirk. Okay, I would like to see Bonnet just build a Nexus. He's not building a Dragoon. I like to see Mihu take his fucking gas for once. Well, he, he will eventually, but he's, he doesn't need to right now. He's going CC. He's just a Vax expand. He doesn't need gas. So Bodice Delot is crossing the map, and uh, if Mihu just did an eBay block, he'd be blocking it forever. But okay, Bodice is again going uh, Dragoon into really late range. This is. I, I hate this. I absolutely hate this, uh, this play. That's a strong word, Quirk. So the thing is, uh, if you're going to do, uh, if you're going to do a gas deal to try and punish the bunker, then you want to be getting your 
Dragoon range as quickly as you can. Which he isn't doing because he stole a gas, which meant he didn't have any money. So his gas still, or his Dragoon range is really late. So let's say that uh, we're not going to try and punish the bunker. We're going to try to take a Nexus. Well, why did we go... Okay, he's cancelled his range. That's, that's better. I was going to say, why did we go uh, late uh, range into not punishing anything? He's also only got, got two probes on gas, which is possibly a mistake, but possibly not a mistake. We know that Barnef doesn't like mining gas. And now he's going back for Dragoon range, but this is going to be able to punish the bunker. So this is just delaying his robo. Yeah, I... I am not a fan of this. What the hell is going on, Quirk? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Like, this Dragoon range is not going to be fast enough to punish the bunker. And it's not like there's a very quick factory push coming because he did a gas deal. This is why I think a lot of players shouldn't do gas steel. Because gas steel is... Terrans these days have had the gas on so many times, they know exactly what they're going to do when you steal their gas. Now, if as a Protoss player, you know exactly what you're going to do when you steal their gas. You have your follow-up mapped out you're just going to say okay i steal their gas that delays their tank timing by this that means that i can then get a reroute at this timing and force them inside the base then i can take a foot like if it's all mapped out how the gas deal sets you up for success yeah definitely do a gas deal but Bonif is just gas dealing because he feels like he should it's it's he doesn't seem to know right. what the gas deal is for i think it's a protoss urge yeah he sees the gas he just wants to take it if there's no refinery there guys just take it well, that's the opposite of the message I'm trying to convey here. And he's down five workers again. And this was this was a super, super quick CC. And Bodif went uh, 13 core against it. And he, it hasn't, the bunker's taken zero damage. It hasn't, he hasn't shot at it once. Mihu hasn't had to pull a single worker off the middle line to repair the bunker. And behind this, it's not like he had a quick Nexus. And it's not like he had a quick Robo. He went range before Robo. There is no redeeming factor to this opener. See, this is this way. This is weird. It doesn't. We know these are good players, but I mean, Bonif has clearly never gassed on him before in his life. He doesn't. He doesn't know what the gas deal does or why to do it. Was the first or second game a better gas steel game? Or were they equally bad? Um, so Bonif's gas deal in game one was mostly affected because it, Mihu accidentally bunker rushed himself. Mihu was like, oh shit, Bonif has gone for gas deal into quick nexus, time to bunker rush. And instead of building the bunker at his opponent's natural, he built it at his own natural. Which is, I and mean, that's, a, that's a bit of a rookie error. I, I, don't, know how, I don't know how that happens, but... Uh... You're sassy today, Quark. I mean, you, you saw the game. His opponent went uh, gas steel into take super fast Nexus, and Mihu promptly responded with a bunker rush, which is correct. You do bunker rush in that situation, or bunker. But he built it on the wrong side of the map. There's no explanation. I've watched thousands of games, and honestly, I can't figure out why I, I don't understand this game. My brain just doesn't work. I saw what was happening. I just can't make sense of it. So Mihu is exactly where he wants to be. He's getting his plus one, he's building Goliaths, he's getting a uh, Goliath range. Let's see how he holds against this. Because I mean, it's still a, it's still a Bonif uh, Reaver. Bonif Reaver is always dangerous, but we'll see how this goes. So it's got four SCVs so far. And Mihu still has more workers. So that's a good uh, defense so far by Mihu. Five workers. I mean, he's still off on workers. <laughs> Bonif has killed five. Okay, now he's behind one. But Bonif killed five workers and didn't get a worker lead. The, the thing that annoys me, though, is that Bonif could have done this shuttle reaver play like a good 30 seconds earlier had he not gotten Dragoon range. Like, had he just gone Dragoon range after he went for the uh, Robo. And it's not like the Dragoon range did anything. He, he hasn't... I don't think a Dragoon even fired a shot yet this game. There's one SUV that's taken one Dragoon... Okay, so we've had one Dragoon shot fired all game. Shit. Okay, that Reaver's gonna die. That, that was really good by Mihu. This is why you get quick Goliath range. It's so you can do exactly that. And now, I mean, Mihu's, Mihu's exactly where he wants to be. 
He's got his upgrades coming. He's got a bunch of tanks. He knows he can take an easy third because of his spawn point on this map. It's this is me who's game to lose. Can you drop on those cliffs at the natural court? Yeah, you can. Oh shit. Yeah. Terra does that. Did that to me out of practice game. So Bonif is carrier rushing on uh, two bases, taking a third. But I mean, who is? It's just going to get his upgrades. It's going to be Bonif carrier. So I'm not going to like call him. I'm not going to say it's not going to work because Bonif makes magic happen to carriers all the time. But at the same time, if you had to pick which player you wanted to be in this game, you'd pick Miu every time. It's... Have you noticed that Walt only goes carrier sometimes? Do you know why that is? His Arbor is really good. And High Templars are really good. It's kind of like a last resort for DeWalt? Is it like a crutch for some players? I and mean, if you have Bonif Micro, you go Carriers. Carriers, you get more out of them if you have the Micro. Mm. But again, we're seeing this is a two gas uh, carrier play. So we're not going to be looking at uh, uh, High Templar being built in with this. Uh, this is kind of like uh, what we saw Mini do, where if you take a middle alone as your third, you just had to build a shit ton of speed lots. And Mini did make it work in the uh, ASL. But I mean, it's it's timing dependent because your Zealots stopped doing damage after a while because of the Terran upgrades. So I feel like there's a risk here that Bonif misses his uh, timing and then after that he's going to have two gases, no storm, no real forge upgrades. It's just not going to be uh, effective. Carriers have arrived, Quark. Their interceptors will be ready them? in here. Like, okay, Mihu's building vultures, but I feel like Mihu probably has scanned them. Mihu is mining his gas. We have four SCVs on the natural gas. We have three SCVs on the main gas. Okay. We're not making that mistake again. Oh, look at these turrets. He's, I like this. Mihu had the mineral only. That mineral only is not going to help him build Goliaths. That's not what the mineral only does. But whatever, he's got spare minerals, he can just spam turrets. And that's what he's going to do. One of needs this uh, top left base with the gas urgently. If this gets denied, it's going to be a difficult, difficult game. Are these upgraded carriers? They have plus one. Because Bonus starts this plus one early. Which is exactly what you should do, because it's 20% damage. But it's... It's a difficult spot for him. Again, Mihu doesn't need to do anything. Mihu is sitting here on three bases with 2-1 uh, coming. And he's just happy. He says, okay, yeah, I've got these minerals, I'll build turrets. So you can't backstab me. I don't need to move out. I'm just sitting here with all my Goliaths waiting for my upgrades. And once I get 2-1, I'll take a fourth base and go 3-2. Because he's not afraid. There's no there's no progression on Bonif's side of the map. And there won't be until Bonif manages to take this fourth base with the third gas. Like, the zero progression carrier build used to just be a bad build, in my opinion. It used to just be something that people do and hope that they don't get it scouted. And then you hit this time and you either win or you lose. Mini kind of changed that in the ASL with his uh, zero progression carry build, but also I have a bunch of speed lots. That was a, like, it wasn't like the whole, it wasn't like a BC faster expand revolution, but it was, it was something. It was saying there's actually a timing here if you know where to find it. But, uh, oh, he's, it's right before 2-1. If Bonif attacks right now, this could work. But it's uphill. This is going to be not a great place to attack. No vultures, though. I don't know. Maybe. Mihu, don't come out now. You've got... You, me, look, no, look at his army timings. This is the worst anti-timing I've ever seen. <laughs> why are you... Why are you leaving the high ground, Mihu? Terran strong work. Upgrade to Terran mech is strong. This isn't that. He's confident. Like, yeah, but like right now is the only time Bonif can defeat his army. If he waits for like 30 seconds, Bonif cannot touch his army. This is this is the only window Bonif is ever gonna have this game. Okay, plus one armor just finished, plus two attack is about to finish. B 
it's uh, <laughs> a lot of taverns do this, where they they push out on like plus one, and they say, okay, I'll have two one by the time we have a fight, <laughs> assuming that they're going to have the fight when the army reaches the opponent's base. But you don't always get to choose when you're going to have the fight. Sometimes the opponent will take the fight early, and then you just die because you don't have the upgrades. And that very nearly happened here. Like it's, I disagree with the uh, the Terrans who think that you, you push out on one zero and then get two one as you cross the map. It's such a high risk play that I really don't think it adds any value. But he has two one. He's taken nine o'clock. He's taking a fifth base. It should make a difference. And he's fighting uphill, guys. Terran, don't give a fuck. Do one upgrades. He's got 3-2 coming. I think he realized at this point he's so far ahead he could probably just end it. Okay, Holy he doesn't shit. end it. You want to save those Goliaths from those uh, Dragoons there, me you? I think all these vultures he has at his valley point would have been better used in the fight. That was a big mistake, right? Yeah, it was a mistake. Because, I mean, there's no reason to do it. He's got no tank count. Oh, nice mine detonation too. This was, that was a very silly attack. If you take, if you look, if consider me who's position before the fight, he was on, what, five bases with better upgrades. Again, to focus on four bases. And he was only getting stronger. He had V2 on the way. That was not the it. time to attack. I think Mihu threw it. This is going to be a clan series today. I can already see it. <laughs> Mihu's plan was I have a hidden expand at 9 o'clock. I've got double armory. I already have 2 1. V2 is on the way. My economy is bigger. My production is bigger. My late game army is stronger. There's no way I can lose. Better attack as soon as possible. It just, it didn't, it wasn't coherent. Is it that wasn't lined up. Is number of turrets in the main? No, he had a minute on his third. Yeah. If, if you think about it, if he wants to push out into the Jesus. map with his Goliaths, he does need to be able to stop a backstab. I think it's fine. But I just, I don't know why he attacked when his strategy was to defend. It didn't make any sense, and now he's going to lose. Chat is asking if I was saying, I, what wasn't I saying to push with 2-1? I was saying not to push with 1-0 oh and 2-1 at 90%. That's, that's slightly different. Yeah, give him shit, chat. Catch him like, on his it, bullshit. <laughs> it was definitely wrong to push without 2-1. That doesn't mean it was right to push with 2-1. And he pushed uphill. I didn't understand. And also, he didn't need to attack. He had more bases. Bonif didn't have Storm. Bonif, Bonif has plus one ground attack and no archives. He's never going to get a plus two ground attack. He's never going to get Storm. Bonif doesn't actually have any late game. All Mihu needs to do is get into the late game and the game would be over. Did he scan? Like, did he see what Bonif had when he attacked? What's I mean, he that? saw Bonif's army and he saw that Bonif took a middle only as the third. He knew that Bonif didn't have any gas. Like, you can't go double stargate carriers plus uh, Storm and Dragoons on two gases. That's just the game. There just isn't enough gas for that. I mean, he didn't he have any vultures too, it just collides yeah. the tanks. I wonder well, if he had the vultures, cool. they were just natural. This is exactly what he did uh, in the uh, second game too. The difference is in this game, Bonif actually has a fourth base. We are seeing the lack of Storm right now though. And it's not like Bonif doesn't have a, access to a third gas this game, he just doesn't like Storm. He thinks that carriers alone are better than carriers with High Templar. This is clowny. Clowny game, guys. According to Quark. Uh, chat wants to know if uh, you are pressured to attack uh, Protoss if they get carrier. Uh, not necessarily if they get carrier and they're also taking the map behind it then yes you would want to do something about that but in this game situation 
this was like a fairly weak carrier play. It was only off two Stargates and it didn't have like Storm or uh, Upgrade come behind it. Whereas Mihu already had 2-1, he was getting his 3-2. I think in this situation, Mihu could have just defended and been fine. I think Chad is asking one too many damn questions. No, it, that's a legitimate question. I'm just teasing, guys. It's like, if you if you, if the Protoss is on like four bases, you're already been fighting in the middle, and then you scan and they've got a bunch of Stargates, and they're going carriers. Yeah, timing pushed that, absolutely. Every day of the week, you timing pushed that. That was a but throw, guys. If you're on five bases uh, with four gases against a two base, or, or three base, two gas Protoss, and your upgrades are better, then, yeah, just stay home. The longer the game goes, the further ahead you get. Are you impressed by any of the games so far? No. Ouch. Harsh, bro. I mean, this is one of the worst, uh, like, s rank series I've seen. One if gas steals have been actively bad in two of the three games, and the only one that it was good in, Mihu did that to himself. And Mihu's attack there was just a colossal throw. Well, guys, uh... Five dollars a replay if you want to get them. Just message us. Yeah. These are the strats you want to copy. Also, Bonif, I love you, man, and I'm, I, I, please don't hate me. If you listen to this, please don't hate me. Oh, he's winning games. What does he care? It just. It didn't. It didn't do anything. He 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 stole his the gas so the tank was late, and he never even shot the bunker once. He just delayed his own natural. Let's get like one of your famous intros, Quirk. <laughs> we have Bonif as the blue Photos in the bottom left versus Mihu as the purple Terran in the bottom right on Circuit Breakers. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was a Terran going for a gasless expand and Bonif said, aha, I will disrupt your gasless expand by stealing your gas. Oh, this isn't happening the fourth time, is it? It's going to be a proxy gate in the middle. Like, who does a gas deal against a gasless expand if you're not going to follow up with some kind of, like, either quick ro proxy robot or Dragoon range pressure? It just, it's in the name that the Terran doesn't want his gas. The gasless expand is, is not a build that needs gas. This is our first standard map, I think, guys. I've done nothing but flame bonus this uh, series. That says the gas expand is all about gas. It's all it's defined by the absence of gas. Are we going for a record? Is this going to be the fourth gas deal? It could be. I mean, he's uh, gone the first scout. Uh, this is fourth first scout in a row. Now two of them oh! have been two player maps. Oh yep, my okay. god, I've never seen this in my whole life. Okay, I like this gas deal slightly better because there is a proxy gate behind it. This is the fourth gas deal. This, this one here is actually going to do something. If you uh, steal the gas, then uh, your Zellop pressure is much, much more effective. This is hilarious. Mihu is like, what the fuck? Four games, four gas deals. See, now this game, I wouldn't mind Mihu bunker rushing himself. When he bunker rushed himself on Heartbreak Ridge, obviously I, I gave Mihu a bit of shit for that because Bonif went gas still into Quick Nexus with no army. And Quick Bunker is the counter to it, but he built it in his base rather than his opponent's. But this time, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing a bunker. Is this considered cheese taking the gas? I think going gateway in the middle of the map into first scouting and taking the gas is considered this is cheese. <laughs> okay, me who's scouting the middle. Right? Me who's scouting the middle. You know Barnif is close position. You know Barnif is close position, me who. No, okay. Never mind. Yeah, this is pretty cheesy. I don't see any cheese, guys. Just see <laughs> units. Isn't that what the game's about? Making units? Using them? Making stuff? That guy with the claws seems pretty strong. He just doesn't die. He's, he's been wandering around for a long, long time and he's still there. He just doesn't die. 
<laughs> he's got one hit point. Okay, now he's dead. And Bonif takes a Nexus behind this. Yeah, okay, this is great for Bonif. This is one of those situations where the Terran should have gone for the second Vax. Because he's not able to kill the gas at any time early because of the uh, Zealots. He's banking up a bunch of resources. He's going to build a CC, I think, which is something. But Is this why Terrans hate Protoss? This is why Terrans hate Protoss. Oh, he attacked his own barracks. Bit of self-hate going on for the Terran there. Which is uh, entirely justified. <laughs> his SCV, did his SCV actually make it to the Protoss natural? I don't think he scouted anything yet. So it's four minutes in, and Mihu hasn't started his uh, gas, and he hasn't started his CC. But he does have three Marines. Two Marines. So, uh, yeah, this is the kind of game where, as a Terran, you scout the next and like, oh, okay, I should leave this game. My opponent has started their core, they've started the second gateway, and the Nexus is finished. I don't and think that's Mihu's style, bro. I don't think Bonif is going to check whether Mihu wants to leave the game. I think he's going to make him. The Zealot's still getting kills. <laughs> Mihu's had to build so many uh, moons this game. Simon so, score is going to be finished before the uh, first factory starts. Bonif is not even going to be behind on workers. It's going to be the only game where Bonif isn't behind on workers. I wouldn't mind him seeing, canceling, seeing him cancel one of those Dragoons to build a... Uh, to have gotten his range a bit faster. Oh, we're just going to walk past? Yeah, we're going to walk past. Of course we are. And the Marines in that bunker are basically there already, so they can't do anything. Oh, this is a good micro. There's Marines of Walking Corpses, you just need to tag each of them once. Come on, Bonif, you can do it. No, you can't do it. But I mean, it's forcing Mihu to keep building Marines. If you look at Mihu's barracks, it's got three more Marines building on it. And Marines are really bad against Ranged Dragoons, and Bonif is building Ranged Dragoons, so... This is not... As a Terran at this point in the game, you don't want to be spending all your money on units that are actually completely worthless. Which is is what this he's a doing. clown game? Yeah, this is like a very clowny game. If you look at what, where Mihu's money is spent, he has uh, a bunch of SCVs queued up on both uh, command centers. And he's also on 300 minerals because he just can't afford any factories because he has no gas. He should have taken his natural gas a lot earlier. But also, I mean, he got it was a proxy nine gate in the middle of the map into first scout gas deal. Into quick nexus. Like it's, this is not a, uh, a real game. This is just like... Somewhere, like Mihu did something to offend a witch who placed a curse on him and his family. And that is how you explain this game. Well, Gort, Goose headed from the chat. Thanks, you. He's enjoying the matches so far. These clown games. Yeah, this is this is just a witch's curse. That, that's how we explain what's going on here. You wish you could play like this, Gort. Five degrees attacking the bunker. There's one tank, but one is going to pounce on it. Oh, you called it. Yeah. He's got six to grin now. He can just start one-shotting SCVs, too. And behind it, he's taking a third base, and he's building a Robo. <laughs> Me, he should have left when he saw the Nexus. Look at that tank quote. He's going to start killing SCVs. He can just one-hit them. One-shot them. Three SCVs dead. Although he somehow, one of his still only ahead of workers by one. Behind this, Mihu hasn't actually started his plus one ground attack. That was a nice targeting on the uh, Dragoon. He hit the Dragoon that was already being attacked by the uh, bunker. But Bonus's third, Bonus third base is done. His uh, shuttle's done. He's building his Viva. He has total map control. He's ahead on economy. He's ahead on uh, bases, workers. He's ahead on tech, he's got a Viva coming and he's getting his plus one air attack and his Stargate. He's ahead on uh, 
<laughs> units. This is uh, not going to go well for me here. And it's not like me who's going to uh, follow up like a quick uh, back, quick attack with uh, speed vultures, trying to regain some initiative. Not like he's going starport. This is me who is just going towards uh, range Goliaths, the same way he has every other game so far, to try and defend against Reavers. Oh, LML is here. What's up, man? Hey, nothing much. Just you're watching. fucking late, LML. No, you're early. No, thanks for joining us. Okay. Uh, I think Mihu scanned it. If you look at what he's doing. No starport, no second armory, five factory. He's just going to go all in. That is the right decision. He's so far behind at this point that the only thing he can do is do a timing attack on the carriers. The guy in chat earlier who was asking about timing attacks on carriers, this is the spot. This is when you do it. Yeah, pay attention, guy in the chat. This is your answer right here. Like, Waste when your opponent is... Uh, <laughs> you're putting a lot of words in my mouth, and I don't know that I agree with them. But When it's... Uh, this is when you... Uh, oh, God. You need to identify that, okay, if my opponent, my opponent is so far ahead, if I let them go carry, they're just going to end this game. They're just going to clean it up. I have to get them before the carries are done. Yeah, this this game is so good for Tony Hat because Mihu can only win by ending the game before Bonif gets four carriers. Whereas the uh, game before, Mihu was so far ahead that he wasn't any he wasn't worried about it. He already had the counter to carriers. He already had a bunch of factories. He already had two one. And he had three two coming. He had the economy to support the Goliaths. So the Reaver is going to be critical here. Oh, I think Terran's going to win this. He gets the shuffle immediately. That was nice. Riva dies too, after only one shot. Yeah. So maybe it. And Bonif is floating a thousand minerals. He does have five gateways, but they're all idle. So six gateways, there's one in the middle as well. Guys, I can't turn up LML. He's just soft spoken. It's his nature. So, uh, yeah, this is exactly what Terran needs to be doing. And Bonif. Failing to macro behind it is a big issue. He should have way more dragoons than he has. Is there a chance that Bonneth loses this? Yeah, because he's done a build that's open to a timing attack. This was not the right game to go to, uh, quick carriers. You do away with your advantage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit, I think we're gonna lose this. So the, the very quick uh, the very quick uh, two star get carrier play put uh, Mihu in a position where if he doesn't end the game immediately he's dead but also he can end the game relatively early. What does he do here? Does he go after the third or you just go for the natural in the main? He's putting a CC behind us, so I think that taking the bird is fine. That's a decision I that's probably hard to make for some players, right? Yeah. Bonif has his first two carriers done, but they don't have any interceptors. This is the beautiful, beautiful time by Mihu. If you look at the timing that Mihu's hitting here, it is the latest he could have gone and still made it work. This was so risky by Bonif. Do you think he was just overconfident? Because he could have went like nine gates, right? I think Bonif's strategies have always been a bit shaky. But yeah, there was no reason to Ooh. do this. He could have gone for a uh, uh, speed shuttle uh, storm and taken this middle alone and just been four base, like 12 gateways. We got Kogan in the house, guys. No, we don't. He just left. <laughs> we don't have Kogan in the house, guys. Yeah, I think Bonner's strategy in this game is kind of indefensible. This is how he likes to play. It's a thing. I've... Oh, there we go. There's no reason when you're this far ahead to open yourself up to this kind of uh, timing by going carriers. Yeah, but that's all Bonner knows how to do, right? Yeah, yeah. It's all he knows how to do. I mean, there was a brief period in, like, the, uh, two BSLs ago where he did... Uh, Reaver play into Speed Shuttle, High Templar play into Carriers. And it was beautiful because there was no timing for the Terran. The Reaver gives a map control and then the Speed Shuttle Storm gives a map control. And then by the time he goes Carriers, he already has a bunch of High Templar. That was a very nice... Oh, the Nexus is still alive. Okay, Vulture is going to finish it. Uh, Kogit's in the house. Quark, just watch what you say because someone will fact check you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he left the Nexus okay. alive deliberately to bait in the probes. He left the Nexus alive, but have sent like another 10 probes. Kill the Nexus and the Ted Phobes. Next level. So a quick voice check here, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, you sound perfectly yeah. fine, man. Thanks for joining us. 
Absolutely loudly. Hey, casters. Good evening, viewers. Hey. So I haven't been following this game. Uh, and also, so I'm joined here by Quark, and I can also see LML. Okay. Yeah. So this was the clowniest clown game of the, I guess, the one game, because the previous few were even clownier. But Bonif went center gate, nine center gate, into first scout, into gas steel, and then followed up with a quick nexus, while Mihu okay. had to build build like 15 marines, lost them all to Zelots, and uh, didn't build a CC forever. It was unlosable by Bonif. Okay, and how come we're in that uh, two to three or two to four base position? So just bad traits, bad, bad engagements, or Bonif followed that up by uh, going for a two star gate carrier and a quick third, and then instead of building units, he just decided to save all mm. his money, and Mihu scanned it and did a timing push. He did a plus one uh, uh, five back and timing pushed out. Bonif was yeah. also relying on the Reaver to buy him some time, but. Uh, yeah. Who got very quick uh, Goliath range and just knocked out the shuttle immediately. Is the game even now, or are they? No, Bonif is dead. Right. No, I think. I mean, I don't think he's dead. I mean, Terran is only one zero. He has completely skipped an upgrade. Seems like so he's only upgrading to one one now, which is uh, horrible versus carriers. So I don't think Terran can just straight up kill Bonif. I think the problem is the top right base for Terran, the micro potential of of getting more bases. But there is something working there. Is that a, is that an observer? What is flying? Yeah, or it's not observer. Flying observer. Right? Right, well, yeah, for so... me, the issue with Bonif is that he doesn't have any progression. He's got carriers, and the carriers are getting the plus two in a few seconds. But in terms of forge yeah. upgrades, he doesn't have them. In terms of archives, doesn't have it. So I look at this and I think, okay, well, you've got carriers, but there's only so much weight you could put on their backs. Yeah, I like the move now, the, the potential of a backstop uh, at the bottom. I mean, Mihu has to respect, he has to go back. There's no way he just uh, trades the bases here, so... Bonif is respecting oh, yeah. the one last mine. He cleared every mine but yeah. one, but he doesn't know. <laughs> He's still uh, Mihu, Mihu on siege, because he know, this is tricky in this position, right? Kratos always wants to fight and backstab and just fight carriers over that top bridge. I mean, this is very favorable from a positional perspective for Bonif. I think the problem is, again, economy again. Yeah, right. The base, the base is just that the longer it lasts, the worse for Bonif. I think he's looking for an attack now. He must realize that yeah, he there's no like way it. of holding back. Yeah. But attacking for this, I, I would actually like that attack from the bottom line. I think he was at the right place there. Uh, you know, use carriers maybe to put the army out of position and then hit it with the ground. I think just facing like head on. Oh, no. This is not going to work, even with 1-1. One, one, this, this is just too much Terran. Yeah. Oh. If this was like a... Uh, if this uh, was free base Protoss, full free base economy Protoss, right? Then maybe. Or if he did the uh, mini star where you just have 40 speed lots. If instead of building yeah. goons, you just had carrier speed lot, it would run over this. Yeah, but yeah, it's, so. that's the problem of economy, right? That's the problem of economy. He just... Uh, Bonin just kind of allowed to make units. Okay, there is some aggression, but I think it should be maybe other way around, right? The, the army at the bottom, and then trying to be aggressive a little bit from the top. Use the bridges, so no. He knows right. about the top right. I wouldn't mind seeing him bait mm. the army down with the carriers and then counterattack a top right. Yeah. Ah. Just about Bonin doesn't know. I don't know. Is that observer in that base now? Did he ever find that base or he had to go back? I think it went to the natural. I don't know if he sent it into the main. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, he, so Bonin may, maybe. But, I mean, he should be expecting that Terran has got that base, right? I mean, this would be delusional to think you're playing free versus free base in this. Um, every time Terran goes for carriers, they just always put a base in the other corner and just use some vultures to deny any, you know, harassment on it, right? It's very easy to defend it versus carriers when the Protoss army is so small and it's rather, you know, static. So, he must know. Now it's a big fight. I don't know. I think he just feels like pressure to go because of the extra expansions, but it's not the right time to go. There's just too much Terran still. Well, his main is mined out. His natural is mining out. It's, he needs to secure his third and fourth. He built the Nexuses, but if he can't secure them, then there's no hope for him. So he's yeah. trying to just get <clears throat> enough map control to hold nine, I think. <laughs> I've been in this position with Bonin so many times. I'm, I'm really um, you know, sorry for him that he didn't try to keep on uh, maintaining that counterattack pressure from the bottom. Because again, Terran just can't go with all his army in the middle of the map. That doesn't get him anywhere. He needs to cross the bridges, right? To really threaten something or go for the entire region. So, so this tank just as you keep going down, this is three tanks, oh. two tanks. At this point, the goons can just handle oh. it. The so upgrades. Point, yeah. It's two, two zero on carriers, right? Because this yeah. tanks just pop like freaking zerglings. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's got the extra 20% damage from being ahead of the Terran armor. 
Now he... Terran just wild finishing two two only now, so very late upgrades here. Yeah. And the bonus uh, army, cars. the bonus ground army is uh, incredibly weak. Yeah, and vultures already harassing the probes at nine o'clock, so they don't even get to mine. Vultures already intercept them, so no mining uh, in the yeah left expansion there. Trying to get more tanks, but this, I mean, this is not enough guns. Even even go, pure Goliath would be. <laughs> Quite so, difficult to beat. One thing we've seen this series is that <clears throat> Mihu underbuild vultures. So uh, there was uh, two games where Bonif had a bunch of carriers, but was down like 30 supply, and he actually managed to run over the Goliath just with mass speed luck. So that is something that. Yeah, uh, we yeah but that's see. the tricky part, right? So, yeah. so Kauri, as, a, as a Terran, that's uh, that's the you know one of the most difficult parts of playing carriers is. Uh, is, is that moment when you basically, you know, you lose a couple of Goliaths or a couple of tanks and your army doesn't, you know, cannot fight Protoss anymore because that ratio is just disturbed, right? You, you, you always need to maintain a good ratio of Goliath to tank and so on and so on to Vulture. But if you trade once poorly, you can, um, you know, you can die just the uh, next fight. But here is the backstab, a little bit too late, but I still like the approach. He should just stay here with his army. I, I wouldn't, I, I would just leave my, you know, the land army here and just try to use Goliaths to keep on poking that army. From uh, from over that ridge. Do you attack interceptors or carriers, or depends? You attack what's in range. Yeah, you attack interceptors unless uh, there is an obvious uh, target on a carrier, right? So so basically you you buy yeah you spam uh, you spam on interceptors and as soon as the carrier comes close enough or you have like you know two free goliaths in range then you just manually target but just you know micro individual carriers not messing. Okay, there's a big fight. There's one arc, two oh, arcs. It's almost finished, but it's almost finished isn't finished. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> This is oh, the first no. time it's even gone Storm today, but it's going to be too late. Yeah, but that Storm would have been huge here. I mean, we've cleared so many Goliaths, but right now he's just taking so much damage, still waiting for the Storm, but it's not going to finish in that fight. This fight is going to be over before that Storm upgrade is finished. It's like waiting. He, you can see he just, he just thought yeah, it's going to be knows. any second. He any there. second. Yeah, okay. but... And, and, and yeah. Done. Storm time. He overstayed his welcome there. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, this is yeah, the first that's... time he's gone Storm in all these series. He, the other ones he just... Uh, Stayed on carriers on uh, no tech progression and ended up losing to. Uh... All right. Um, what is it? Two two now? Possibly. I think looks like yeah. Two, this two. is two two. <clears throat> okay, so still a very even result. I mean, this game. Um, I think Barnett could have could have done it. To be honest, I think uh, maybe if he tried to be just I mean, more Barnett aggressive. So far ahead. He just needed to not go yeah. carriers. Right. Okay. Okay. You know, I think going carriers is always okay. I don't think. I think you know. I think going carriers is basically the ultimate answer to Terran, right? That is what uh, gives you an option of straight up winning the fights with um, versus Terran. But of course, you need the economy and so on so to pick it up. So you yeah. get it. You missed the start of this game, but Bonus' natural nexus was done before Mihu's natural command center started. Bonus, I get it. I get uh, it. Cybernetic yeah. core was done before uh, Mihu had a hundred gas. Yeah, I, I get it, but you know the only way you can lose a game like this as uh, as, as Prod is actually overextending, you know, our army. Yeah, this is over. This game is uh, yeah, this one's finished. Yeah. Uh, can no, I catch uh, you up on the uh, games that you missed? Yeah. Okay, I set the scene. The game is or oh, the map is Heartbreak Ridge. Bonif uh, sends out inside a circus. Okay. His uh, one of his uh, he sends out a Phobon Seven, does a gas deal, and then kills an SCV. Yeah. Me who panics, uh, <laughs> queues up like five marines, and then yeah. his FTV scouts the Bonif has already laid down a nexus on the bottom side of the map. Me who instantly builds a bunker in his own natural. Versus the nexus. Versus the nexus. With okay, five marines. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so Bonif won that game. Yeah, easily, I understand. <laughs> uh, Bonif then did an elevator into Me who's base with dragoons. Me who responded yeah. by uh, trying to fight the dragoons with mass SCV, and a Reaver showed up. Uh, yeah. Me who tried to fight the Reaver with mass SCV. Okay, that sounds <laughs> like a... <laughs> so that was clown game number one. Yeah, yeah. Clown game wow. number two. Okay. Uh, for Laris Rhapsody, another two-player map. Bonif goes for the gas steel again. Me who goes for gasless expand. And then Bonif follows his gas steel with not having enough minerals to go for Dragoon range on after his 13 core. So he just mm. uh, builds a bunch of Dragoons, but no Dragoon range to pressure the bunker. That doesn't work out because he doesn't have Dragoon range. He then goes yeah. back for Dragoon range, so his Robo is delayed, builds a Robo, and by the time that he actually has the shuttle, he's down 12 workers. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I can that. imagine this kind of game, yeah. I think I've seen this kind of games, and then, you know, Bonnet, he just sometimes likes to 
gamble a little bit of a build order in a you know more of a tournament setting or a best of X series, you know, where he would go some some more risky builds, weird builds, sometimes surprising, and and yeah, for Solitaire, I can just. Koga, do you want to join the next games, or you're cool with the screen share? No, I'm okay with screen share. If you don't mind, if I sometimes comment about something going in the minimap, no, then, it's uh, all good, man. Yeah, yeah, we're we're chill here. I'm it's going to continue you. my game two recap. So uh, Mihu then double expands the two middle alonies as his third and fourth base, while Bonif goes for yeah. carriers. Yeah. Then Mihu takes a fifth base at a gas expand, but only doesn't take his gas for ages and only puts two SCVs on gas. So he at ends a, up at on a double, like at a double gas at a double gas base. You mean or no, at no, the, just a single uh, gas. Oh, the, so oh yeah, okay. What, what five, yeah. Ga five bases and two and a half gases because he's not mining yeah, one of them right. properly. And he almost loses it to carries because he has like 4k minerals and no gas. Yeah. It's fucking oh, it happens. Now. It's Stark is a difficult game. It's a difficult game. But <laughs> hey, okay, we're jumping in that one. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a recap of a third one, uh, maybe maybe in a second. So <laughs> um, that is what is sorry. It is benzene, right? This is yeah. eclipse. We're gonna see another gas steal, right? And we're we've wondering if this is gonna be the fifth row. gas yeah. steal. <laughs> Every <laughs> game a gas steal. No, so I wouldn't go gas steal on this map. Or you could in theory. But this map, I can tell one thing. Um, this is a map where, as Terran, you need to explore your aggressive options because the distance is so long and the carrier play is so strong here. Um, and Terran and Plurus can also go for 12th next build here very easily because of the distance. So I'm actually looking forward because Mihu will either go for some kind of... I mean, he can play standard here, but just playing split map versus a player like Bonnet, it's not going to get you anywhere. Um, for simple reason is that you know carriers just scale up too good and it's easy, too easy to defend on your side. So I'm looking forward what Mihu is going to come up with. I mean, a lot of Terran players prefer dropship, some kind of a variation of dropship could be you know uh, abusing the reach over the natural or just vulture drops with some uh, pressure, two fact yeah. one star port pressure builds, or maybe he goes for just for a big timing. I, I believe one of those. I don't think he's just going to go for his stable game, which uh, what I've seen before from him was what he say kind of like go to situation, right? Just a uh, Build up to free base and then decide from there. We haven't seen a dropship yet uh, today. We've yeah, I don't think he. Uh, just uh, so Mihu's done uh, double factory armory into building like three tanks, then uh, four Goliaths with range. Yeah, yeah, this is the most stunner build. Yeah, that's yeah. the most stunner build that retains some flexibility versus you know pretty much anything. But the problem on this map again is that yeah, it's not the it's not the map to do it so much. I mean, you can do it. But even if you get a timing versus carriers, you have those bridges to cross, right? And so much high ground and so much weird terrain to abuse. But I, and also, I agree um, from the games I've seen from me, he doesn't look like a starport player, right? It, no, he doesn't... not a vulture player. He's uh, he's been just double factory, and yeah. maybe it's just through the latency. But he just he gets his siege mode, he gets his Goliath range, and he just sits there and gets his upgrades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's either going for a timing, right, or or. Uh... Or just uh, yeah, slow play kind of like uh, upgrade and so. But uh, 15 command center, uh, I think it was 15, right? Yeah, it must have been 15. And also, wow, it's a gas before. Oh, this is a mistake. I think. It's a gas before supply depot. This, well, he's, uh, he's, this... skipped, he's skipping marines. He's confident there's nothing coming. So yeah, he's uh, no. getting the extra supply by not building. Marines. No, but he's already supply block. You can see, right? Okay. This is not going to be. He's already supply block. I know. I know that build very well. So okay, uh, you can't play. Uh, you have to play. Uh, you can only do it if you play uh, 14 command center. So before barrack. And then if you're like on an island map, you know, or like you have no risk, then you can do the gas before. But else you always get supply blocks. So it's a it's a bizarre decision, but okay, he also lands an engineering bay, yep. which is uh, which is lovely. I think he, yeah, Bonnet doesn't yet have minerals, but he's definitely yeah. looking into planting the nexus. So Bonnet with the second dragoon and the range. Okay, he's cancelled his range. I like that because I was looking at this and thinking, well, this is such a long map. You're not going to get that much pressure on the uh, on the bunker. You can. Uh, having to green range is nice, but this is not the map where you want to be fetching the bunker ASAP. You want to no, go I mean, up. Right, right, Rob for sure. But basically, I mean, again, uh, every map has got some kind of a long term plan, right? And what, what Terran would love to do on this map is like split the map in half and play versus Arbiters, like in super late game, right? That would be your dream system scenario where you win. And what Protoss wants to do is um, they, they want to just, you know, make sure they get carriers at some point of the game. To break that contain, right, or 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 position by Terran where they can secure half of them up relatively easily, and because of this, exactly as you say, because of the distance, because of difficulty of attacking, that's your go-to plan here, right? That's the best, unless you want to cheese, right? This kind of things. This is this is then okay, but the big plan for Bonnet for sure is take up River Carrier from two or three base, 
just avoid damage. There is no point of doing anything extra. Just avoid damage. So I really like the, that Bonif uh, cancelled the range, went into Robo, then went back for the range. That is, that is something that Good I was bitching about in a, f a few of the other games earlier. Is that he was rushing this range, but he wasn't getting anything done with it. He should have just gone straight Robo, and he's doing yeah. it this game. So definitely well, agree. improvement. That gives you another option. If you play uh, just two base, some Terran play. Uh, sorry, if you, if you go like three base, right? You see Rax expand. By the way, Starport. <laughs> We're talking about it. I, I'm no, not surprised, shuttle. by the way. There's no shuttle, so this is not going to be a Viva play. He's rushing the Robo to rush the Observer. No, no, but that's perfect, right? But also, we can see Starport from Mihu. So, this uh, more aggressive plan is already emerging. He wants to get this economy boost from 15 Command Center and then go into those aggressive play. I believe it's going to be like a maybe. Um, yeah, one tank built probably into like six, eight vulture, and he's gonna be trying to pressure the front and start dropping from the back. He may even continue making vulture. It's like a bit of an old school, fifteen command center into vulture, prior to you know uh, the current meta of fast upgrades. That was very popular, like Fighting Spirit two thousand thirteen or so. Uh, of course, Starport here is is uh, is added on top, but uh, it's still like a very standard build. He's also cutting some SCVs right now. It's a bit supply blocked, but also it's very difficult to make. Double factory vulture upgrades and starport at the same time it consumes so much of everything. Yeah, this is right. There's an SCV cut. Every other game we've seen Mihu with his SCV production be perfect, and Bonif with the uh, having the issues with keeping his Nexus running. But this game, yeah, it's surprising that Bonif is ahead. Don't work as. But, but that's showing also how much Mihu understands this map because I was talking about you need to be you need to do something to start on here. It's just just playing stra a straight up game doesn't work here versus Protoss. I mean, if you're, you're like equally matched, right, then you're not gonna be able to to kill your opponent with a timing or just go into a big macro game. So I like the he's adding um, this dropship already. And I also like bonus play because he realizes that Miho is says, oh my God, this is gonna, he's gonna see it. No, <gasps> he can target fire. Just, okay, it's gonna run away, but three vultures are out, but for what cost? I mean, the dropship is revealed. These vultures are gonna be chased in the middle of the map. The seven goons will try to catch them. Also, uh, yeah, third next is gonna be planted probably yeah. before that. Easy clear, easy clear, so, easy advance for Bonnet. The Observer saw the second uh, the dropship going back, loading up with two tanks and going along. The, the second Observer is looking for it, I think. Oh, is gonna did miss he go with two tanks? Oh my god. Yeah. And, but, but there he did this under the Observer, so the question is does Bonnet see it? I don't uh, think he does, because these two goons should just be there. there was an I'm not sure about landing a tank. Dropship. Wow. But this is so much investment. I mean, going with a tank? What? Oh, he's on the wrong a side of the tank drop? No, this is not going to do anything. And this is it's also a big investment. Oh, no. If it was on the right side of the wall, it would have done a lot, but it's on the wrong side of the wall. He's gonna kill a lot. Yeah, he's gonna get one probe. Okay, two probes. Ah, no, it wasn't worth it. Ah, uh, this is uh, Mio is in shambles now. I mean, Bonnet just needs to make carriers now and he, win, to be honest. Bonnet's behind the workers again. Bonnet's yeah, but that's okay. all day long. It's been really, really shaky. Oh, that's a good drop now. He's gonna get maybe three probes with that vulture, and then this one, okay, drawing on that side. There is a tank. That's nice, but Goons can clear it from the bottom. He just Let, has to position it very well. Yeah, they can, yeah, I know, I know. Oh, so many probes are dying now. I mean, he's just a little bit like in you know, the multitasking there. Uh, okay. Only five probes at most. That tank has three kills. There's Vulture had two. Yeah, I think it's okay, to be honest. I mean, he has got his third Nexus now. Uh, Miho, he has he's no upgrades, basically. The only, I think, he has got 900 gas, so his build order is a complete mess now. I think he's going to go into like seven factory and just try to push the, manner, push the issue here, realizing maybe that he killed some probes. So, um, you know, he kind of like, okay, no, he's going for a base. Okay, so <laughs> forget what I said. Uh, I just believe now dropping so many tanks and so many units and making the third base, you're never going to leave your base before all 200, 200. So Bonnet so, no plus one air. Normally he starts plus one air by this. Okay, he just added yeah. the fleet beacon. I was, I was wondering if he was going to go into quick carriers, but no plus one air is an interesting way of doing it. Any In every other game, he has rushed it. Yeah. Any day on this map is carriers, right? That's a no-brainer, I think, from a way how they work, interact, <laughs> and what Terran can do on this kind of map, right? So cars are uh, an obvious choice here, but he needs to catch up with props. I mean, Miho is uh, really good at making SCVs. Uh, he had a short cut to get all his Vulture dropship production, but now he's back on it, six ahead. Uh, his third base are gonna be soon. He's gonna be soon ready, but again, no third gas on that base, right? So. You get this third base in Benzene, it's good for fighting maybe Arbiter play because you get a lot of Vulture mine and you just stay defensive. But versus Carriers, when you need to hit your timing, it's very hard if you don't get your third gas. You can't just keep on making upgrades and the lines. He's going to have to choose either 1-1, 9 factory push, 
or never leaving the base and trying to hold back the carriers like on you know i think i know which one he's chosen uh, because like a minute ago his academy finished immediately double comps out then he takes his first comps out as it finishes straight on the carriers and then <gasps> after that, we saw this is that factory flood is immediately following the carriers I don't think we're seeing a side facility. I think he's just going to get pl uh, his plus one attack straight to plus one armor. Ooh, nice I think this is going to be a timing. Yeah, but if it's a timing, then why is he doing so much uh, vulture harassment and why is he adding a dropship, right? I think that timing is going to be too delayed if you're adding a dropship. So I think he's going for actually for a uh, for base. No upgrades? I mean, seriously? Yeah, he does an STV at the bottom right. <sighs> but... He's adding then... factories now, but it... <sighs> this is just too inconsistent, maybe. I feel that's what this yeah. like. Yeah, every game so far yeah. none of them have made any sense yeah yeah no i mean I'm, I'm i think the build order he took is very difficult if you don't practice it a lot uh he, he, definitely this is not miho style he's floating 700 gas right so you can see that his build order is, is a little bit shaky here and now he has this mineral only so that is gonna of course balance out through the game but that's not the point right because it's gonna balance out oh. but it's gonna balance out one million later than it should we have so, a four uh, tank drop going across the top. Sorry to interrupt you, but we have double dropship, four tanks. Double dropship? I don't oh know about God. this. I mean, how are you going to do it? Okay, the side facility and army are coming, so he isn't going for a timing. He built mass factory, yeah. then he's going back for his upgrades. <laughs> I like it. I mean, I like it, but of course, so that means that you should be planting that fourth command center, right? If you're doing this kind of commitment to harassment, make sure you have something to pick it up. And that's not a timing because you already traded your units for oh, sprouts. Dropships, careful. No. No, why is he dropping here? He should have maybe tried to kill the top uh, top right or top left. Okay, this is a great position though. Four tanks. I'm not sure if Bonnet can do it. I mean, this is difficult to move around. He's gonna take the second tank, but I think he's gonna lose he's all the goons. Seen. Yeah, I think he's gonna lose all the goons. One of these misses is gonna connect. Nice. Okay, nice micro by Bonnet. But to and be honest, what was it? Four tanks? Too. Yeah, yeah maybe pretty good. Workers. Ah. I think it was an equal trade. I don't think it was great for Miho. I actually think it was good for Bonnet. So look, this was a good trade for Terran, just money-wise. But because Bonnet now has got a fourth base, okay, he's a little bit down in probes, but again, he has got his tech going. Five Goliaths already getting added by Miho, by the way. So he seems to be gearing up for a big uh, push after this. And maybe he has a window. I mean, look at the supply. So equal. So what we, you uh, would have seen if you saw game three was that Mihu got five bases against Bonnet's four bases, had two one uh, upgrades, and then uh, attacked uphill for no reason because his opponent was going carriers. Bonnet was going carriers without like forge upgrades, without having any kind of tech behind it, but Mihu just randomly attacked. There was a chance yeah. that we could do the exact same thing again. Oh no, the mines! Oh my god, okay. Well, wow, that drop is nice, I like it. I mean, Mihu is buying a lot of time with his drops. I mean, the there's economy no of Bonnet. Yeah, there's no fourth base. Well, for neither player now, right? Oh, the props yeah. again getting caught now. Ah, I'm, I'm thinking like this is this has been just such a good position for Bonnet, and uh, of course now Mihu, he doesn't really have much of an army, but the supply difference, 20 up. I mean, seriously, he's just tearing him apart with harassment. I mean, just pure harassment is getting this, and yes, I agree, harassment is amazing on this map. That's what you should do as Terra. You need to be, you need to, you know, keep the initiative on the map because. Terrain, you know, the land, the mines you can put on the high grounds and so, so good. So but this is need the least to be able to game in the series. This one's actually, like, both players are playing well, I think. I'm enjoying this one. Yeah, yeah this is pretty good. And now Miho again decides to actually to add a fourth command center, uh, which is a late command center, but I think com considering how much uh, harassment we're doing... At the bottom. And yeah, and a big, big wall. vulture. Yeah, but there are carriers there, right? Aren't there, like, two carriers? No, the car is just they're, flew they're also, Hopefully if the carrier finished right at the, that second, yeah. it's got a free carrier. Yeah. Double dropship? Is it eight Goliaths drop? What is this? He's just, oh my oh, god, just multitasking. No, it's going to be so much damage. This is going to be actually so much damage. All I think these gateways are idle. The there's, no, there's no units anywhere near Bonner's face. Oh. Wow. Every gateway okay. idle. Jesus. So, I mean, me who just completely outplayed Bonnie in a pure brute mechanical game here, to be honest. I mean, Bonnie was just not able to cover the bases correctly. And uh, because of that, he was just losing so many probes. And now the situation is completely reversed. Miho with supply yeah, advantage. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think Cole would be better than Nexus. Yeah, I think he can even fight his goons, exactly. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You're going to kill the core if you can kill maybe two, three goons. The same good. But again, a big round of Vulture. I mean, Bot is on one base. Yeah. <laughs> this is sad. He's got 30 workers. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, wow. There have been some games where I've been like, Miho should leave. This one here, Barnef should leave. This is. Like, yeah, but interesting. Workers. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, the harassment was good one one time too many, right? Kinda. Uh, I think the first one went well. But now, I mean, look, it's not over. I mean, in theory, no, he's gonna lose these goons. This is a problem, I think. He kills this base, and if he just remains defensive, maybe? He needs to put the command. Perfect, wow. What a pickup. But he doesn't know there are mines already behind him, and the vulture is gonna drop. Sorry, block him. Uh, there's only one tank. The carriers could knock that out. Yeah. The Goliaths, okay, how many? Good. Five? So yeah, now he's in a position. He's got yeah. no army. He's got no uh, economy. That's a problem. Well, he has yeah. re-established the bases, so he has... Okay, he has good... Okay, he lost everything in the main 31 course. probes. Yeah. He doesn't have his main base. <laughs> yeah. He's building... I hope Mihu just stays back. Yeah, I think Mihu just stays back here and wins. I mean, just continue harassment, right? This is the best what Mihu can do well, now. Last time we saw a situation where if Mihu stays back, he wins. Mihu refused to stay back. So, uh, let's see yeah, what he chooses to this... do. Well, yeah, the supply difference, though, maybe tells a bit different story. I mean, he just uh, recognizes how big of an advantage he has. He's just going to walk through. I mean, even if he trades versus Interceptors, then uh, then it's going to be a good trade just because of how much bigger economy. He's got double the economy of Bonnet. Yeah, if we look at Bonnet's army comp, he's got... Uh, his highest tech thing is the speed lot. Yeah. And his ground army. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is going to be probably it. Even though the upgrades... Oh, yeah, he has 2-1 already. Okay, so he's making 3-2. Uh, so two on timing here, very strong. I mean, uh, carriers are not that well upgraded. It's one zero carriers, I believe. But look at the terrain. I mean, I told you, how do you attack his Terran? You need to move everything through the bridge, lose half your army. You need to have an advantage here from harassment, and he did exactly that. So, good active game from him. He found damage in every stage of the game. I mean, the beginning went horrible, sorry. So, after that, I thought that uh, he's gonna stop doing this. And I think that's what caught Bonnet off guard. He didn't expect so much more harassment after losing the Observer. He expected the Terran either go for like a double expand and try to you know live through through the aggression or just go for a big timing. And I think the weird thing that Miho did, kind of like staying in between these two options, added harassment, delayed his upgrades, didn't make many factories, delayed his bases, kind of remained active. That caught him off guard so much. Look at the supplies uh, for a second. Really... And now look yeah. at the supplies if you take, take into account the worker difference. Yeah, the army has traded. You can't attack. Terrain is difficult. Carriers are good on this map, Quark. <laughs> Bonnet has his plus but two as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he has plus two right now. Oh, it's a good job. But again, I think this is the similar situation from when I joined the last game, right? It's great you have six cars and three dragoons and you're rebuilding your probe, but Terran is already establishing a fifth base. He already is mining gas at your fifth base. His uh, free two upgrades are going. So it's good you get this great trade and you should get, be getting good trades as Protoss because Protoss carrier ground army is just stronger. So Terran needs to out macro, right? That's the point of this. Terran needs to have at least equal or higher bases. So if you're this. Terran here, do you wait for free 2 or do you go right now? No, I think uh, if you recognize how much of an economical lead you have, he just he just wants to go on a map and you know just put his weight on him, right? It's 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 enough, right? If you just put his weight on him. Then... Yeah. Okay, nice uh yeah maneuver here. Bonnet is expecting he expanded to the bottom base where I would have expanded, but uh, Miku took the sneaky 12 o'clock base and he's gonna find nothing. And if you go to the right corner here. It's very difficult to leave that position, but good, 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 good position for Bonnet to fight here. Wow, if he can just get a couple, you know, Goliaths before the tanks siege. Yeah. He's looking for Goliaths, seems like, right? Maybe? No, he was looking for a tank, but I got some Goliaths. If he clears Goliaths, I mean, this is just, you know... There aren't that many Goliaths, are there? Yeah, if he gets the Goliaths, no, no. then... Yeah, he's fighting Goliaths, he's not looking for tanks anymore, because and he recognizes... And the reinforcing Goliaths are going to be pinned by the goons. Yeah. If he swings Bonnet. his carriers left, he can pick up the tanks. Yeah, 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 and this is, you know, he's trying to chase the car, he's gonna get one because he's gonna lose all the Goliaths, and I actually think if that army, you know, was stated, he, but it couldn't leave, right? The only way for him to leave was to kill the Goliaths, because if he kills the tanks, he never leaves because the whole his army is gonna get smashed anyway, right? He's but that way he tanks. can actually... He has no tanks in his third, no tanks coming oh, out of natural, no. no tanks coming out of his main, and he's only building Goliaths. Oh, he's getting bonnet here, he's getting bonnet here, I mean, just a couple of Goliaths, superior to any amount of units you have with proper micro, the goons will fall down, so that's actually an okay trade for Terran because he needs to really get rid of them. But it's like single Goliaths fighting three tanks. Take out the 20 arts yep. for worker defense. And yep. he's ahead of army supply. <laughs> uh, this is as close as Bonnet could have made it, to be quite honest. This is as close as could have made it. Um, there is no harassment. The harassment is from me. His third gas. Bonnet, every game, is just been like, no, I don't need high templar. I don't need upgrades. Fuck it. Middle yeah, is all wow. You need minerals I, think on, yeah. I think in this position he's, he may even be right, but of course uh, ultimately you will need the gas to uh, kind of yeah, change into 
a more uh, Archon Storm technology, kind of like that's what you want to get. That's your ultimate com combination. Storm Archon, a little bit of Godzilla, and then a lot of Carriers. That's the strongest you can get with Protoss. But I think, I mean, this game, as you said, is much getting much closer than expected. Miho's getting defensive. Again, that fifth base may be stealing the game slowly. The drops and Bonnet were really doesn't nice. recognize. Yeah, I wish I Mihu had incorporated some of those. Oh. Like, Bonnet could just send some speed dots and goons to 12 and force Mihu to defend uh, 12 o'clock and the bottom right at the same time. And it's such a long ground Ooh. distance between them. Oh, I he's not going to find any damage here. He needs to go back here. And now, again, the same situation. He may be trapped. Whole army, but isn't that enough? Is that enough army? Because now there are more zealots are joining. It's just okay. One carrier goes down. He's gonna lose so many goliaths to the no ground army. No vultures. Yeah, he he's so his only carrier, and it's just not. It's carrier plus yeah. <laughs> This couple zealots joining really made a difference, but still looks like it's just too many goliaths. I mean, he's free too. This is where the difference comes in. This is a zero 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 ground. So even the Goliaths, just pure Goliaths, are able to trade so efficiently against uh, Zelos especially. I mean, this is just, you know, a much better unit with this kind of upgrades. I think Bonnet overstayed a little bit. Maybe he thrown this uh, fourth uh, Nexus at his mineral only while all that was happening. So, you know, use that time to uh, go back into some kind of micro. But that's going to lose all the carriers. Oh, no. All of them are going to go down. So this is going to be GG any second. And I think Bonnet is going to be done. Yeah. I think oh, that was the first game where Mihu looked like he actually was good at this game. Mihu's yeah. work production has been great, but that was the first time he actually did some Faber Harass and built some units. Yeah. Yeah, he, he took the right uh, the right build for the map for sure. Uh, I like that a lot. Um, I found it surprising how he navigated from mid game. He kind of scrutinized his build order in favor of just, you know, being more active on the map, and it worked great for him, right? So. Uh, I think he right chose ultimately, he understood his position and he existed real well. Then Bonnie with some clutch micro, almost got it, but then fallen short economy. The 12 o'clock base, I think secured the win overall. For me, the what if that game is that first dropship already took a few hits, loaded up with tanks and then uh, under, uh, under an observer and then flew across the map. If Bonif had seen that, the first dropship could easily have died. And I think if yeah. the first dropship dies, it's a different game. Yeah, yeah, but I think it still was it was the best opening for Bonnet you could have asked, right? Anyway, back in that game, so with this Colosseum, okay, one of uh, not that many desert tile maps. Bonnet top right, and Mr. China Mihu top left. Sorry, bottom left, what I'm talking about. <clears throat> wow, such an old school map, brings memories. Have you been around Quark around that time? Colosseum was right as I was uh, quitting. Okay, you were quitting at that time. All right. Yeah. So we've been around. So for I, I played Coliseum, too. but uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't play from like 2008 through 2019, 2020. Yeah. That was Go my again. a big map. Yeah. Who are you uh, rooting for, man? Who am I rooting for? Yeah, Bonneth or Terran. Your nation, <laughs> or your, I guess one of your races. You play Zerg as well. Yeah. No, I, I think I'm uh, probably rooting for my countryman. I've played a countless amount of TPPs with him. So, uh, so, so I think I'm rooting for Bon in here. But um, That's cool. I like Miho a lot too. I think he's an uh, enjoyable Terran to watch. He's solid. I think, you know, as Terran, the uh, number one characteristic that makes you good is that you're solid. You know, you just don't float money. You don't do stupid micro mistakes. And so, so, so I like him too. I think both of them are great players. And I, I really enjoy watching them. They kind of interact well. He was like offensive and so and Bonnet is, you know, more offensive maybe. It's a good watch. Why are we not seeing a 12 next? I and mean, this is Coliseum. It's Yeah, I probably right. It, it's uh, it's a way you can play it for sure, because of uh yeah, no real threat from uh from a banker rush, right? It's difficult to execute a banker yeah. rush in these positions. And uh, yeah. I mean it looked like me who's got the right idea. He goes, Yeah, this is Coliseum, I'm going CC first. Yeah. <laughs> And funny enough, you can dead, uh, get a wall actually that's gonna be uh, you know so good versus Zilla, right? That uh, yeah, it's pretty sick wall. And here you would also go for you, you in this situation. This, you know, remember the last game I told you can go 14 command center, and on this map you can actually get away with 16 gas because your marine, your barracks are not gonna be ready to first second so anyway. So let's see if he does that optimization this time. He can actually go now. He goes barracks, and then on 16 you can. Oh wow, not here. You need to wall. Wow, this is bold. Okay, this is uh, ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking that he probably goes, well, this Coliseum, my opponent has definitely gone 12 Nexus. 
Yeah, uh, maybe. But he could have walled, that's my point, because you can still put a banker in front of them, right? Okay, fair enough. So I want to see out of Bonif a Foxy Robo in this game. If once you scout that this is the situation, once you go, okay, shit, this is a 14 CC. Yeah, and you've gone for a 13 core with quick gas and three probes on gas, it's got to be a Foxy Robo. It's got to be. Yeah. No, no, I agree. I agree. Proxy Robo is probably the clutch play here, uh, especially considering no wall. I mean, this is so greedy. This is as greedy as you can get a Steron, basically. Um, yeah, no, no way of... And, and even with the Barak there, you know, I was hoping that he's going to wall it off because he get a nice wall here with the Marine inside versus any kind of Zealot. So, but he went full greed, right? Um, Proxy Robo, I think, is a good one, but I don't think he's doing this because he would have needed to send a probe already now. Um, he's staying one I base. Think... He's just going to go for d uh, Double Dragoon and Fesher. And, yeah. I mean, it's going to get damage done, but, I mean, he's got money. He went for 14 CC. He can repair that bunker all day long. You need the Robo to yeah. actually give it the kill potential. Yeah. And what I'm scared about here a bit is... Um, TV. Oh, wow, nice. Very nice micro, yeah. So that equalizes a lot. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're playing a command center first, losing like a one or two SCVs, that makes a tremendous difference uh, in how we're going to catch up as progress. But 25 next? Yeah, he's not even building probes. He's uh, bonus going to run him. All day. <laughs> this uh, is annoying. This is going to go... This, this always goes wrong. Every time anyone does this, the SCVs are just too too good. Look, this is what happens every time. And his entire uh, build was rushing Dragoon to rushing Dragoon range, and now he's lost his Dragoon. Uh, this is this is a disaster for Bonif. The only yeah, thing that was had... worse. No, the only thing Bonif had going on was no. that he was going to be able to attack that bunker with ranged Dragoons all day long. And yeah. he lost his ranged Dragoon. <laughs> so this is the ranged Dragoon move. rush with no Dragoon. I, th it's... I think he could have done a bit more there, to be honest, but it's difficult for me who played control his SCVs very well. But it was a pretty okay move because, again, there was no uh, wall. You know, usually you have the natural barrack and the entrance is locked, but then you enter into the main that is very big, so you can run around. But this main is actually quite small, so there wasn't much space for the Dragoon to run around, he right? couldn't disagree with you more. He's got two... It, his Dragoon range just finished. This is his window where he's meant to be doing damage to that bunker, and he's just missing it because he... He lost his first Dragoon, kept a second one back to fight a SCV. If you weren't going to pressure the bunker, don't rush Dragoon range. It just, there's no, there's no strategic alignment. The, yeah. He delayed his Nexus forever to grab a quick Dragoon range. He didn't get the Proxy Robo for his Dragoon range. And he's not using his okay. Dragoons. I, I hate it. I, hate it. <laughs> I know, it's still okay. Uh, Mihu has already made a decision to go 2-1 upgrades, basically. Um, because of his second add, uh, second gas and uh, one factory armory. So this is 99% uh, 2-1. Uh, and he's going to decide if he's going to be a 2-1 timing or a or a third command center based on his scans. He's going to look into this. Uh, but Bonnie basically now with his uh, relatively fast third as, you know, relatively fast for uh, playing a command center first build, I mean. Um, I think he's going to catch up, to be honest. I don't think he's in a bad position. Uh, let's see if he can get something done by real but cannot lose the trigger. Okay, and it's very good. like the tank was out by the time his range Dragoon rush hit because he lost his first Dragoon, didn't send his Dragoons. And then if he had four Dragoons then, maybe he could have like played with the tank a bit, threatened it. But running that first Dragoon in just completely undermined his entire range Dragoon rush. I... Yeah, but it's still cross-position. Cross I think it's still cross-position. Uh, the only thing that Bonnie needs to recognize as fast as possible is that uh, Quark is going for a very heavy upgrade style. He's not going to be aggressive. If Bonnie would have realized that, he had a sneak peek with his gun, right? That's one gun run a little bit, and I think he's seen the second factory only now being added. So if he spotted this, then he would have known that uh, where basically he must have made Armory and Academy and everything else. But there is no threat of him pushing out. If he abuses it in the sense that he now just macros up as much as he can and maybe throws even free Stargate or something like that, I think he still could have uh, a pretty okay game. This is also cross position. And mind you, Quark, it's very difficult to attack free base Protoss if he just stays high ground there with all his army and he's making carriers. So your army is going to be like, you know, Goliath's tanks. It's really difficult. There is a fired command center. So, and he didn't see any carriers, so it's a perfect choice, of course. If he yeah, already seen carriers, works, yeah. yeah, yeah, of course he will because he has got a third nexus. And but he should have been maybe five ahead now, right? That's the point, or maybe not five ahead because it was command. Friend. Yeah, I think it's pretty okay. The point but, now, okay, now he's, like he's a third nexus. Another. Every other Look game, he's gone, for, uh, he's gone shuttle uh, Viva, and me, who's uh, range Goliath, just shut it down completely. This game, he just rushes in the observer. And because he knows me, he was just playing super defensive. He knows me, he was just locking down, getting siege, getting Goliaths, doing nothing. 
So against that, he's just not even going to try with the Reaver. He's just going to get the in info and take his first. Yeah. I like that a lot. I'm really worried about Bonin now because he's seen a third command center and I was waiting for his response. Is this going to be a fourth base? Is this going to be a triple stargate? I know. Well, he's the going to Exactly. That's the point. He's making a shot. He's making Zealot. So he's going to try and push back that expansion. And again, I mean, it's somewhat difficult to take it because there is this big high ground. If you time it well with a shuttle, you could do a lot of damage. But maybe a double shallow with Reaver would be something to look into here, where he doesn't have any real anything really to support this other than five goons, no tech, no speed lots. Oh, this is gonna be super risky. Mihu is playing super solid, standard game from command center first. Throwing an attack like this with a couple of goons in the shuttle. Yeah, that's we've got a risk. Seven dragoons against uh five tanks. Uh, that doesn't seem like a good ratio to me for the Protoss. No, I, I don't think the shuttle should even show itself around all those Goliaths. There are like five Goliaths, and they are already plus one in just a second. And Wrench is going to finish also. So if he, Miku recognizes what's happening, and if he just sh uh, targets the shuttle, then there's nothing Bonnie can do in here. He's just going to lose half his army. Oh, he's killing okay. the observatory. This is the second observatory he's picked off. Nice pick. Oh, Bonnie is going for it. He recognizes I oh, go now or no, and now. This is good. This is good for Bonnet because there are only so few units here. He's going to be able to clean the tanks and Bonnet actually found a lot of damage in this situation with just very yeah. few units. Half of his army was in the base. He didn't know if there's a river coming in. So great, great trace for Bonnet. I mean, this was exactly what he needed. The fact that he found damage in this little situation. I mean, Miho didn't recognize that, you know, Bonnet had five gateways. If he just scanned before taking the first in five gateways, he would have been much more careful. He would have taken all his units, right? Or now seven gateways for fact. But I because hate what Bonnet's doing behind this, though. But there's yeah. no archives, there's no forge. <laughs> it's Zealot Lexus, it's final tech, which means that if Mihu just secures the third base, and he doesn't even need to secure it right now, he can just wait a little bit, secure it later, then Bonnet doesn't have any late game. He's not even he's taking a fourth. I there's wonder where the scan landed. Storms. Can we check it's... where the scan landed? No. Uh, um, scan added his name, he saw the gates. Yeah, that was exactly my point. I, I was thinking this was the scan because this is exactly where you needed to scan now as Terran. Because if you scan your gateways now, then you know if you're either against about like an all in, like what we're talking about. Wow, he's pushing out. See, he scans the all in and he pushes out against it. Okay. What are you doing, oh Mihu? my god. No. I don't think this is enough tanks. Oh my god, what a flank. This one tank only is six. This is going to be game over. I mean, we have completely overextended. He confirmed this is just a big, big unit push, but he still goes for this. Oh, this might be even GG from Terran. He can play this all, but now Bonnet can just take up from here and there's nothing to be saved. This. Goons will not even be clean. Maybe the third command center is present. No, he's pushing it back. He's trying to move with more tanks, but these goons from the high ground, they will kill any amount of tanks. Like two, three tanks, you have to have more. Otherwise, you're going to die. This is not the first time he's done that today, where he's identified all he needs to do is defend against the all-in. And then he said, okay, got it. Defend against the all-in, un siege, go. But this that's is... serious, Quark. <laughs> that's serious. He expected Bonnet to go to carriers every game. He played so many games with his team. Bonnet went 95% of games versus carriers. He, his go-to build and my go-to build versus Bonnet is the same. I go Goliaths. And Bonnet says, you know what? Yeah, well, exactly. You're going, <laughs> but you're going Goliaths? Excellent. I'm just going to go straight Goon Zealot because that's the best counter versus Goliaths, right? Nothing beats Goliaths better than Goon Zealots. <laughs> I, I don't think Bonnet, I didn't think Bonnet knew how to build Arbiters. Yeah, he sometimes does it, he sometimes does it, but the game is still not over. Uh, I'm worried that Miho is only making plus two, he doesn't have a second armor, it seems like. So his build order is not fully dedicated to upgrades, it's kind of a hybrid version. So many no, zillas no. coming in, but there are a lot of vultures, the STVs are going to help in the whole position, but I think it's just too much stuff if he targets the tanks the with the zillas. The Dragoons are on the backs. Yeah, but look at how many zillas, there were no mines, they're just chewing for this, oh. like it's hydrolyzed. Oh, SCVs go down to mine. Ooh, huge mine there. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah one, okay. Is... Bon is so much on top of his control here, making sure that single zeros are clearing the mines while no others are taking damage. And now Meho is just desperate trying to test the third base, but because Bon had made so many gateways and caught his opponent off guard with the initial push with guns and shuttle, he can just cannot outproduce Bon, right? He can just keep on making those basic units and throwing, trade, 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 while taking the fourth base, while taking up to the Arbiter, also making his speed observer, observer speed for sake. Uh... <laughs> Miku hasn't started his plus one armor. He's got double armory. One of them has been idle for like two uh, minutes. That's a pain because even in this position when the trades are going so bad for Terran, if you get your 2-1 and yeah. Protoss is just still good uh, Zealot, you secure that high ground position with mines, you're going to get your third base. You're going to get to 200-200 ultimately. And if Protoss is trying to switch like to carriers, like, you know, go four gates carriers on so you spot it, 
you got siege and go and still win the game. Now with plus two zero only without the uh, first armor, this army is just gonna be so much weaker versus this kind of basic zealot dragon fights. Yeah, because he did. He didn't need to take his third quickly. You can, if your third is delayed as Terran, you just say, okay, that's fine. I'll get more tanks. I'll get more vultures. I'll get more upgrades. I'll take it later. If the photos does this mass gateway cell, but if you're not getting the upgrades, then there's no, there's no later. It doesn't get better for you. Yeah, well, that was a lot of vultures that died. Uh, harassment is also a brave way of coming back into that game. I mean, he must know he's behind. But doing harassment so early, uh, I'm not sure about it. Yeah, Bonus sees Vultures leaving the base, and that very often triggers Protoss to say, okay, you left with 10 Vulture, I'm gonna go all in on you because you can't have that many left, especially as the trade is just so bad for you. Very recently, tanks now on top of the go sorry, goods now on top of the tanks, sniping them all. There's one tank in the back only, there's no observers, so many mines. Bonus has to be careful because one bad step and whole army is gonna blow. There are two more tanks in the back, so there's no more pushing for Bonus. So many mines also. But there's a big den in the armor of uh, Mihu. He cannot establish that position firmly, and he's slowly but surely running out of the minerals of the, his yeah. main and natural base too. And Bonus no longer all in. Now he's up to five bases with Arbiters. He's also getting his plus one air. Jesus, man. Five one. <laughs> yeah, the Vultures are gonna follow up and just clear the rest of these girls. That was a good hit for, uh, for Mihu. He's gonna give him a lot of breathing time. I think this aggression is over, and uh, by the way, the top left bases, they are a bit um, exposed. Now when the goons die, uh, he needs to be careful. I mean, a, you know, a one tank or two tanks, couple, or even 12, uh, 13 vultures can clean it. Mihu's only just started his 3-1. Uh, so uh, one thing that I've also noticed all day long is that when Mihu's upgrade to finish, he doesn't start the next one. It takes him like a minute to notice. So ah, these it's are... difficult. There's been well, so much can... pressure on him. There's been so well, much pressure on him. It says upgrade part. complete when an upgrade finishes. It says it out loud. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it does, it does, but there are so many things around the map that, you know, even, even the best pro gamers sometimes forget it. Uh, I mean, he's getting so much pressure in his face, he's trying, you know, he constantly needs to look at the minimap because Bonnet has been attacking non-stop, so, oh wow, look at this catch! Yeah, you that's know, a really good this catch. Is, this is really starting to look bad for Bonnet. I mean, I'm not saying he's, uh, he's um, worse here because he's still better, but losing these probes, uh, this hurts so much because his economy also has been, you know, really um, trying, you know, to make those goons and zealots. He doesn't have that much more left with his, uh, you know, three bases. He took his four, third base at what? Five, fifth, fifth, 30 minutes? So he's also going to be out of minerals anytime soon. And going carriers, by the way, wow. Okay, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> this is this is risky now. Yeah, this is opening up a window. I was thinking that if Mihu actually had his upgrades right now, then Bonif would be in real trouble. But with Mihu not having upgrades, Bonif still has map control, but he doesn't have map control enough that he can... Ooh. Oh no, another big mine. Yeah. He can just go carriers. Yeah, I, I get uh, I get the thinking of Bonnet here to go carriers because uh, he's thinking, okay, he got his third base, he's not gonna move ever, and I'm just gonna lose my army to his uh, free free mech. But reality is that on this map, when you're cross position especially, Tehran doesn't have a fourth base. It's extremely difficult to take four bases Tehran. So I think a better choice maybe was to stay mass uh, gateway arbiter because it's just you know so much easier to control the map. While if you get carriers, then actually this pocket expansions like you know Mihu is taking the. Right side, he can take the one at, uh, what, 9, 10 o'clock. He can take this base and can st still hold them versus carriers. While versus Arbiter, it would have been almost impossible. Me is pushing out on 2-0. Every game we okay. see me who do like anti-timings on his uh, upgrades as well. He'll push so he... out on like 1-0 with 2-1 still like a minute away. Same thing. Yeah. He has got a couple uh, Goliaths, I'm curious. Uh, no, he's not. He's upgrading MP. He still doesn't know about the transition. So uh, Miho has been full. He's seen the Arbiter. He's getting ready for this Arbiter play. He's mining to make sure the recoil doesn't land. But he doesn't know that Bonnet is producing cars car from triple oh, Stargates. There will be a big surprise for Miho in that game. He is 100% sure he's up against Arbiter and he's making everything against recoil. Bonnet already has got three carriers ready and three more in production. Big, big, big uh, surprise uh, going to happen very soon. <laughs> yeah, Rico is not done, but it doesn't matter because the master plan is not Rico. Of course, you want to land it ultimately to push back the turn one last time before he recognizes you have carriers. But this is perfect because There's Mihu no plus is two going armor. Full... Plus two armor is not starting. Bonif is going to have like plus two attack before plus two armor is done on his carriers. Yeah, it's not in the <laughs> world. Likely we have plus three ready. So that's most important. He is still super committed that this is Arbiter. He's looking around. He's going to be trying to check, you know, sides of the map if there's anyone and recall coming in but he's blindsided this hope this happens very often to many turn players right he's been okay yeah he's looking for the army because he knows there should be a big army somewhere as you should get with an arbiter the recall is coming yeah 
Yeah, and Bonif needs to do a recoil at this point just to free up to play for his... Uh, oh, cats. this is a perfect reel. There's no science vessel there. There's a big opening. He's going to go straight into main, very deep, just at the end of it. And this is going to buy him, I mean, what, two minutes it's... of time? If he can get on the army, yeah. I think this game's over. Oh, he's just going to go on the army, but there are mines everywhere. Oh, no. Perfectly timed EMP also. Okay, this was not a good recall. Well, I don't think it's end of the world because he still gets a lot of time. But he could have he could have got even more time, don't get me wrong. And now he has got six carriers. And by the way, Mihu has still not recognized that he's yeah. up against a car. Now he's scan after a big fight, fight like this. So yeah. is and now he's scan. I'm expecting a scan in a second, guys. After a big fight like this, you should always confirm the tech you're against. No, but he's, he's still looking army. for army. Yeah, yeah, he's looking army. He feels like, okay, I had a great trade. I'm just going to take all my army and kill Bonnet. And actually, he's right because now the army is gone. Cars are a little bit out of position and the bases to the left are super exposed. This is horrible. I mean, if Bonnet had his army here or the recall had delayed a little bit longer, he would have been here in time to defend. But right now... Seven there... Goliaths against five carriers. I don't think that's the ratio. I saw an I open the chat and he tells us that the ratio is like four to one. Yeah, it is four to one. But think about it. He can still snipe both of his bases before these carriers clean all those units. And he has got access to the bottom right. So as soon as he trades the armies, you know, kind of like stalls this, kills the Nexus, I still think this could be okay for Protoss, uh, sorry, for Terran. Although, yeah, the tanks are falling quite fast. That's true. The base is gone. EMP flies. Nice EMP. Catches half of the carriers. Now, of course, panic Goliaths are cute. Only Goliaths now, so you're not going to make any units uh, until you finish your 50 Goliaths. Recognizing you're against carriers. Very good, very good control from Bonnie, but this base is going to fall completely. No, it's not. Yeah. The tanks are dying. No, you're right. But the probes are going to fall, maybe. Yeah, the probes are have to fall because there are so many vultures. But an amazing train. Bonnie is maxed. I think if this next survives, then this is all fine because he can just transfer the probes. It's natural and his third base. And uh, back yeah. home, about to mine up. And he's going to get the vultures so on the way out, I think. Okay, yeah. never mind. Oh, ahead. and there's a base here. All right, this looks very good for Bonnet. I mean, look at this. Mihu with his... Um, with his command center first, already mined out in his two bases. Of course, he has got the bottom right, but again, it's um, how do you hold in your base now? Because the carriers are going to be both defending and putting pressure on your base. Every time you're going to try attack top left, the carriers are going to be just around to go back and defend. Yeah, if, if this, these were my carriers, I would uh, say that Terran could win this, but this is Bonf carriers. He's got the economy to support yeah. them. He's got the upgrades with them. He's got the surprise factor. I, I don't see any reason why he can't clean this up with carriers, given that it's him. Yeah, no, this looks very good for Bonif. Uh, he needs to work on his economy, though. There are still no props transferred to the uh, yeah, fourth base. So uh, it, I would hate to see a position uh, like in previous games where, you know, just the game drags and drags and drags. And because of those trades, you know, even though they are efficient for Bonif, but he's just minus two bases, ultimately his, um, you know. Yeah, I don't know why all uh, Bonif's army went to the right side. He's seen this five, six vulture harassing and they have completely put him out of position. While uh, realistically, he, would, he could have killed the already depleted uh, second base of Mihu. Uh, it's still a gas base, right? And still opens uh, a little bit the main more. Uh, he kills this Nexus. There is a lot of pressure. I mean, but again, I feel like this is a nice approach from Terran to kill the base. But I'm not sure he can afford losing all those units for free. Yeah, bonus cows oh at this point are like Finger of God. They just they click something, it deletes it. They click the next thing, it deletes it. Yeah, he's transferring Still the probes now. Yeah, he doesn't he spends all his money? He can't really take his uh, base at top left though, so he's got yeah, no he's money. Out, I mean, he's <laughs> got his carriers. Yeah, this is a bit scary. I mean, committing to an attack like this with no money in the pocket, make you can't even rebuild your interceptors. Oh, I'm not sure about it. You need to kill the expansions, and and <laughs> exactly. And I was talking that on this map, Terra doesn't really have a uh, fourth base, and that's exactly the point, right? You can't hold your main and your fourth base. So now that army of Terran is basically splitting, um, you know, and gonna catch all the reinforcements from Terran that tried to get to that base, forcing a fight immediately. Yeah, Terran has to go. I mean, Terran just has to fight here because else Bonnet will be able to kill the bases in the bottom right corner. There is no way of uh, uh, Terran to avoiding that fight. So now there's a big fight, but the tanks are too late to siege. So many zeros. This is an amazing fight for Bonnet. He's gonna clear this army easily. No losses fight, kinda, because all the tanks are dead and, uh, dead and all the guns are still uh, alive. I mean, this was a good game fight, kind of like Bonnet was looking for that one fight and he found it. And ultimately, forwarding command center pretty easily beaten.
considering the amount of mistakes maybe we've seen, or you know, improvements that we've seen for the early meeting. You can say mistakes, I'm here, so uh, we're already, uh, <laughs> we're already shit talking the players, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. Yeah, you see, I was saying about it, I mean, it's cross position, and in cross position, even if you're playing against Command Center first on a map that has got no four base. Uh, very difficult to handle. I'm a little bit surprised that Miho made for wait for that late upgrade style, because ultimately he could maybe either make his third command center faster, or have a bigger army. He kind of went, you know, really everything. Like he was playing a two base carrier build, basically. That's my point, right? Like he was playing Eclipse. He kind of went for it, yeah. Uh, but on this map, he didn't have to play Eclipse. He could have played a little bit more green on third base, because you can, as long as you take the high ground, you're basically okay to take your third base, right? So if he pushed out a little bit earlier with Marines and a couple tanks and just sit there, he could have taken this easily and have a nice even game or even an advantage because of the build order. I'm just amazed that he kept trying to take that base after scanning a uh, five gate, no forge, no archives, no nothing build. Like just, yeah. just, just wait a little bit. It's gonna get better for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. That was the deciding moment of a game. This constant trace there at third base, a failed trace for Terra. Yeah. But even another game, we have Silphid. Mr. Bonnet here in the purple Protoss at uh, what is it, four o'clock, and mm. Mihu. Mm. Mihu. Is that how you read his nickname? Uh, Founding a steel Terran or great Terran. <laughs> how you pronounce his nickname? If you were to read it whole like it's written now, Quark. I think you had it right with the. Uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, no. I I like Bonnet's uh, sort of like off meta mix-ups he's done because Mihu seems to be quite a rigid player and what we saw that game is Mihu decided he wanted to take a third base off of two factories and some tanks and so he just kept on trying it because normally you can get away with that because normally the Protoss going on three bases is heading to Arbiters or he's playing a macro game so I think if Bonif just continues to mix things up slightly do things that maybe aren't quite meta Mihu might uh, find himself uh, causing or creating problems that shouldn't exist yeah, I think I think these two players are evenly matched. That's the first thing. Um, if you're evenly matched in a best of X series like this, you absolutely have to mix up plays all the time. Uh, there's no point of playing the same thing because uh, it's very easy to counter your opponent. You, you know exactly, you know they're kind of like way of thinking. If you're so evenly matched, if you'll be a better player, you know you wouldn't. You, you can then play your standard and just win. But I think in this situation, that's a, that's a very good tip you're, you're throwing here and you know especially in tvp i think there are so many bizarre plays that the uh, uh, pros can do in early and mid game right there are so many surprises that they can do with timings or text and so that you need to make sure that your opponent keeps up thinking of as many as possible all the time right that's i think the logic uh, you need to put in their head in a best of series like this uh, and because of that you know terran has to be honest they have to make their ebay if they have not scouted it's not the team kind of like right they have to they have to make all those things but if you would just, you know, be playing your standard, I don't know, um, 20, 21 Nexus or yeah, probably the most standard, um, then I believe, uh, then I believe it's, you know, it's, 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 it's good. it wouldn't bring such good results in this kind of a game, especially on different maps also, every time. Yeah, the Bonifs uh, standard uh, Shuttle Speed Viva openers haven't uh, done well. On Polaris Rhapsody, he tried a double uh, shuttle play and uh, Egg did nothing at all. There were like double turrets and uh, there were ready yeah. vultures and tanks in position. So yeah, every time Bonif has tried just the his like bread and butter, it's not uh, it's not done as well. Whereas when he goes for more expansions, fewer shuttles, fewer reavers, mix it yeah. up in that way, it's gone better. True, true. And and on this map, I, I would actually think this map should, in theory, in my book, favor Mihu. Um, I think this map requires uh, you know Protoss to be a bit more gateway heavy. You know what I mean, right? This is not maybe your two, two kind of like target, two target carrier map or this kind of things, because um, it's not so easy to get the bases later for Protoss, right? They are exposed, it's hard to defend and everything that is in the middle just fights. Okay, there's a Zealot, by the way. There's no good wall around the factory, so it's gonna be difficult to hold. He targets the probe, very nice, very nice micro by Bonnet. This is not so easy to do as Terra. Now you can see the one Marine just walked away, trying to chase the probe, miss micro there a little bit. The Zealot gets it, forces the Vulture first, He's adding the bunker, but this is actually very tricky. This, gonna run away. <gasps> Love it. this could be this could be a game over now because he's gonna lose that one. Re no, he's coming back with Zillot, but Zillot is full energy, right? It's a fully yeah. healthy Zillot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So now if he gets this SCV, this could be over. Yeah, this could be over right, right now. 
Yeah, this is so good by Bonnet. He's gonna kill the Armarine. I mean, he's not gonna die. He needs to pull some SCVs. He pull like three, four SCVs here, basically. If he doesn't pull three, four SCVs, he's gonna die. He needs to pull SCVs. Okay, the Marine is gonna be here to finally sit in a bunker. Yeah, there are four SCVs coming in. Else, you're just gonna die. You need to repair him to block the entrance and so. And this is the situation when the second gun, gun enters. I would even consider jumping in. Reason is simple. There was a vulture opening. The tank is far from completion. Uh, therefore, you can just straight try and run into the tank starting. He's uh, okay. He just can't, he built a vulture, cancelled it, went tank. I, I think that that was the right play because if he doesn't go yeah. tank, he's just going to be repairing this all all day long. Oh, now, is the, the, is the gonna catch. <gasps> no, no, no. Uh, oh, the gun was there just in. in a position. Yeah. This is huge so, for uh, Mihu because otherwise he would have to play so incredibly safe. If he knows it's a robo, yeah. at least he knows what he's dealing with. But he still needs to play incredibly safe, to be honest. This is such a fast robo. It doesn't change your answer. You're just going to land eBay in uh, around uh, 30 seconds or so. Else, you're not going to be able to hold it. Um, there is no starport counter to this. So basically, this will force Mihu to be extremely passive. And uh, Bonnie rightfully goes for Shadow. He could have just uh, maybe even double expanded from this. Just because, you know, after scouting robo like this, you know Terran has to be more passive, right? So he could yeah. have get away with a mind game here. And, um, you know, assuming that... Terran needs to make an, he needs to make an engineering bay basically like now in five seconds 520 520 would be my engineering bay if I have to tell uh, let's see what the timing is he just ordered but he oh. didn't have enough. it loses That's the tank, tank. do we think lag might be an issue because we saw a bunch of marines dying to a zealot then we saw that tank getting picked off by three dragoons this is what I'm worried about is that okay he now orders eBay because he, he was no he didn't have any enough minerals the SCV went to the position but he didn't build it because he was out of minerals while microwing this fight here it's a huge pickup I mean losing a tank you're not gonna have a turret ring versus this because if you're gonna make a turret ring there's gonna spend too much money so you know you have to play three turrets one natural one main one in the factory and you have to defend with tanks but losing a tank right now how do you hold a situation where Protoss goes with like three four guns from the front and uses a river at the back you need to push all your units. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to hold your river. You need like three tanks and marines to chase it away, just having turrets inside the base. And I don't think he's going for a turret. I mean, maybe he goes for a turret ring here because he recognizes he has got too few units. But if he goes for a turret ring, Bonnet can just, you know, do whatever he likes because Terran has to make six turrets to defend this. With one less tank, is there an elevator possibility? We saw that in game one where Bonnet just elevated his army in and uh, the tanks weren't able to get control of it. Yeah, well, maybe yes, uh, but Bonnet, of course, doesn't know, right, uh, on how good a position that is to harass. Uh, Miho is putting the turrets, as we, as we thought. He also needs a turret in his natural. I'm not sure why he's not making it. And this is still very risky. Bonnet can just... Because what Protoss, as soon as Protoss realizes the turret is here, he's going to try to harass, and then he's going to pick up and go to the natural, right? So let's see. There is one turret only. The engineering wing is going to spot it. The unit should move out now. <laughs> he's lucky that goons are not there. But he's seen some vultures, so I, I guess that's why Bonnet's scared. Now there is a river. There's a good end of river. Okay, this is so bad. Oh, this is so bad for Miku because uh, this is so hard to defend now. What do we think about the triple gateway behind this? Bonif isn't expanding, he's just going Mascoon. Um, I'm not sure what is his tail here. No, oh, the lag. Okay, yeah, this was what I saw. Now you're driving, but now the shallow goes down. Okay. Wow, okay, good defense by Miku, I must say. It's good that he didn't have Zillows. He could have had two Zillows there, right? If uh, Bonnet had two Zillows, he would have been in a different fight. Yeah, killing that Barker doesn't give you anything. Terran doesn't care about it. His siege mode is done in a second. So even killing that Barker actually, I think, is good for Terran. He needs to kill it anyway now. He will kill it anyway later. And uh, it has paid for its you know, value already. And Bonnet behind that, triple gate into Nexus. I, I don't think that's optimized. I think that while the Reaver was pinning his opponent, he could have quite easily gone Nexus off one gateway. But instead, he, he built himself an army. And now he has his army. But do you see this getting any value? He's got, what, uh, six Dragoons only? Well, we have to respect that he only flew to his base now, right? So he committed to three gateways before seeing what it is. Terran could have gone for like a free fact build or something like that. And a lot of Terrans actually, you know, well, this was Robo first, so I don't think this would have worked. Right, but because yeah. um, Reaver normally to do map control, he gets really super quick pushes, in my experience. Right, right, but he needed to have some goons behind, if you know, in case there was like a base trade scenario or something like, like you know, free tanks and vulture spam in your door when your uh, Reaver is in the base, right? Something like that. Do we Anyhow, think that we have... which is an optimal might actually help him because me who's trying to take his third. Bonif has a bigger army that he should have. If Bonif had just gone straight into a third base the way I was thinking he should, he wouldn't have all yeah. of this stuff right now. Me who. Is he going to struggle to take that CC? I 
think he will struggle and it's it's quite tricky you can't build any turrets in positions that will allow you to push slowly to take it you need to have the the muscle to kind of move out with all your tanks and or most of the tanks and siege up and with a river and a couple guns and the production behind it can be tricky um i think we have to recognize that both builds are a lot delayed in this situation right because of uh, how the game went the robo first forced Terran to be extra safe and uh, delayed his command center and delayed his upgrades for sake of defending that river relatively cleanly uh, and that's also you know where we see the the third base of Protoss being later because of the build he chose right when you're cutting corners like this then you're gonna suffer economically at some point you're not gonna be able to make all your decisions optimally so I think it's okay. I think even, I think players are relatively equal at this point, to be quite frank. I like that Mihu delayed his upgrade because then he had an easy hole. And now the big push. He needs to snipe the Observer first. The first move is always snipe the Observer in this situation. Oh, huge hit. Not oh, <gasps> double Goliath. Wow. How did that happen? Did the Goliaths connect uh, the damage on the SCV on the turret, right? Yeah, they've got, they I mean, must... they had to. Because, yeah, unless it's Viva damage. But even then, Viva damage yeah. would leave them one hit point. Yeah, wow. Amazing hit, hitting these two Goliaths with a Scarab and then finishing them. I mean, this was bonnet level micro. I mean, and behind the this... Arbiter. Yeah. This game, he's and, going and again, his upgrades. He has no choice. This is not a car map, Quar. You can't go carriers here. It's horrible. <laughs> Basically, too many gas bases. Yeah. Losing his uh, uh, yeah. natural. Okay, yeah. Amazing game. Okay, there is a big push. I'm a bit worried. No vultures. No Zero vultures. We have Zero no legs. vultures. You need oh, to unload now. You need to unload, unload now. Oh, oh, yeah. The reaver makes it. He's gonna shoot his car up. <gasps> this is over. Oh my god. Every Zero is dead back. Every Zero is dead. Yeah, but the tanks are almost dead because of a scarab that connected. He's gonna kill all the tanks very easy. He's gonna spread the guns very nicely. Everything is dying for Terran. We have the repeat from the previous game where he has got no units whatsoever to take his fourth base. I don't know even know if he's gonna be even trying anymore. He needs to pull all the SCVs, but the production is just too far. And now bought it. Six guns, an arbiter in production. Easily gonna clean up the third base. There's no taking third base. And again, as you said, he took a sub economical approach. But that's Bonnie, he's an aggressive player, he's a micro player. He's not going to go 200 to 100 with you on six bases. He's looking for those windows when he can attack and he finds them. It's the second game where he finds them in the window when Terran tries to take a third base on a hard to take third base map. He just abuses it and makes sure to punish the Terran if he's not careful enough. So does Terran have any uh, exit opportunities here? He's got plus one attack only, so no sand facility. Yeah, no, they don't. There's no exit opportunities. Yeah, I think this is it. Uh, yeah. It's basically, uh, I don't know why he made so many uh, Goliaths, right? I mean, he was scared of Reaver. Of course, the confirmation uh, wouldn't show that this is even, uh, yeah, it was late Arbiter, kind of. So uh, maybe, you know, he needed a round of Vulture, right, to hold his attack. I think a six, seven Vultures, or of course, Mines, would have been uh, perfect there. He moved out very bravely, but I don't think he had an army to do it. And uh, very nice control from Bonnet, utilizing the high ground, cleaned up absolutely everything. And now it just comes down to, you know, the last wave of units. And I think Terran doesn't have anything. Last two tanks are going to show up, but there are already some Zealots joining the force from the back, I think. One Zealot, maybe? No, just Goons. Okay, that's going to be enough. Anyway. Fourth base also by Protoss. So making sure he also has a plan B in case, uh, miraculously, uh, Miho uh, falls with a uh, mine destroying all the Goons or something like that. He's going back to Reavers to too. He has a new Chateau, he has a new Reaver. This is the yeah, 12, he can... 13 Reaver switch. This is the moment where you can go into Dark Arc or my control switch and still uh, easily win that game, so... <laughs> he's also making plus one attack, so he's already preparing his carrier switch. Just in case like a miracle yeah. happens. It is always good to get. It's a very cheap upgrade. Always worth having. Yeah. And at this point, it doesn't matter really. Protoss has got everything and can absolutely play everything. Protoss can add three bases now and all the tag and still be okay. He's not looking for hidden expansions. This is when I would look for hidden expansions as Protoss. I'd say, why aren't you leaving? There's got to be something. There isn't it anything, but he just uh, doesn't want to leave. But yeah. this is the time where you got to check for hidden expands. Yeah. I think now with Arbiter, no science vessel, no turrets here. Reaver even. Styling on the tanks there, making sure that, you know, that Scarp connects. Is this gonna survive? Gonna survive! Two Scarps connect, so getting most, most value out of that Reaver. Wow, good game. Bonnet OP? Apparently so. I, I, I wonder again if there's any kind of lag issue, because it's... 
like that first Zalot goon combination killed what three marines and uh, the SCV on the bunker, and then almost killed the vulture. Yeah. Then the first three dragoons to kill the tank. I mean, that is everything that went is well for Bonin in that game, for sure. Everything went very well for Bonin in that game. So he got rewarded for aggression. He got regarded for for pretty much every decision that he made. Uh, of course, he he he, <laughs> he had to work for it, but uh, he worked for them, and uh, yeah, and it worked great. Yeah, the first Weaver did no damage at all. He seemed to really prioritize killing the, uh, the turret over killing the tanks. Killed the turret, then the tanks showed up, and of course, uh, didn't get anything. Yeah. The Weaver had then had to run away. It was. I wonder if maybe if he just had the goon tag the uh, tanks twice and had the uh, Weaver get a shot on them, at least he could have gotten, gotten the tank, but. Yeah. I'm not going to tell consider that. You know, micro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a pretty pretty good haul by Miho. I didn't expect this to go so good for him. Maybe the fact that he had a good rather than Zealots um, made it you know, a good hold. I, I like going for the turret because, again, you can kind of bug the tanks flying around. There was only one turret. Um, and also, you know, targeting the tanks, you can get one shot, but then you just lose too much HP, maybe. I don't know. I think it worked okay. I think sometimes just going back with a river is better than being overly aggressive, right? Just the fact that there's a river in front of your base makes uh, sure that Terran needs to spam additional turrets over time. They can't just, you know, send Vulture or, um, you know, even build a front turret. So, so I think it was a good play by Bonnet. He uh, he weighted his choices very well. Yeah, I think definitely keeping the Reaver alive is, is huge. If you don't get any harass done, that's still great because you can sit at the front and like, modern Protoss have gotten a lot better about just really, really punishing Terrans any time they try and move out. The Reaver is just there, it's going to fire, it's going to move back, it's going to fire again. The shuttle has slightly more vision than the tank, so I mean, you just end up with scouts just coming out of the the fog. It's uh, you don't need yeah. to necessarily make sure you get damaged these days with, with a Reaver on the harass. No, very well said, very well said for sure. Um, just the presence of Reaver constrains the game plan for Terra, right? Um, so it's always good to have it and show it's there and ready. <laughs> Just a good unit, what do I tell? It's just just a good unit. Probably the best pros unit. Just requires so much attention. And we have the same colors, but we have Mihu as the gray-blue in the top left, and Bonif as the blue-gray in the top right. On uh, yep. La Mancha, which is Desert Fighting Spirit. I think made by the same guy who made original Fighting Spirit, because uh, it's not yeah. dangerous if you copy yourself. Yeah, and I will be a little bit uh, Terran-centric. You say it's uh, it's like fighting spirit, but actually I think it's very different from fighting spirit. For a simple reason, the, the third base is much more difficult to take than on fighting spirit, right? It's actually not that easy to take your third and fourth base is very difficult for sake two because you have those high ground terrains spreading it. So I actually think fighting spirit is a very good turn map. This is not exactly my favorite turn map. Also, a lot of unbuildable space across the map. Uh, you can only get some in front of natural, so you could contain there. But through the map, it's difficult to build buildings, a lot of high grounds, making it much harder for Terran to push. Um, speaking of that, I still expect Mihu to go his free base upgrades. <laughs> I think that's the choice. As a Terran player, it's never a bad idea to get upgrades. If you don't yeah, know what to do, yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Go for yeah, go to build these upgrades in third base, and then uh, you need to figure out through the game what's happening. So, so uh, this counts will, so far. Will Mihu be able to build a, a wall in front of the bridge at 12 o'clock? I don't know if that's completely unbuildable, if you can do something there. Oh, at first, no, you can you can definitely wall it. Um, but that bridge is so extremely close to Bonnie. Yeah, mm. I'm, I'm doing this thinking, okay, where's... Because the third base at 9 o'clock, that's... Uh, you have that wall that yeah. kind of protects it, but also it's uh, a little bit more... Yeah. Isolated, it's it gives you more ground to defend than taking the 12 o'clock, but the 12 o'clock is so close. That's my point. I mean, this is if if you look at some modern Terrans trying to play La Mancha, they would uh, most of the time um, prioritize going for a big timing over going for a macro game because this map doesn't really have great macro potential for Terran late game. It's just difficult to take bases, and the Terran is not so good. That many Terrans just prefer to go for a big timing. You know, could be six six or seven fact or some kind of a five fact push. But you know, you just try to go for something, right? Where, where you surprise your opponent and just do damage, get ahead, and then you can play a normal game. But just playing, you know, up to free base is really difficult. Uh, there's a lot of space you can attack into and the bridge from the back and so on. So 
So we'll see. It's still possible, but in these positions, with a bond of aggression, Miho may struggle again to take his third if he decides to. One thing I've noticed is that Bonif has been doing free probes and gas from the beginning and getting his range every game. He does not going for the faster Nexus options that I, I've because seen that's that Bonnet. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, because that's Bonnet, right? I mean, he's, uh, it's all about that initiative. It's all about pressure and attacking your opponent and uh, making him make a mistake, basically. That is his style and that's what he prefers to do, right? Sometimes it fails, sometimes he gets nothing done, but uh, more often than not, he achieves, you know, something, either direct damage or indirect damage by delaying your opponent build because he messes up with his micro and so, right? Okay, we have a 21 this... next. Uh, no Vulture. Oh, sorry, he is building Vulture. Okay. Uh, this, I think, could be a little bit dangerous for Bonner. I don't like going 21 next against Vulture uh, opening for the battery. Just because you, they're so often in the situation where you send your Dragoons out because they have Dragoon range, you want to pressure, and then a Vulture slides in. It's, uh, this is potentially dangerous, I think. Yeah, I think Bonner recognizes that uh, a Vulture could be out in his car. I don't think he's just going to go back to his goods. Uh, I think he's just going to sit at home. I don't think he's going to be attacking anymore. He's just going to place a throw Robo now. So oh, if... Citadel. Citadel, okay, interesting. This is the first wow. time. He is mixing it up, mm. though. It's like you were saying. His, uh, he's been supply blocked for quite a while. He's missing probes here. Oh, yeah, maybe. Well, ultimately, I think it's pretty okay, but yeah, maybe half a probe. Um, interesting choice. I wonder if it's... Uh, I don't think he scouted. I think it's just, uh, again, as we talked about in a series, you just need to throw a little bit of everything. He didn't, throw, he didn't play any um, DTs, so far as I understand. So, you know, Miho will be going for his go-to armor build with uh, fast gas in his natural. That build requires uh, extreme care versus Dark Templars, because you're going to be relying on your scanners, and, uh, you know, many people just will use their first scanner versus bonnet because they expect some kind of a super fast robo or a later robo and just want to kind of like, you know, uh, op optimize their build accordingly. But if you scan here and you get this two DTs in your base, um, you're just dead. So this situation There's right now is why I hate the uh, 21 uh, next because uh, bonnet's first <gasps> tune. Didn't wow, the vulture dies. Oh my God. That There's was still... the biggest, the biggest hit he could have got here. Yeah. This was, was his mind. Mihu went uh, double Vulture. Mihu had no pressure on his bunker at all. He didn't need to rush a tank. He went Vulture, Vulture, Mines. And I think that is a reaction to the fact that Bonnet didn't have any Dragoons on the bunker. You don't need a tank. And the 21 next stopped you getting Dragoons on the bunker. So it's why I don't like it. it I don't know where he, f he found... He somehow managed to read it. He went for the Mines and then for eBay. And it's interesting because this is the build that you would like to do if you expect in any way Dark Templars. I wonder what was the read. I don't think there was any. I think he just recognized and making this against Reaver. No, he's making a he's making a turret. So he somehow found a read that this was uh, Dark Templar because he's making a turret at his natural, not even versus Reaver. And there's no armory. So what is yeah, the plan, yeah. Mr. Miho? He does have a read for sure. Well, he doesn't have a read, but he anticipates that it could be DT. Because else, if you had mines, you wouldn't make a, such an um, extended turret, right? He made double, quite an ex. Yeah. Got double uh, DT. Are they going to be able to go all in on the, the turret? Oh, there's two mines behind it. Uh, this is going to go badly oh, wrong. This is not. No. This is not. There we go. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this, yeah. That was too aggressive by Bonnet. The shuttle ah. has started though for the follow-up. Cheeky, 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 cheeky. Well. This was the kind of product that everyone hates because he will win games like this once in a while and you don't deserve to win games like this, right? I can put it this way. So um, so it's a fair loss, I mean, but uh, I'm just interested because Mihu must be going for a six fact from this. So he's just adding his academy. He will cut his, his SCVs exactly now. At 41, he should cut, but he's gonna, even at 38 he could, but he's got a six fact, I think. For five facts, he would just go on 38. This is gonna be uh, probably six facts, so I think he's gonna just stop making SCVs now. And he's just gonna add six factories and he's gonna go with scan. So, an extremely strong timing from uh, Mihu. I'm just curious. Um, Bonus going Viva Arbiter. Yeah, and I think this is the only way that can possibly make him survive a six fact like this. 
But where are the six facts? He's only adding four facts. And he's floating 500 gas with no armor. There needs to be six this, right? It's not making as serious as expected. So this is going to be six facts for sure. But he's just taking his time to keep on producing units before placing his factories. I was expecting the DT drop to hit immediately, but he's going to go for a Reaver plus two DT drop, I think. This is Funny a enough, there's... yeah. <laughs> no, no, this is this is a crazy this is a crazy build, but you know it could work right in this situation because uh, Mihu is gonna leave the base any second. Oh no, he's gonna lose the DTs. And he scans no, he's... that scan hit yeah, right gonna... on top of the shadow. He's like, wait a second, <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, Reaver. <laughs> sorry, are there DTs in that shadow? No. No, he was gonna go pick them no, up. There's... Because this could have worked, to be honest, right? If he threw DT and River, now nah, he's gonna split his mind. Shadow's flying he's over gonna the go. Mind. Yeah, yeah, then you, you don't come back. You just rally units back home and there are mines, everything there. Yeah. We're bonded, but this is for fact. I mean, this is such a weird build. Miku is at 800 gas, and now he's adding armory. So this is a, a little bit of a like I would, I would, I play Terran like this. You know, like uh, I go for one thing and then I change it three times and I end up in that massive whatever is this build. Oh no! Oh. Reaver's wow. fine. No Reaver survives. <laughs> oh, now it's time sure. to go for the debuffs. Yeah, Behind and it, this... If, if he supply blocks Mihu, he's one of has seven gateways. If he just yeah. supplies Mihu for a little bit, he could maybe hold. Yeah, but uh, does he have Siege yet? Uh, yeah, so, which, I mean, of course he should have Siege, but maybe I thought... Oh, no, Reaver everything dies. Okay. Yep. GG. <laughs> That's over. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it was... Um, it was uh, a representation of like, you know, uh, you have an MMA fight and one guy is dancing and he's spinning on his head and he's uh, doing all defense poses and the other guy just waits and just one punch kills him. And that's basically what happened in this game where uh, Bonnie was, you know, trying to be fancy and uh, jump on the Tara, do a DT draw, sorry, a yeah, DT reaver drop and so and so. But, uh, sorry to say. Miho was just uh, very one-dimensional, and that one-dimensional stuff is gonna mass you and kill you, and it worked very nicely for him. Clean victory for Miho in this game. Good raid on the DT. I don't know how exactly, because it was 21 next, and he got an SCV, and he's seen, uh, uh, yeah, he's seen nothing. Maybe that's why. Yeah. Probably that's why he's seen nothing. <laughs> Last try by Bonnet, but it's not gonna work. No tanks are dying. And at the photos, it just feels so, so weak if the uh, Terran is able to do a Vulture opening and a Fast Expand with no pressure on the bunker. Like, the Terran has all the extra gas, they can go straight into a Starport with a drop follow-up, they can get the double Vulture upgrades. And there ends up mines just all over the place, so you can't even move on the map. It's... I... You either go for, like, a quick expand, in my opinion, or you pressure the bunker, but there's no in-between. And that's why I hate the 21 next. I think it's okay. I think it's okay because a lot of Terrans go aggressive and that's a good build versus aggressive Terrans, right? But anyway, I think the mistake was not none of that, right? The mistake was losing free guns and DT on <laughs> trying to jump on a bunker. I mean, after that, I think there was no save for Bonnet, to be honest. That's just too behind. Yeah. Wow, Plasma. So that's the He's last game, right? Yeah, this is the last one. It's 4-4. Four, four. It's 4-4 four, four uh, and decided on Plasma. Wow. Uh, yeah, and I mean, Plasma is... It's fucking awful to play on. It's yeah, but it must. It's it's a bonus pick, right? It's ob it's an obvious bonus pick. I mean, it's twelfth nexus. I don't think this is, I think this is the last map in the map. Yeah. Once again. It's... Yeah, I don't know who picked these maps. Uh, they're but not it's, maps. It's... I don't think that bonnets would pick or me who. Maybe the sponsors oh, did. Okay, maybe. Right. Yeah, but if I were bonnet, I, I would definitely also pick this map, right? So no, it's, I think it's, it's, this is. Mihu just needs to lock down, take the three bases he starts with, get his upgrades. And the only way the Bonif can beat that is some kind of uh, carrier play, but Mihu's going to know it's coming and just going to timely attack it. Uh, this feels like a really... I mean, I hate this map for Protoss. To, to win on this map as Protoss, you have to do either something super cheesy like a DT rush, or you have to really get fantastic Reaver harassment. Because you can never get an, a like flank engage on the Terran army. The Terran is always going to be a one-dimensional battle. And that means that you just... Hmm. You lose as Protoss unless you get harassed on. Hmm. That's your point. I mean, I, I get your point, but I think Bonnet, again, with a player that likes to be aggressive, he's just gonna go two, two base car into like super fast Reaver. I think that would be the plan. Um, yeah, just 12 next into super fast Reaver and carriers. It's a pretty straightforward play, and I think it just uh, wins most of the games for him in here. 
I, on this map, I would do uh, like fast expand, and then also I'd have a probe in the middle of the map, uh, build a citadel in the middle of the map, build a gateway in the middle of the map, build a DT out of there, and then I'd have one DT come out of my main base. I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. Legs, everything goes across. Right, the map. Right. Yeah, yeah, but the problem, of course, Quark, I, I get your point, but the problem is that if anyone has this, then your, your plan is over, right? So <laughs> then you have a problem. So it's a, I get an idea, right? But uh, I, it's just an all-in, right? That's the point. I mean, you've got two bases, but it just, it's, uh, the DT, the main thing is that they cut through the eggs super quickly, and because you have the proxy gate, you can cut through the eggs from your base to the middle and from the middle to their base, so your goons can then rush across. But it's, yeah, it's, Pretty well then. So I'm really curious to see if Mihu is uh, going to go for a build that I have uh, prepared for this map back in the STPL, which is a two fact from middle. You can actually do it, and, and him going for the in base uh, play like this, because else he should have just fast expand, right? Is he gonna? No, he's gonna make the factory in his base. Okay, just here down there. Okay. Yeah, just to really? avoid some kind of proxy gate. I mean, on this map. No. Okay. Yeah. You can. Uh, yeah. It's quite common to have somebody just proxy get inside your your quarter somewhere. Yeah, they have more range, like right? six o'clock, and uh, mm. if you okay, go, so Mihu wants to play standard. Mihu wants to play standard. He's not uh, mining gas, so he's just behind. That's it, right? He's just behind. What about the drop bar follow-up potential, though? Uh, you say he's not mining gas. Can he afford a starport off of uh, if he goes like starport vulture at the same? Yeah, the second SUV just went on gas. I think starport. What do you think? Yeah, um, yeah I think starport. If it's uh, yeah, there is there a second one on gas? No, is there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's starport. Yeah, two two on gas just before the factory finishes is a starport build. Uh, at least in my my game understanding, that's how I would play a starport build after factory. But is he gonna proxy? No, he's gonna make it in his main. Okay, just starport in his main. Yep, there it is. So he's gonna expand behind it. That's okay. I mean. One way of dealing with 12 Nexus is to go this build. Uh, although I would maybe delay Starport in favor of my command center still. Because the point is that you're not going to kill him anyway, and 2-3 seconds doesn't make it, but your a little bit faster economy gives you a, bit, a boost. You're going to have to wait for your Vulture upgrades anyway, that's the point. Do you think Bonnie should cut probes here to get uh, out his tech faster? He's uh, delayed his Robo slightly. He's got like 100 gas as he places the Robo because he was building probes constantly. His range is uh, going to be a little bit late. He knows his opponent's on one. Uh, is base. he going to get in the main? No way. He's not getting in the main. He's getting in the main. He's going to spot. No, yeah, he the did, vulture he didn't just. Got... No, he... almost. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he turned off Mihu's vision and it was just out of vision. Yeah. Which is uh, very good for Mihu, of course. Um, no, Bonnet here, he just needs to get his Robo on Observer and Dragoons and then uh, either, you know, whatever he likes. I think Carriers, right? It's the easiest choice. He's even making fort. He's expecting. Yeah. He's expecting a, a starport. Yeah, he is. That the forge can only really be for the uh, cannons, and yeah. I think that pylon at uh, his natural is also for the uh, cannons. There. I wouldn't mind seeing like a pylon. Uh, I can gas out on the map, wow. like a pylon in the middle, just to look for the. Uh, yeah, he just doesn't there. have enough pylons maybe yet. Yeah. With uh, fast nexus, you don't have that many pylons, right? There are only two pylons in main, <laughs> so. Yeah. He needed that second gas just to get the uh, quick robo and range at the same time because you, otherwise you have to pick one or the other. But he's only got yeah. two probes on it, which I like. He he went quick second gas just to hit that one immediate gas need. And once he hit the gas need, he could then relax a little. Yeah, fully committed to defending dropships. And my natural follow-up uh, on a map like this, we've built like this. Uh, throw this vulture, scout of he is doing a double expand behind. So I'm really hoping Miho is just going to double expand from here. Just make take that the mineral only also. Okay, is it uh, free? It's free vulture or four vulture? I think it's free vulture. Here we see. <clears throat> oh, I guess it's free vulture. Wow. Uh, the cannon's not four finished. vulture. Oh, oh boy, boy, boy. The Okay, but this is actually still Let's okay. He's the observer. But the vultures are fighting goons rather than killing probes. He's gonna take two probes. Three probes dying. He's four missed probes. that line on the high ground. Five, that six, mine took like six hits to kill. Seven, eight. I think it's like eight or nine probes by now. Ten probes, maybe. Wow, so much damage. What got me? He had two dragoons down the ramp that had to clear the mine before they came up the ramp, and they just kept yeah. missing it over and over. 
But where were the dragoons? Why why there was nothing in the main? I mean, didn't he expect a dropship? Oh, the goons just also dying to... Oh, boy, it, oh, it, it falling behind completely. Down nine workers. This harassment, this harassment... This harassment down four he times just, too much. He, yeah. Cannons weren't on time. He went forge, he built a cannon his natural, and then he had a cannon in the main that was like halfway complete. And it's... Yeah, or, or even a goon. I mean, he just needed one goon there, right? One goon, uh, he would just move it around, and with uh, probes, maybe he would have lost five, six probes, that's it, right? Uh, but now with no units there, and now things exploding to uh, to mines. I mean, this is really a poor situation. Uh, now he's killing right. the X, but uh, if, you, yeah. if you kill the dropship, then at least you're like, okay, well, I just need to rebuild my probes and stabilize. If the dropship's still alive, then like this isn't over. This is going to happen again. This is going to happen again, and uh, Bonnie is now clearing the X. His vision is still very limited. I think this drop is going to come from the a... right side of the map. No, he's, he's... oh, he's gonna. Gonna high five with... <laughs> oh boy. Second observer is going to confirm. Second observer yeah. confirmed. Okay. Bonus. Second observer confirmation. Yes. I think, yeah. He's... Okay. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's seen it for sure. I think he's seen it. No, but he's still. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, no, he's no, moving. Okay. It's just, I wish he's moving his observer too to yeah. actually kill it, but. Oh, Dragoons, where are you going? His obs you can see his observer going up to find the uh, dropship, and yet his Dragoons are running the other way. He doesn't know. He maybe he knew that. Uh, maybe he expects Miku to spot this. The observer. Okay. Is there anything? Yeah, there must. He saw this dropship so many times, and now he's going to be out of position for it. Yeah, it's a bit of a pity. End of tank. He's going to connect. Oh no! One observer. Probe, two probes. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. Bon is uh, struggling here a little bit, uh, or a lot. I would even say the mines. Really well positioned. So he's even gonna give us some units to this. One gun goes down, a lot of mining time. Vultures escape around very easily, finding damage. So this is uh, this is an amazing position for me. He did not that double expand. If he double expanded now, he would have been an absolutely uh, kind of like 90 to 10 position. Still getting kills. The vultures still getting kills. Yep. Mihu was up like nine workers after the first drop, he's still up nine workers. Okay, so this dropship flew over the observer again. The observer was... <laughs> so, okay, second observer sees the dropship. Do we have a third? Okay, shuttle sees the dropship. We're not in position. How is this happening? Yeah, he's going main and this tank, can it actually do damage again? Wow, class positioning there, just outside of range of uh, the goods. Okay, kills one probe, I think only though. So not so much harassment anymore, but still, uh, I mean, making sure Bonnet is busy, he's running around, he's doing nothing. His tech is nowhere to be found, he's adding his Stargate, but I mean, one Stargate is not going to do anything with his economy. Uh, he is loading some money, so he has money to spend on carriers, but again, the problem now is not that Mihu is making, you know, uh, <laughs> some stuck. kind of a... Yeah, he's just going full units I mean, at this point. He's four, yeah, exactly. He's four factory. He's gonna unsiege, kill the X easily with his siege mode. Oh, he's already broken the X, by the way. Okay. So actually, uh, you know, the old Chinese proverb says, uh, if two if two players are destroying the X, one of them is wrong. And I think in this game, I know which one is wrong. <laughs> is there a river there in the shadow? No. Uh, Ox, some people in chat think they've seen this uh, game before. Did, have they seen it like on a bonus stream, or is this the second time casting the same game? Uh, I think the players were streaming it live. Okay. And then so we got permission it, uh, to uh, broadcast it. This was, I think, like oh, two weeks ago. Oh, he's scouts. Here. This is B bonus doing the scout switch. Hell yeah. Uh, if you watched uh, ASL, you'll know that the uh, scout timing attack is uh, pretty legit. Bonnet played Mihu two nine game show matches. This was the second one, the more recent one. All right. Uh, the first one, the score was 6 3 for Mihu. I'm really worried about that Viva. It was in range, but it, the tank didn't have vision. Oh, how does. Okay. <laughs> oh, doesn't right. get the shot. So, do you think the carries are going to be done in time? Well, uh, you mean scouts or? <laughs> the, oh, one of cats at the scouts. He's going back to carriers. 
Oh, so, it's, okay, okay. So the question is, are they going to be finished in time? <sighs> yeah, they're going to be finished in time for GG before he loses all his buildings. I think that's the situation here. So many units, and at this point, um, Karen can just defend everything with turrets, so there's no need for Karen to even add Goliath. He just needs to spawn turrets and just keep on pushing. Yep, this game is over. So, Bonnet 4 to 5, uh, very close games. I think uh, interesting to see that, uh, you know, the more harassment side of Mihu. I haven't seen it much before. What I've seen before is, you know, a much more kind of. 3-4 base, standard build-up, even versus carriers. Maybe, you know, some push, but overall very solid macro. We've seen some very cool aggressive games from him, you know, really taking over the momentum, the initiative, and uh, punishing Bonnet because Bonnet not being able to, you know, place his units in the right place basically, at all times. And falling to harassment. I mean, the last three games, right? Was, was, no, yeah. Except the Colosseum game, I mean... He was really struggling with harassment. Benzing game... This game. What, so, what gets me is we saw uh, five gas steals in a row. I think, including some on four-player maps. I think that's. Did he gas steal on a four-player map? No. Yeah, he did. Okay, first scout. He did, he did uh, proxy nine gate in the middle into gas steal on circuit makers. Ah, uh, okay, that was the third game. I haven't seen. Third game was Aztec. Uh, he. That fourth game was Circuit Breakers. Third, third game was Aztec, he did... Uh, oh, okay, I've joined the Circuit Breaking later. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Aztec, he did... Uh, uh, 13 Core, Dragoon, Gas Steel, then go back for range against a Gasless Expand, and it didn't do anything because he... His range was too late to harass the Bunker, but his uh, Robo was too late to harass anything else. And then Mihu right. just... Unseized everything and uh, ran uphill in Bonnet 1. So when a line of tanks is destroying your main base from kind of like, you know, bottom, from the low ground, you know it's not good for products. When you're That's playing on this map, signal. you know it's not good. Yeah, yeah. On any map, I think, if the line of tanks destroys your main, it's usually not good. <laughs> that Viva uh, shuttle play at the, uh, just above his main base was really good till the shuttle and the Reaver died. He got like eight kills on the Reaver against uh, tanks. It's a narrow choke, right? It's difficult to attack into a narrow choke like this. You have to go like a couple, you know, couple pixels every time. Apparently Reaver has got a lot of range too, right? When they just stand still, yeah. they shoot very fast. Mm. Oh, he was uh, dropping right. Zell up for the uh, tank fire. Once the tanks are fired, Reaver pops out, shoots them, jumps back in. Yeah, just... yeah I've seen that. Good play there. Okay, um, yeah. Maybe if this was the survive 30 minutes mission in the campaign, Tehran, could, could that be a win for Bonnet? No, no way. 15 minutes. It's only 14 uh... minutes in. There's no way he takes yeah. another 14 minutes. <laughs> He's not leaving the game, though, Kogan. But maybe Jim Rayner coming with rescue, or sorry, not Jim Rayner, uh, the other guys from. Uh... Artanis. Artanis, yeah, exactly. Although Jim Rayner, I think he was switching sides for campaign too, right? I've seen him with all the races at some point of campaign, right? He was with Zerg and Prodox who just shows up in the most uh, undefined moment to uh, yeah. you know, swing the whole story around. <laughs> so 19 probes, meaning Bonnet's army is almost as big as Miho's army, and we can actually see it visually, I think. Could that be a comeback to Gasteran? Kind of really remake the army? There seem to be quite a few Goliaths. Quite a few Goliaths, but only one tank. I mean, oh no, the choke. I think the way to play against Mihu is to uh, go like double Stargate Fleet Beacon, and then uh, like make them start flashing by putting some scouts on them. When the scouts are halfway done, cancel them, make them start flashing again, and then at the same time just go like Master Dragoon. That's that's the yeah. play. Yeah, it's funny to say that I was actually explaining this kind of a build at the, uh, to Draco at one of the ESLs in Italy when he was fighting with Firebat Hero and we were discussing double fake <laughs> the tech to force your opponent into something like this. But then Firebat Hero was just double checking everything anyway, so it didn't work. <laughs> so. I think you need the Fleet Beacon anyway. If you're, if you're ever going to go carries eventually, you need the Fleet Beacon just so you can start your air upgrades. So I quite like the idea of getting air upgrades early because you need them. But you don't need to go carriers early, you can go back for the carriers later. 
You could do it. But I think at some level it matters, right? I think Mihu, if he sees uh if he fixes carriers, he just a uh, switch goes and he's pure Goliath. Yeah. Well, I think uh Yeah, this is this is the moment where uh even two full base of 20 probes can anymore fulfill the you know mineral needs of the cars loading the receptors. Oh, the Reaver runs into the mines. Uh, well, no Reaver, then he's. Oh, he's I haven't seen that one. Where did that happen? <laughs> uh, he had a Reaver that was stuck inside his main base because he lost his robo and couldn't oh. go to shuttle. So we're okay, back in the mine. mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, the final bottle of the. Final battle of that base of nine, uh, Miu China is going to defeat Bonnet five to four. Very close series, very entertaining. I enjoyed different build orders for Miu and for Bonnet. Good game. They certainly woke up through the series. The first four were were pretty clowny, but they were getting less clowny each game. Yep. There you have it, folks. Quark says that he could have played Mihu better than Bonnet, and uh, Koga said he could have played against Bonnet better than Mihu. Game one, Mihu accidentally bunker rushed himself rather than the opponent. Well, I don't think I could have played any of these guys. Summarize your point, Ox, but thanks for. Uh... <laughs> That's what <laughs> we heard, guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That was great. I really enjoyed uh, listening to you two. I'm going to be leaving in about half an hour so hopefully Koget can uh, cast a lot of the Dwarf go on it because I'm not going to be able to stay there forever. Yeah, he's probably going to leave too so it's just going to be a silent cast for Dwarf for scoring it. Who wants the cast, folks? Who's out in chat scratching the cast? Where's LML? So I need to step out for five minutes. Um, maybe I can cast uh, one or two games. I'm, I'm yeah, no problem, my friend. This at nine, but uh, I'll be back with you. So feel free to hop okay. in and out. Cheers, guys. Take two. I'm gonna be right back as well. Next, we got the Vault for Scoring Niche. Let me see if I can track down some casters.
So are we ready to start? And I can stay here for a little bit longer, so... Let's see as much as I can before we run out of time. Alright folks, we got Quark. I did message a few other people in case you disappear. Yeah, so this is the BWG's weekly map pool, guys. Lots of old school maps, and then uh, the first one, I think the referee picks, it's Martian Cross. I don't know if I've ever seen this. And then it's Loser's Pick. So we have Goinich as the white Zerg in the top right, and Dewalt as the uh, blue Protoss in the bottom right. So I missed which map th this was. Uh... Martian Cross? Okay, don't know it. I don't think the players have ever played on this. Has anybody played on this map before? So Goinich did pretty well in uh, BSL recently, didn't he? He beat Boa in PVZ, which is no uh, easy task. Lost to Oya, I'm seeing. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember now. He had a really good game against that Chinese Protoss on uh, Ascension. So yeah, Goinich is uh, his PVZ looking good at the moment. I know he likes to do the four base uh, like Hive style. He's not really a uh, like a three hat hydra into six hat hydra style player. So I'm, I'm interested in seeing how he plays against the wall because he's he's kind of off meta. And we're starting with a, uh, is this a nine pull? It is a nine pull. Nine pull gas trick. Oh, it's nine pull double gas trick. No, nine pull speed. Okay. Interesting. And uh, Dewalt is going one base. Wait, what is going on? Dewalt's gone gas before gate. What is going on this game? Okay, uh, has anyone in chat seen this build before? Because I'm I'm lost. This is... Dewalt's cannon rushing himself. That's the build, man. I mean, apparently so. It gets a 9 full speed. But, I mean... It's... I, I I can't even begin to cast this. I don't know what's happening. Oh, we got the uh, lobsters on this map. Great. Okay, he started his plus one attack, and now he's only gone. He's gone down to just one for one gas. And the links are done, and he has no cannons. So I mean, right now it looks like if the, he's hoping the links are going to run the wrong way. It's no gateway, no cannons. Okay. Well, it, at least he saw the, uh, the links. Are you going to build a cannon? Do okay, there we go. We have a cannon. I have no idea what the rush distances are. I don't know if he's in danger or if he's safe. <laughs> and the speed links run towards the wrong base site. Yeah, he doesn't know where he is. Well, I mean, he's got Overlord. Look at the Overlord vision. Oh, that's unfortunate. I just blacked out the whole map. Yeah. Deal with it, chat. Okay, so one player is going for a one hat lair, and the other player is going for a cannon rush on their own base. And I think a cannon rush on your own base does actually beat one hat lair, is the thing. Oh, but we're going to have a lurker follow up. It's really unfortunate for, uh, for Gornich that he didn't have his lings. Uh, home to uh, deny this probe scout. If they denied the probe scout, this would actually be really effective. Like, it's... The problem is, any time that the Zerg does, like, a one hat there, they just don't... They have so few lava that they... Whatever they're doing, there's not going to be any of it. If they go Muter Rush, it's going to be three Muters, at most. If they go Lurker Rush, you're going to have three Lurkers. It's... 
it's incredibly weak for that reason that you you can unlock a lot of tech but you can't actually use that the, the tech that you've unlocked because there's nothing to you can't build so i mean i'm i think the just going to uh do like a forward pylon with some cannons and he'll be completely safe but had the uh speed links been able to keep the probe out of his base this could have been really effective That overlord not scouting to to the bottom right was uh, not what uh, going it was hoping for. Okay, now we're unlocking drop. Okay, so he's just gonna go around the cannons. <laughs> he should just let him go inside his base. I mean, he's got a cannon. Well, I mean, lurkers have very long range. You don't want to have to have build like eight cannons to cover all the buildings. I don't think Gore even wants to go in his main. So, Welcome back, everyone. Back, what? thank you. Uh, do you want to get caught up on what you missed? No, I think I can see what is happening. It's a one base Zerg versus one base Protoss Lurker all in. A Martian cross. Very interesting. This is the yeah, map. so uh, what Cannon rushed himself. Uh, Gore Nick did a nine pull speed opening oh attack. My <laughs> <laughs> so the 9 pull speed link just ran to bottom left because Gornich missed the scout. And now Gornich is going to do a slow drop with the Overlord across the wall into Dwarf's Wow, but the Steelhats are just going to... Oh my god. Oh, these the critters are, are horrible. Oh, yeah, these critters are horrible, but actually, you know, this is also good because Lurkers cannot go around. Are these Lurkers finding a way? The other way? Or is this the only path? Okay, you can also go this way. There's, a, there's, an, there's an Overlord uh, heading towards 6 o'clock. So he's going to be able to go that way too. <laughs> oh, also, the from the middle of the map can just deny the the natural, can't they? But this, can this, just... I don't, yeah, this, this should go great for Garnish. I mean, as long as he doesn't die to the Zealots and one sun can in a couple links is enough to not die to the Zealots, they all are not aware of what is happening. So you know. Plus one Zealots. Yeah, he, he did a plus one rush. Oh, the cannon rush uh, into plus one from uh, one base. Yeah. Oh, very old school build. I loved it. This was. This was in the, Originally developed from destination, uh, also on one, one one. Okay, so the lurkers are dropping across now. And the thing is, yeah. they have to know that it's, the lurkers have gone missing. He saw the eggs, and yeah. then the lurkers did something, and now they're not there anymore. He should be Nexus. too surprised. And <laughs> Nexus is dead, hundred uh, percent. And that yeah, natural so was... Nexus is also uh, going to be in danger. He can, he can just run a lurker across the top in. Behind the middle line at the top, can he? He just saved all his probes. That's amazing. Oh, uh, yeah, is going to undropping the lurker. He needs to get it to his natural. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he will be easily able to use. No, okay. Is he going to run? No, the probes are going to block. Yeah, yeah he missed course. his timing. He could have put that there at any point until right now when the probes were blocking it. So is that a robot building at the main base? And the is that exposed to lurkers? He's just going to kill it. No, okay, it's not natural. Okay. Right, next. Oh, no, I mean, the Robo good. is exposed. You are correct that he could he kill the Robo. Exposed. Yeah, he could kill the Robo, but he doesn't know. He's making an observer, but he doesn't have any units to kill the lurkers. I mean, you can't do it with probes, obviously. That is why it was all just three lurkers. If, because if like he had one more lurker, yeah. he could have shut down all the mining. You don't even need to drop it in. You can shut down the mining from across the... the correct, the, uh, from across the ridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The small whatever, yeah. True, true. Uh, do all recognizing that he's making an observer, but he doesn't have anything to fight lurkers. He's consciously returning with two zealots. He's got another two in his base, so he's going to try to flank the four lurkers. He'll finally, uh, oh, you know, retreat his is stuck main. On, is stuck on what the something in the middle of the map. It's just stuck on the uh, on one of the doodads. It just kept running back and forth. Okay. Back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> this map doesn't work. Okay, here comes the lurker drop. Oh, what is there is a pilot in rocket? There's a pile and spam, making sure that if he lands, he lands in the range of the cannon. But now he moved him back for some reason. What is happening? He needs to drop. And he does. Oh, he the observer. But the probes are still so exposed. There's going to be so many kills. One, two. No, he's going to run. <laughs> Why did he run? <laughs> he could have killed so many there. <laughs> oh, no. He can still borrow it, as you said. I mean, this is one of the old school maps. It's a very old school map. This is like 2002 map, something like this, I think. This is the times uh, 2003, maybe. So very, very old times, uh, this kind of a map was played. I remember this map, and I remember this horrible uh, harassment of lurkers. I used to play photos also at this time. So this is, uh, yeah, this is a conscious decision by Gornish. All the probes back because the lurkers are harassing you from the other side. <laughs> well, drones, though. Yep, no mining for Protoss for next 
three minutes or whatever how long next is being built. Well, I think Zerk is in a great spot here. I mean, the fact that he has got his third hatchery going and the Protoss is not mining any minerals and it doesn't look like he's gonna change. He's gonna probably plant the Nexus now in his main base. He did, but that's gonna take forever before he gets full mining back. So what's the plan? River, I mean, right? I think it has to be River, but if I'm Zerk now, I'm just already making my second guess and just going Mutas because that's the easiest choice. If you know your opponent doesn't have Couriers, you just go Mutas. It's It would have been so easy for Gornich to have uh, denied that the mining on the natural is what gets me. It's, it's This game should have been over already. Yeah, but I think it's still over. I mean, he's making Hydra, that's also a fair choice because the world is just not mining for the next couple of minutes. This counterattack is not gonna anything, do anything. There are lurkers in position. He's also making a sun can even. So Gornich being super secure, uh, really respecting Dual's ability to produce units, but this is just four zeros and a gun. No way it's gonna even come close to this. Yeah, he's forced to luck his home at least. I think there's like 20 critters on this map. He'd be mining his natural right now. There's, there's no lurkers at his natural anymore. Yeah, he'll, he'll he notice in a second. Yeah, he'll work it out. He doesn't know. <laughs> Yeah, he's now checking to kill, trying to clean all the lurkers and recognizing, of course, that there is nothing. And we're the back. second, the, the second first nexus is being completed, so uh, that's gonna put his economy back on the map. Um, yeah, back on the map because basically it didn't exist before. Gornish, for some reason, decides to all in with this. Uh, I think he didn't recognize how much economic damage he did with all the mining lost. Now he's gonna again deny the mining here. There's a Dragoon, but one Dragoon with no range is not going to be able to do much. Yeah, he's he has range. range. Yeah. It does have range. It has to be range. Wow. Yeah. It is range. Yeah, it looks so. I mean, the range is crazy, but still the Orcas are quite tanky. So I don't think this one gun is able to clean it. He's now adding some draws. So Gurn's still a little bit mixing it up. He's not sure what the wall is doing. He's adding draws again after completing all the uh, higher upgrades. So he, his economy could have been much bigger now. And I think that opens at least small opportunity for the wall to come back. And here are the... Here are the Mutas, although they're a little bit late, I would have left a spam of draws before the Mutas, so he can kind of, you know, build up the economy and make Mutas, but I think he's doing this now. It's okay. What do you think are the odds, Quark, for uh, the world coming back and winning this game? Uh, not looking great, especially if those probes take a hit. But uh, he didn't take that much damage from the first two Lurkers. He lost his Nexus, but he had his probes go to a different Nexus. He didn't lose any of his tech. Didn't lose a single yeah. pylon, he just lost the Nexus only. So it's uh, it could have been worse for him, but it, obviously it's not good. He's for some reason adding another sun can. Okay, he's really can't consider some kind of a muta all in. Seems like Gornich. I think he's gonna be maybe hiding his initial mutas, but uh, I do expect mass goon from Duald now. So I don't know if mass muta. Well, it's gonna work still, but of course uh, Gornich doesn't know it's mass goon. Duald basically recognized that. He doesn't have anything than just gateways. He can't take up. He's too late to the party to take up. So he's just gonna mass gun here. Does he have plus one attack or is it just plus one armor? Uh, he has plus one attack. Wow, this is yeah, actually plus one attack a... rush. So oh, this no, could uh, be a pretty scary attack. Goons take reduced damage. So uh, mutes take reduced damage from goons. And of course, lurkers are medium sized for some reason. So yeah, nothing still, takes full he... damage from goons. I know, but goons are still very strong, so if he gets like 16 or, you know, 12, 12, 14, 15 goons with uh, these few zealots, I don't think that Zerg can kill it with his two basic arms. Yeah, well, he's got seven with three more building. Yep. And I think he's two more rounds. Oh, Lurker Spines. Okay, I need the one probe. I'm amazed that he doesn't have cannons. I guess if he had cannons up there, the, mute the Hydra could kill them. Yeah. Any cannons that are in range to cover from the Lurkers would be exposed. Grinch is doing real, real good job trying, you know, consistently harassing the world. Uh, these mutas are going to be great because uh, with no Corsair or Templar tech, you need to add more cannons and you can also snipe observers and also you can, yeah, do that synergy. I think the problem is now exactly that you can't really resume mining here. So the world has got one last shot and he needs to go with everything he has. He will still have enough minerals to produce from four gateways from his main base. So one base is enough to produce you know, four, four gateways of units. Um, but he's also making props. I'm not sure. I think maybe it's wiser to just go complete all in at this point. Just yeah, avoid making Yeah, because the economy has recovered. Going now on 25 drones, taking the top left. Yeah. The, the, 
you can't let go in it. Cover yeah. flip, anyway. I think it's the instincts that tell the wall to build props and you know try to survive this. And I think it's, it's the right instinct because usually in this situation you just need to remain you know calm and try to recover. But I think you can't allow to not be mining. You know it's kind of like too much damage, right? It's not the kind of a situation where you can just sit back and try to build up. I think he's bleeding too much, yeah, too many minerals at this point. So some blinks just showed up at the bottom half of uh, Dewalt's natural, and I think Dewalt didn't realize you could actually go that way. There's an extra path down there. He just sent me <laughs> to see yeah. what was going on. <laughs> oh my goodness. How are these links there? Because he's only been used in the exit to the right hand side previously. Yeah. He's adding another cannon to all though, so I'm not sure about that. And it's such a bizarre cannon to the right of uh, of his natural, just outside of any range of anything. Like his, uh, what is his, his word of the past? There are mutas in the main base of the walls. Yeah, this is GG. I think we can. Yeah, this is now gonna be difficult. I think. <coughs> yeah, he needs to go back. The map is too long and there are critters on the bridges that he needs to kill. Uh, I mean, yeah, the economy is gone. Still, he's got more probes though. Well, I think if there was ever time to go, it's now the walls. Uh, you can't just sit base and take punches like this. I mean, you know, this, this left jab is gonna get to you at some point. You can't just allow Zerg to keep on doing this um, and punish. So he's moving in with a couple of units. He's targeting the Lurkers. The Mutas are joining the force. And actually, uh, this is so off timing from the wall because now actually the Mutas will be able to single pick all those goons. And now, oh, yeah, if he only got uh, all the units together, it would have been a different story. Good game. Well, after he got the Observer Tech, he spent a while trying to work out how to get to those Lurkers on the other side. I think if he'd known it, that there was a path, it would have been a little bit easier for him to shut it down. Very annoying game for Garnish, for sure. First game, really tough. But, uh, well, it's just a warm-up game, who knows what was the condition of players when they played it. Also, my experience with Dewalt from uh, as I played with him, um, back in the day, I would win Dewalt if there was very weird maps, like the world never thrives in very weird maps because he's so good with his build order and he's so practiced. So when there's a very odd map like this one, um, he tends to, you know, not be so confident in his build order. And I think that's what we've seen here. The map was a little bit odd and he couldn't really put it all together. So I think the more standard maps we're going to get, the more dominating the world should be. But this kind of maps, if we have more of those, I think Gornich is my pick. I mean, he's good with this kind of ridiculous scenarios like this. So you're going to recognize this map. Okay, I'm, uh, I I don't see it yet, so I'm very curious. Okay, I see it now. Uh, okay, that looks like Fighting Spirit. It is Fighting Spirit. The best map ever. Prove me wrong. The top left on Fighting Spirit is dumb as hell. <laughs> It's just a, it's the, a long distance between the natural and the main, and then you get to the main and the uh, like the gas is on the far. It's just you. Oh yeah, the gas is in the bottom too, right? Mm. So the top left, uh, the it's on the far side of the nexus. If if they ever get top left, you just can't rush them. Oh, I still love the map. You're, you you have not you have not convinced me, Quark. <laughs> it's. What about the fact that the twelve o'clock there is just a black hole that sucks units in? Which one? Uh, the 12 o'clock, uh, the ramp from the top left to 12 o'clock has a black hole. Oh, yeah. Oh, the vortex. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The vortex is there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But these are, these are, these are, you know, details. I mean, I'm talking about the overall design of the map and this kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a reason that Fighting I mean, Spirit was the standard map for so long. And it's, it's. And you have, a, and you have, and you have the ramp vortex on so many other maps too, right? It's just, it's just the pure amount of games that was played on or fighting spirit, you know, making it so evident that it's there. <laughs> Else, uh, people wouldn't even recognize that it's there. You know, it's just a handful of games played. Okay, so, do we're going for the uh, Forge Double Scout? This is very, very conservative, but he did just get nine pull speed. So, last game, so that's fine. And going, it's going for the Overpull. Yep, it's a it's a ten Gasto. Is this? Uh, it's actually a nine pull. It's actually a nine pull. He's doing. So yeah, nine pull. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nine pull, and of course, uh, this is a perfect counter for Dewalt. So he's gonna just put two cannons and enjoy his life. Uh, no issue, two cannons are gonna hold it beautifully. But I think he needs two, right? Even if it's no speed. Yeah, you no, always need two. Gonna... Well, no speed though. Oh, wow. Very nice moving shot. Picking up that drone. 
I think yeah. he's gonna stay with one. You can stay with one, but okay, no, there's no, no. And you this one, but then he's like, now he's gonna need yeah. to pull globes. I don't like yeah, this. exactly because uh, yeah, I don't like it so late, right? Because it doesn't really help you anymore. If it's so late, yeah. and also at the bottom, you want to do it higher up because then it can actually the links it stops the links from running through. These links should absolutely go for a run through here. And you see, he's had to pull four probes. Yeah, uh, okay, and it's also gateway. So as soon as the probe in the main recognize that all the links left the base. Oh, one probe. This, okay. is, this is the this issue is with going one cannon. Like Two. you could block it with link. You could block it with probes. Cancel, 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 cancel. He okay, cancel. Yeah, he did cancel it. Perfect. So very nice timing there. Uh, but I think it was actually pretty okay for Gornich. He only made six Gornich. links. Yeah, he made the six links, and once you make the six links, you force the cannons, and the, forcing the cannons yeah. is meant to be the damage. You're not meant to get any probes. But yeah. even though he forced the cannons, and even though he delayed the Nexus, he still got five probes taken off the middle line. He killed two of them. That is fantastic, because he doesn't need these links. The links have already paid themselves just by slowing the Nexus. So killing a few extra probes, that's great. That's, that's something you never expected to get in the first place, and you never should have gotten. Seems like going straight to cannons and into Nexus, keeping gateway and just maybe having two probes or so, right? For you don't need any probes with double, ca double cannon. Yeah, double yeah, cannon yeah exactly. maybe maybe one probe, right? Something like this, just to buckle links a little bit, yeah. Yeah, that it's it's looks you're correct, like it was a better choice, yeah. That looks yeah, like it was that's a, better a mistake. Choice. People who go one cannon are doing it wrong. The one that annoys me is yeah. yeah. like one cannon gateway, and you're like, okay, so the cannon will eventually kill six links, but you have to have like five probes plugging the gaps. To buy you the time, yeah. you this isn't saving you any money. This is slowing you down. No, and maybe yeah, Dewalt wasn't sure for some reason what he's against. Maybe he was uh, thinking that uh, there are some drones in the X. I don't know what was this, but yeah, definitely think that he added the second cannon anyway didn't help at all. If he added it later, he should have done it. Maybe so hydrogen. Anyway, hydrogen already, uh, and also this zealot coming here with uh, very nice timing. Gorant is not ready. He is actually hatching four links yeah. now, but this he's gonna have to hold it on the ramp. Very nice the vortex, <laughs> as we said it. He almost <laughs> he almost made it. Of course, not not the ramp we're talking about, but uh, it also looked pretty good. Two zealots now, and there are what six links. So he needs some drones help still, I feel. Yeah, Else he can be uh... pretty low. Yeah, and also the links are very low, right? So he needs to be very careful here. And the third zealot is already coming in. He's at the moment where he wants to make those final drones and start pumping Hydras, but he's forced into making links. So the world successful with that little harassment, uh, making sure that Gornich, you know, invests in the units he doesn't really want to make. Speed, and although, is already no on link way. speed. All of these zealots are just seeing if speed links are going to kill them. If speed links don't kill these zealots, you're always there. Going, wait a second, where is your gas, Zerg? Where are the speed links? Yeah. And the Pretty answer true. is it's Hydras, and Dwarf knows it's Hydras. Should be Hydras, could also be uh, like a 5 hatch play before gas, right? Unless he's put a gas. But he doesn't have more, see more hatcheries, could be main though. So so there are still some options, I think. It's not 100%, but of course in this situation it is Hydra. Uh, very nice. Coming back with Zealots is also a great win because he forced so many links, I think 10 links overall. So uh, really good job on that one. He forced some mining time. Extremely well done. And also one Zealot in there, adding a second cannon, which I think is basically part of the build order at this point. He does not... He doesn't know yet. He's also making yeah. Very, everything is very standard. But Corsair is already out. How many hydras does he have? Two, three, zero. He's building four. This first one. To, okay, he's gonna see the hydras. Zelot gets in. Oh, that is and also sees uh, and also sees speed. Yeah, plus two cannons. and he's good, right? He just needs four uh, cannons here, I think. It's. I mean, you can still die. It's, it's, three hat hydra is really tricky because there's three hat hydra into fourth hatchery lair, and then there's three hat hydra and just non-stop hydra. And if you if you believe that it's uh, just a free hat hydra to bust your wall, yeah, I think you four can, cannons you can die with, and I think you can die with four cannons. Like, you, seriously, it's... <laughs> no, no, you need to add more. You need to add more, but four for now is more than enough. That's my yeah. point, right? Uh, he doesn't yeah, need to build gonna more. Buy him time. Gonna make, yeah, yeah, enough time to scout with Corsair and confirm that if this is in fact mass, then he can add more. Is that a good one? Good interest cannon. He's going for it. He's gonna get one. No, oh, so much damage for free on this hydras. Also, two hydras down or one hundred down in the link. Not a best start to the attack by Gornish, who seems to be all in because he still keeps on making Hydras. Four more away, range is 95% down, so we might see a jump on those cannons in just a second. As the okay, the range is finished. Is he gonna sack all the links? It seems like he's gonna sack all the links and try to kill the top two, uh, the two first cannons. Okay, no, he's gonna focus on the wall first. Yeah, you can't do a link against this many zealots. Against this many zealots, the links are kind of worthless. Yeah, the that's probably true. Down. I mean, 
Overall, they all looks like just to be too solid with their wall to be honest, right? He's got everything. He's got six scanners. If he keeps he's going hydras, I, I believe if he keeps going hydras, then he can get something done here. But I mean, yeah, what, I think, what I, is adding cannons to the thing? It's so oh, tempting no, here no, as Photos to say, well, I've got six zealots, six cannons. How is, how is this going to get broken? And uh, sure. as no, true. I mean, medicine, he's just like, yeah, okay, let's make it seven cannons, eight, nine cannons. He doesn't no, care. As long as, as long as the Corsair there on the, you know, next to natural sees uh, relic hydras, he should just keep on adding cannons. I mean, as you yeah. said, there is no magic number. It can be 10, it can be 12. It can be one too many, basically, to a point that it's stupid. But as long as you have your probe count going and you have your high temper tech going, you will be held it and you will be able to come back into this game winning. 10 cannons okay. and he's called he's the probes. Ready. This is what you do. He's, this is. Like... Yeah. <laughs> of course, that's what you do, precisely. And Goran Edge, he seems like he's waiting for the next round. So it's actually pretty good for him that. Uh, the world already now decided to pull the probes. His storm is only maybe 20% done. It's still gonna be a long way before he can actually storm this hydras. So I think the additional five hydras is basically any, uh, yeah, all that Gorinch can afford in that tag. And he just needs to go, but I don't think this is enough. I think Gorinch is ready well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Gorinch so, uh, is ready well. Sorry, that Dwell, Corsair is, well. That Corsair is sitting there with vision of the middle line that Gorinch is natural. The moment Gorinch goes, those probes are gonna drill. Look at him go. That's yep. what that Corsair is doing. Yeah, exactly. It gave him that vision for the drill. Zillow's on hold position. Only one cannon died so far. Quite a few probes dying, but still a big lead. Only 20 probes, and now he's trying to dive in a little bit deeper. But the deeper you go, the DPS increases because there are so many layers of cannons. I mean, it's not just cannons. Because six yes. doesn't cut it. <laughs> and that's it. I mean, only 600 <laughs> remaining. And basically, that's it. He killed maybe good 12 probes in that, I think. He had around 46 probes, uh, so maybe... 10, 12 probes killed, but again, there's so much commitment for Gorinage that it's gonna be extremely difficult, to pick up, especially in tech. Their storm is coming in, it's gonna burn five hydras immediately. Now, oh my god, it's a great storm actually. Gorinage probably gonna just add up straight into eight gateways, not even gonna care about anything else, just gonna cut probe production in two or three probes. I think 41 is probably that's gonna stop and just gonna mass from all those gateways with those upgrades already done. Plus one is finished. Despite losing that forge, he has finished his plus one. And he's just gonna wait for four high templars and just, you know, a round of zealots and guns and he's just gonna go. And it will be uh, probably impossible. <laughs> Extremely difficult is maybe not enough set to hold it for Goranich. He's gonna must draw now, but I mean, he would need lurkers. He would need something yeah. to hold it. Pure this units will not be able to do it. Six gate against three hat. Okay, a four hat actually, one of them finished. But even so. Yeah. Isn't this five hat? Actually, I think five hat. Yeah, five, five hat is yeah not yet finished. It's on the way. True, true. Yeah, and Gorinich I think recognizes that the only thing he can do is mass hydra now, and that's correct because any kind of tech would be too late, just because he did not do anything while first uh, preparing for the big all in. The all in did not work. Gorinich very confident because he gets the full scout of course with Corsair, so he knows exactly what Gorinich is doing. He knows exactly where his tech is. He can be greedy, he can move out with those units, just having to storm copper zealots. Because if he does it, he makes sure that Gorinch does nothing else but Hydras. And as long as he does it, he will just out macro him sooner or later. I love that he went to 12 cannons. It's just, as Photos, you're like, oh, yeah, this, this feels pretty safe. And then you lose over and over on ladder. And just yeah. you walk with that discipline. He goes, I've been here before. I've, I've lost yeah. from this spot before. Oh, the oh, fastest storm. storm ever. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. No, the thing about cannons, it's all about a Corsair, right? So, um, you need to either be able to kill the Corsair Zerg, because it's almost impossible, else, you know, Protoss can just keep on adding cannons, and, and in theory, they are winning. GG, okay, okay, okay. Good game. <laughs> yeah, I just... I have PTSD, there's so many games, I'm like, okay, I scouted the Free Hat Hydra. I built the defenses, I should be fine. <laughs> and Hydras are just so good. There's, there's no amount of cannons that is enough. If they if they don't transition out of Free Hat Hydra, you don't transition out of building cannons. True, true. Now there's this micro map that the guy and Tim Lincoln made, and uh, one of the levels was, I think, uh, I think it was maybe 12 Hydra or 11 Hydras, something like this. I wrenched Hydras, Speed Hydras. And you had to fire like six or seven cannons, and you basically win that round of microing, right? So 11 Hydras or 12 Hydras win 6 or 7 cannons. <laughs> so you have to be very careful 
with you know your probe drills, your zealots, and make it additional cannons because if eleven hydras big six cannons, yes, twenty four hydras big twelve cannons, <laughs> kind of twelve cannons, six zealots, and a probe drill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, rush hour. My favorite map when I was uh, when I was a teenager. I really liked this map as a teenager. I watched a lot of games of you know Dallas Times Pro Gamers and also Top Frainers. This was the glory days of StarCraft, Rush Hour. Yeah, this is the first map I ever saw a Forge Fast expand on. I think I saw a Val rep and I was like, this is this is weird and I love it. Yeah. This map basically defines a transition from like, you know, a very old kind of like StarCraft played, you know, one base everything. Uh, you know, your natural expansion is like 30 seconds away from main type of bases, like, you know, WCG 2001, this kind of stuff. And, and this this map is where I think the real game has started to emerge. Like, you know, like more fine build orders, more more micro build orders, you know, not so much of one base all in crazy things that were going there for the first three, four years of StarCraft. So Rush Hour, definitely a meaningful map for the history of StarCraft. Characteristic is that natural base is basically undefendable. Yeah. So it's so horrible, you can harass the mineral line from all angles with uh, Hydras, Mutas, Lurkers, uh, anything basically goes. So yeah. <laughs> that's why I mean it's a kind of like an in-between map, because it has got the features of modern maps already. It has got a nice fat natural with a lot of minerals in main base, it's a 9 plus 7 setup. So it has got all that, but it still has got some odd features of undefendable naturals making PvZ super tricky. And uh, TVZ, sorry, ZVT, super tricky, right? Marines uh, would love some uh, some uh, exposure on the gas and so on. So. so very curious how it's gonna play out. I mean, nine seven three or similar would be amazing here. So we'd be happy to see Gornish going for something like that. I would like the to see though, take a third base as his second base because the third bases are quite nice. They've got these uh, <laughs> relatively small ramps. <laughs> They've got gases. Yeah, the high, the high ground. ground. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god. That'd be crazy. But where is Gordon going? He's actually going like, where is he going? Like, he's scouting. So he's going to get his nice um, overpool uh, 12 hatch here or 13 hatch. Good. And so this is uh, Nexus. Building. Wow. No, he mm. went to 14. So normally you go 13 next, 13 cannon. And that's kind of workable. This is. Uh, yeah, this is okay. This is okay. Next I mean, cannon. you need to order a cannon with Lynx hatch. That cannon doesn't cover the ramp. Good. It doesn't cover the ram, and there we get into the problems of the map. But he, yeah. if he pulls probes, he's gonna be able to, to hold it, right? But this is exactly rush hour for you. Um, Gornich, he will see it with an overlord, so he can actually plan an attack here. Second cannon makes sense. Look at the distance though. Links don't even know where to go. They just struggle in the middle of the map. They should be Two going to the bottom against path. Four links is pretty good for yeah. the uh, misclick. He misclicked with links. They went the, other, the wrong way. So anyway. <laughs> Look at that gateway also covering the entrance. So Dual definitely with a spontaneous wall here. Uh, again, think about 973 from this position when your gateway is covering uh, top of your base and you have to make cannons basically at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> and not just cannon covering... Like You have to build cannon to guard the cannon to the left of your nexus. And it doesn't even cover the mineral line. It's... No. <laughs> you could build so like, eight happens. cannons and still not yeah, cover yeah. anything. No, exactly, uh, and that's why I think, wow, this is going to be mass, uh, mass seal I like it. So I was just to say that this is uh, no, no wonder because on this map, Protoss would tend to open 2-gate, and I think 2-gate is a good build here because Zerk also struggles defending his natural with Sankens, right? You don't have good positions for your Sankens to build them. Um, it will be exposed. So 2-gate is strong, but this is mass seal so it's a fake gas, so uh, Dewalt is just going to show... Gornich that he's mining gas and he's probably gonna cut the probes uh, as soon as you know Overlord moves out or yeah he's already trying to cut some probes but he doesn't yet want to show it he's pretending that he's mining gas look Gornich I'm getting so much gas for the Corsair I don't even have cybernetic score I'm not making probes yes I'm gonna move those probes away just as your Overlord moves out and I'm gonna spam you with my zealots I think this is how you have to play it as a uh, duo because this this map was balanced in its time because people didn't know how to play the game, but it's not balanced anymore. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's an interesting, yeah. Well, I, he's not if I had from... to play this straight up and I did a fast expand, I think I would want to do like an Oya style Dragoon range rush and just micro the hell out of Dragoons. I think that's the way to. Sure. 
sure, sure. Or just two gate, or just two gate, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, I think you can build, in theory, some kind of a cannon line around this, but you would really need to know what you're doing, right? Like, be very precise on it, and you still could have failed. So, yeah. So, Gornich has been looking for the Cybernetics Co, I think. He's uh, no, had his I... Overlord look at the natural. He had a different Overlord look at the front of the natural. Had the no, Overlord but he's going, the he's going Hydras, as we discussed. But Hydras actually think... I think Hydras are actually going to hold it pretty well. Because he has a Hydra speed already. If he has like four or five Hydras with speed, a couple links, he will play it easy. I think this is Gorn's game. To be quite honest, this is what I was talking about. The world is the map, the strongest Gorn is gonna be. And these Zillas are doing great, but this Hydra has good speed, so they can run around and just snipe one by one. Relatively easy. Sanka is ready, yeah. Ramp is blocked. This is easy hold for Gornich. And now, you're kinda stuck with your slow Zillas. Adding core on 400 gas with a base that cannot be hold with cannons, which is a Zerg that is spamming Hydras. Is that 2 1 Quark? Or are we calling this too early? I think that this is probably done, looking at this one. And yeah, this is. Uh, this I, I did say this is the first map I ever saw Forge Vast expand on. But looking at this, I mean, I don't know how it was ever meant to work. <laughs> yeah, I would go, by the way, I would go here gateway expand, right? Because if anything, you know, you can't hold your ramp anyway, right? So we might as well just throw zillots. <laughs> would the just playing old school going uh, for... Uh, I was going to say uh, going for uh, zealot legs into uh, expand off one base. Yeah, you need something like this, but do all just GG's and it makes sense. There was nothing else. I mean, we we knew it. He knew it. Everyone knew it. <laughs> the I map that was a rush hour now, though. Yep. I, I I forgot rush hour existed, but I'm a little bit nostalgic. I might play it later. All right. The two on for Gorinich. Do you guys That's ever right. play in BWG's weekly? That's been going on forever. Like, I think what every week for two years or more. Come again? Which one? BWG's oh, Weekly. Yeah. It's on, like, Saturdays. Yeah. I mean, I haven't played this because it's, like, Saturday morning or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, it always, it always could, you know, it doesn't work with my family schedule, so. I think they're still going to be hosting it despite the esports news about the fund. Mm. Hopefully. I think it's pretty cool that they have this map pool, you know? It's, it gives a good variety. Because oh, there's I a lot it. of streams and events with just standard maps. I, personally, I love it because I'm the kind of a player that enjoys this uh, super old school maps. Um, it's just, you know, lives in nostalgia for me. <laughs> but yeah, definitely enjoy it. All right, we have game number four here with DeWalt. Spawning at the uh, top left corner as Red Protoss. And here, with... Uh, okay, I was just going to say with a 5 pool, but he decides to make a drone. But at the uh, bottom 7 o'clock or something like that, we have Gorinich as Blue Zerg. Yeah, and that's Long Longinus, right? Longinus, Longinus, yeah. uh, whatever you pronounce it. Uh, another great classic. With a double gas on the third base or fourth base, depends on how you take it. So, very good PvZ map. You can also open two gate here from natural and have a tight wall, kind of tight wall versus links. But I, it could be what Dewald is going for actually. And Gornich. I, I think I'd like to see on this map is a uh, Muta Scourge time attack off of the uh, double gas. Oh. Yeah, but, uh, but why specifically on that map, though? Because uh, with four gases, uh, you can make you can go like pure muter. Like you can trade yeah. with like, double Stargate uh, Corsair and just keep going muter forever. I just think it'd be interesting okay. to see because this is the unique yeah. feature on Londonus is the double gas. I want to see what happens. Mm hmm. I, I get your point. I think it's very hard to do it <laughs> because. The problem is that, you know, air units for Zerg do not really scale at some point, right? To some point, I mean, 
If you get like 11 plus one Corsair, right? I mean, <laughs> I don't know how much gas you need to beat 11 plus one Corsair, right? That's my point. <clears throat> okay, Forge expand anyway. So the world thinking, I think, you know, I think, I think the world is, knows that, you know, as long as the game goes on, as long as it drags, he can probably win it or be an advantage just because of how he, how, you know, practice he is. So he goes for those forward expand builds, you know, to avoid some kind of nine pulls for Garnage when he needs to a little bit gamble, maybe. Rob is doing some good harassment. Garnage so far also very solid with his build. Gonna get his first Overlord to scout him. I don't remember, but I think the Overlord met the probe, right? So he knows where he is, although the other one still flies to the right. So this is a 14 and... next 14 cannon. It's not really safe, but uh, he's correct. The uh, gun is doing good in two lengths. So he's uh, getting a tiny bit of extra economy there. I think this is uh, perfect and normal, right? You basically need to add a cannon when links hatch. That's it. Yeah. Uh, so so there's not much risk. I mean, he sees two links. He has one cannon. This is all perfect. He's going to throw a gateway now. Throw his gas. It's going to be good. Yeah, it's a very clean so, build. Very standard, exactly. Nothing uh, out of ordinary. Oh, and it takes wall. such a natural. Did he cancel his gas? What happened with that drone? Oh, oh, he was out of minerals. Okay, now he builds uh, this. Yeah, he's taking out a natural. Makes sense on this map again. Uh, think about a uh, third base is very exposed. You could do it, but fourth base, you know, kind of, you know, far away maybe, and you can't really use the ramp to defend it. That's the problem, right? So you have to like build some kind of a sunken city if you want to defend with sunken. So I think it's okay, and also it's a free player map. So a unique feature of a free player map is that if Zerg somehow manages to survive to the late game while taking that base as he took now, he basically takes, you know, two thirds of a, of a cake, kind of like, right? Two thirds of a pie is his, and any kind of a late game scenario will just favor Zerg. So strategically, yeah. it's a very strong decision, but of course it creates some early and mid, mid game problems for Zerg because early game, of course, Zealots run around the map, so you have to be, you're more stretched to hold them. And mid game, those first big Protoss pushes with goons can also be very strong because he has got two places where he can push and you need to sunk in both. You can't rely on pure units to hold it. So it's sacrificing some of the early game and mid game for great benefits in late game. That's what it gives you the far away expansion for Zerg. So I'm gonna have to leave you there, unfortunately. I am out of time. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for joining us. So Ox, will you join me on a duo cast now? Yeah, of course, my friend. Let's do it. So, you asked me, who do I uh, who do I cheer for in Bonnet versus Mihu? So now I'm gonna ask you, who do you cheer for in Dewald versus Gorinch? I think Gory, just because he's kind of the underdog. He used to be like one of the reigning foreign champions, though, right? This was during the period I was inactive, obviously. But I think like back when Siki was really good, Gory was active. I think Garnish was just, is, is, I think Garnish is consistently good. Um, Maybe not the reigning foreign champion. He had he had some uh, he had some good wins uh, also in Russia specifically. I think in Russia he's uh, he was always bigger in Russia than internationally. He had some uh, big tournament wins back in the days also versus players like Dewald um, and so. So I think he has got some very, very strong reputation there. Internationally, he's just been very solid always. You know, good top eight, top four, BSL mm -hmm. material. So, so definitely a good player. Definitely a good player. In Who are you rooting for? <laughs> um, I'm gonna root for Garnish too. I know yeah. him a lot, uh, but I, I know both them. I know both the Wald and Garnish. I think maybe I'm 50-50 here. Maybe I'm 50-50. Nice plus deal and hide there. Being found now by an Overlord. So. With this build, when you take this far expansion, Muta builds also make a lot of sense. And I think that's what we're gonna see Gornish going for. He has got four hand gas, so probably maybe no, maybe not Muta build. He should probably need a second gas by now if it's Muta build. But this is what I was talking about. One Zealot stretching stretching the um, Gornish to the left, while the rest of the Zealots hitting to the right. So his units are completely out of position. He's gonna need to pull all those uh, drones. He's losing one already. It's causing a lot of mining time. And uh, another Zealot, meantime, walking into the natural base. So the world really playing his opponent. Can't cover all the angles. Half of the links, no, for a second, half of the links were going back, but then he realizes it doesn't enough. 
And now the drone line is being harassed. Oh my god, Gordon is in a lot of trouble now. The Overlord, his supply block, the drones are drilling to not get killed by Zilla. And here, he's also finding a lot of damage because Lynx kind of find a good engagement with, in this narrow choke. And now the Zilla, not a Zilla coming in, he's adding Sandcat. So Gordon is going to be able to stabilize this finally. Not before losing almost all of slings, and also these deals are not even clean. But at what cost? I mean, he's 37 supply, 36, so 20 supply ahead to the wall. He's already adding plus one, he's adding Carter, he's adding a DT. So his tech is flourishing perfectly. He's traded cheap zealots for some economy and links. Very good start. And these zealots are still doing damage. Crazy. Jesus. Also, it is done. Oh, disgusting. That That's zealot is damage. also gonna hide. It's kind yeah, of over, right? Good. That's too much damage to take. I mean, if this was Jadong, I would still be rooting for Jadong. And I mean it. Hey, he's back. But, yeah, he's back. But I think... Um, the world, very on top of his build order, he's got five Corsairs already. Four or five Corsairs. Five Corsairs. No plus one, but... Gornish is making Mutas, and that is really bad. Mm. I think he was really hoping that... The world's trying, tr gonna try to go for some kind of a speed lot, mass speed lot thing after this harassment. But this Corsair is just gonna wreck this mutant. I mean, sorry to say, but. Oh, the Skirt! Wow, okay. Very good Skirt that they were there. They saved the game here, basically. Good that they all respected this. With no plus one, it may feel like Corsair is just gonna dominate. But actually, if Muta spread and a couple of Skirts connect like this. This could have been a trade, actually, and the world doesn't want to trade. He wants to make his Corsair count like 9 or so, and with plus 1, he will have complete dominance in air. So there's going to be no way for Gorinch to kill this. I think 9 is what's going to go for. Now. 9 plus 1 Corsairs, and then it's... Uh, the air is clear. I've seen the world do this a few times. It's pretty powerful. And this is the response to expecting mutas and if Zerg takes this faraway expansion they are much more likely to go for mutas for a simple reason they need to use Sunken to defend those bases right you can't have hydras on both positions and if you make Sunkens what you want as Zerg is mutas because you have the static defense and then you have the mobility to both threaten protos harass protos but also defend right so mutas are a perfect choice for this not mandatory but a good choice uh, and I think that's what also the world anticipated I think the next problem is uh, that mid game I was talking about that you sacrifice something with this builder or you get this long term advantage, the strategic choice of right. taking this faraway base. But the problem is that in this current meta with Protoss going for you know, some kind of an 8 gauge variant, uh, or now probably he doesn't have 8 gauge because he's still adding Corsairs. Now he finished. But I think this, this big attack, next attack is going to be with Goons. That is going to be super hard. Let's see what happens. So Duol is coming now, but he's gonna see three Sunkens. I think this is enough to hold this. He can always drone drill to make sure that nothing connects. I don't think Duol can engage this. Oh, now he can when Lynx leave. But Lynx go back. He needs to pull the drones. This is okay. I think I think if he targets, he targets Archons perfectly. He's gonna be able to hold. As soon as the Archons die, the drone drill is gonna save it. So this is a very nice hold by Gornage. I don't know if it's a hold yet, of course, but it looks like a hold for now at least. Question is, oh, but the Corsairs, oh my god, this is gonna be disgusting. This is what I was like. Nine Corsairs plus one. Okay, now he tries to connect. So he's gonna kill the ground with two Sankens and drones and links. He should clear the ground. But the Corsairs are gonna kill all the Overlords. And most of his drones are dead. Next timing is with Goons. And with Goons, there will not be dirty tricks with drawing with drones. Pretty a good clear, to be quite honest, from Gorinich. I was surprised that uh, the world went for it. As I looked at it, I didn't think he can attack it. Three Sankens in such an hour choke was too little. Uh, sorry, too little, too much. Too little Protoss there. Still making a... Uh, okay, he's actually expanding, that's also okay. Was he supposed to transition to Hydras? No, this is supposed to transition into free evolution Hive. Uh, so you just need to mass upgrade, take four base and Hive tech. This is, this is what you want to get out of this build. But uh, because he went uh, Muta and he took so much damage, He's super late to this. Now he can start free evolutions, hive uh, and lurkers, and uh, ultimately go uh, just mass hydra, mass link, lurker. Right? That's your go-to combo. Oh, 
Okay, now the links are not out in position. So this is dangerous. He did wait too long. He didn't pull the drones. Every time you see this in Zerg, you need to pull the drones. He didn't pull the drones, that's over. The Sankens do no damage if Zerglings jump on them. So this is GG. Too slow reaction there. He could have held again if he pulled the drones, but he would have lost some drones again. So just too much. Too much of everything, too much damage from Gorinage so early on. Is Gorin like a defensive Zerg player? I've heard people say that. Yeah, I think he's a macro player, but uh, he often mixes in some kind of a bizarre timing with Muta or Hydra, and he kind of goes a little bit both. I don't think he's so... I think maybe defensive is fair, but he doesn't necessarily go very heavy on economy behind. What's your favorite map, man? Yes, sir, I come again. It's your favorite map. Oh, it's my favorite map. Is it Fighting Spirit again? Is that really your favorite map? Fighting Spirit? Oh, it could be. I think it's a good map. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a... I like it personally. It. I'm not like a, you know, um, Fighting Spirit maniac or how we call that guy. <laughs> but uh, I respect the map and I like the map. Yeah, because okay. I think it set like a new standard meta, right? Oh, maybe. is that get is is that is that, I haven't seen the name, but is that uh, Gamma Govan? Yeah, Gamma yeah. Govan? How did you know? That's it. I I know from spawns immediately because I played that map a thousand times when I was a kid. So, that is Gamma Gamma Govan. Okay, so that's a super imbalanced map. <laughs> this is the period from rush rush hour. Uh, the the previous map we talked about, you know, the one where that had uh, this bizarre natural base that was uh, a little bit. Uh, why you could say so this is even worse because here you actually have a path that goes above your natural base into your main so we have your natural base and then there is a ramp be before the entrance and a back door to your main base so as a Protoss player there's no way in hell you fast expand because Zerglings kill you and that's why the world consciously about this fact makes a pilot in his base because on that map, you cannot fast expand. And Gornich also recognizing it, making sure that he gets a threat. And that actually should favor the world greatly. So Does this map advantage I... Zerg or Protoss more? Or it's kind of even? The map advantages Zerg very much. Yeah, so that's why Gori uh, picked it. E yes, correct. But the problem now is that Gori knows that the map only favors Zerg if Zerg manages to abuse this uh, backdoor and he makes quick links. Oh, but actually Gori, okay. I thought the wall goes for two gate, which would be the perfect play for him. Because two gate not only is mandatory on this map in a sense of you need to make a pylon in your base, you can't fast expand, but also counters nine pull so hard and nine pull is what Gornich is playing. But this is going to be tech, so very interesting game ahead of us. Ox. I'm actually really keen. The world can play so many things from this. He can play a river drop. He can just play Corsair. He can play two gate uh, speed lots. He can play a like, fast Dark Templar. There are so many builds. He, he could die. No, he will he not die. So. No. Um, oh, he doesn't know that this is coming. No, but he's going to meet the, the links with a probe. So he's going to. I think he's so, okay. Yeah. Yeah, he says. So he just needs two zealots and a probe, and that's okay. Two zealots and a probe will hold it. Of course, the drone is very annoying to make sure this doesn't happen, but he's gonna be there in time. Yeah, the second zealot though, it should be around out now. Where's the second zealot? No, that's perfect. No, this should be okay. No! Oh, he can let them in. Oh boy. When we started this series, Ox, I said those unorthodox maps would probably favor Goranich, while any standard map will heavily favor the Vault. It's funny to see because we, we, we see exactly that. Some links in the base, they're dying though, not doing so much damage. Goranich needs to be careful. He... Um, there's a lot of noise dogs, by the way, from your mic, I think. I'm not sure if that is uh, intentional or unintentional. It's like wind, it's like wind, basically, kind of like. Yeah. Okay. 
But now you're clean. As you're talking, it's clean. So for some reason, it's just uh, end of play. Okay. Wow, he makes a battery in a very or weird place. Dewalt decides not to reveal his probe to check if it's more links or is it, uh, you know, something else. But Gordon is very committed to making Zerglings. <clears throat> not sure about it because he's getting some pretty bad trades so far. He's not picking up probes. He's losing single Zerglings here and there. He's gonna kill the... Okay, this is gonna supply block uh, the walls. It's actually pretty interesting. If he gets speed, actually, no. I think this is actually pretty good. The wall is very conscious about it. Makes four. He needs a cannon here. That's probably correct. The gun is gonna get out. This is gonna zone Zerglings pretty well. That uh, shield battery actually will be really OP. Does it have power though? It's unpowered, right? The shield battery right now is probably unpowered. Now it's gonna be powered, so he can finally recharge the shields. That pylon that died was actually powering it. And again, I mean, it seems like these links are not doing anything. And now with Gordon, sorry, Dewalt adding a cannon, this has to stop. So very nice hold by Dewalt. He recognized this was just muscling all in. And because of this, I hate to say, but Gorn is in huge trouble. The two links hiding there, they can't do anything. There's a tricky gateway for DTs being warped. So Duos is gonna make temporary archives and the DT in the Gorn's base. Wild pressure in the front. Yeah, that's gonna be a gateway and the temporary archives. 100% gateway built. Uh, yeah. The fun part is now because the wall has to go to cannon in the mineral line. He doesn't really have to bother any backstops. Because the cannon like this, you can hold any amount of zerglings if you just use your probes correctly. So there are no backstops, backstops possible. And that attack there is gonna get to the base. He needs to use like yeah, all the larva to kill this. Ah, uh, this is very rough. This is so much favored for the wall now. It's shame to see it because I think even with the nine pool. Versus the tech, Gornich definitely had a chance to just play a normal game. But he decided to Zerg all in and I think at this point there is nothing to do. Because the tech is just gonna hit too hard. Okay, he cleans up pretty nicely. Actually 14 drones to 21 probes. The question is if that DT is just gonna straight up kill him. Or if he's gonna still be able to, uh, you know, uh, play a normal game. Because Mutants are strong. Oh, did he see it? Oh, he's seen it now. Oh. I have, I have a very my, a little delay to use once. <clears throat> yeah, I just recognized I switched between windows. I'm back with you. <laughs> no, but I, I, I didn't realize because I had a bow. Uh, and you're right. Now I'm back at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to say DT, but uh, look at this. The game is... Uh, it's just the tables are turning all the time. Uh, Mutas are absolutely the best answer here. So uh, Goranich with uh, spot on decision making. Uh, nothing better than Mutas because Protoss with no Stargate. Okay, he's actually adding Stargate because he realizes if I do, if I if he just plays Mutas here, I'm dead. So it's gonna be like a forever two base play for uh, for the walls. He can't he can't expand ever. He only has to go all in now. He needs to make like five six Mutas. Oh, the T is sneaking by. Links are out of the position, but he knows he's there. He will also confirm Mutas. He needs to just evacuate all the drones. All the drones needs to go to the natural. He can't fight this. He can't fight this. He needs to leave, of course. One more drone maybe gonna die. Yeah, no, the T is gonna run around. But he confirms the Mutas, so he needs to make one more cannon. He also has two Templar, two to fight Templar. Okay, another cannon is made. Okay, three cannons. That's uh, maybe even too many, considering he doesn't have a second gas yet. But the Archon is gonna be a great catch on the DT. Getting only one link at the end. Another DT, perfect play by the wall there. Oh my God, this is doing damage. And this one can evacuate through that back that I was talking about. So that ramp leads to a mineral only, a buff your natural base, and there is also a way out of there. That uh, basically goes around the natural. Mutas are out, but Corsairs and Arkham? I actually think this is pretty even now, to be honest. I think so. I think this got pretty. Yeah, but 13 drones is not a problem because it's one base Protoss. Now he's already 16 probes, as you can see. Hey, LML. Welcome hey, back. Hey, what's up? Do a thing, mate. We're trying to think what's happening here, and I think this is pretty even. It's all gonna come down to the attack. Two Sankas being made. There's a bunch of links. If he gets that Archon, 
Going pretty okay. And the wall is trying to expire behind this. This is amazing. Okay, there is one Sanken. Should be able to hold this, I think. Just focus on the Arkham. Yeah. Yep. Oh, he Easy clear. Oh, the Arkham dies. So, I think I like Gordon's position now more. I think losing the Dark Zone was a tremendous deal, but oh. now again, Dark Temper is getting in, but there are Overlords there, eh? so maybe one drone. One, two drones, Max are gonna die. One drone, two drones, okay, three drones, no control Zerglings. Four oh. drones because of that. Oh. Wow, and that was a big deal. Yeah, of course the GT gets stuck at the end, as always. <laughs> but still, four kills was way more than he should have gotten. I feel like the world is not... Not in his, uh, it's not in his waters, kind of like, I mean, he's sailing some, you know, un unknown seas here a little bit. Yeah, you also see Trying how to he make... sends, uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, he sends the zealots to the bottom right, so he can finish the cannons in time. That was pretty good. That was decent, but the part where I'm a little bit uh, worried is that, of course, now there are a lot of mutas, but he went both for Corsair and Aggression with Archon. Maybe that was a little bit inconsistent in a sense of kind of made, you know, a double answer to Mutas, but tried to be aggressive with it and then died to Sunken, basically. Maybe just expanding or waiting for a critical mass, like, you know, a triple arc on attack or a double arc on poster attack would have been even stronger. Now Gornich, in theory, he can, you know, before he gets like five, six Corsairs, he can keep on doing this. He can easily add some Scourge and be really annoying with two gas now also. <laughs> There's a Zilla trying to sneak it with sneak by to the main base. He's gonna target the drone. The drone is gonna escape. Very nice click there on mineral line, gliding for the Zerg and it's not losing it. So the game is stabilizing, but I mean it's 23 drones. I think economy of Garnet is really good. He also has got well he doesn't have got a tech advantage, but uh, his tech is okay. He's making lurkers, he's got quite a few mutas with skirts, he's picking up probes. Economy wise they are very similar, supply equal. The world is really heavy on tech. He's adding Dragon Ranch already. He's, adding, he's he's basically getting all the upgrades, but his economy is small and he has got very few units. This can go anywhere. No, I think it's okay. But now he's attacking also while doing all the upgrades. This is uh, risky. I think this is too risky. Two Arkham, although that's nice. Two Arkham is good. Yeah, probably even enough. That's not yeah, a lot of circling, sends a mutas yeah. no chance. Yeah, I thought this was just one Archon, but now with two Archons, this is actually uh, super intimidating. <laughs> that sunken colony. Okay, this... <laughs> yeah, the sunken is uh, hitting from the low ground there. Yeah, it defends two bases at once. Very nice. But there are some well, now Gornage. Gornage is making lurkers. These lurkers will be able to run up you know, their ramp and be able to deny the mining in the natural base. And Gornage, sorry, Dewald is not even thinking about adding a rubble. He's still in the Muta game, adding Corsairs, making sure he doesn't get any big uh, Muta Scourge past. He knows that Gornage has been on two gas for a long time now. So he's trying to make sure that, you know, he doesn't die to Mutas. But Gornage, very clever, mind gaming his opponent and making Lurkers. Four Lurkers already hatching. It takes one to get to that high ground and make sure that you don't mine any minerals for the next two minutes or so before he gets in the server. And no Robo yet, he still thinks it's Mutas. Well, it is Mutas, but not only. Now Robo is starting. Taking that position, oh, so annoying. One Lurker is gonna be able to clear it, he just needs one. Oh, he definitely sees Lurkers. Yeah, he's I wonder the if lurkers, he's killing. But... Yeah, this... but I think... I'm not sure what is Gornish doing because he doesn't want to fight that army ever, really, with Lurkers or without them. He just needed to run one Lurker to the base and one Lurker to, uh, to make sure he can mine and then trap that army inside by ramps. That was the quick fix of this, but now he's not getting any of this. The army escaped, the ramp is secured, so Duald is going to get a comfortable position. I think now... Now Ox is uh, it's a big advantage by Duald, basically. Yeah, he's I'll pulling ahead an economy and an army size, but he needs that observer. Now the world is where he likes to be. Two base economies, side rated, make units, 
build units continuously, add upgrades, add tech, move out, you know, add an expo and win. That's where the world likes to be. It doesn't like those shaky games where it's a lot about mind games and, you know, little micros here and there. It doesn't thrive in those. But this kind of situation, that's where the world is really scary. So, for some reason, Gornish is all in on this again. I don't know if the obvious speed is for a potential drop, but drop is not going to save him with so few uh, drones. He doesn't really have a choice, but I don't think we've passed the point where uh, the world needs to invest into defenses. A big contain is not going to help versus free base Protoss. That's the problem too, right? So yeah. it feels like we're back into 2001 again with this kind of play from Zerg. This kind of economy and this kind of play is Zerg from 2001. But the problem is that Protoss is now on 2021 meta. Yeah, it's a Zerg is only on two bases, so how strong is the contain going to be against the three bait Protoss anyway? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't uh, look very strong. Well, I guess he still crashes, right? Still gonna crash. Yeah, just the round of zillows from this defending. And the problem yeah. is that because this happens, this only happened, the only reason why the world didn't crush it is because Goronich was only making units for a couple of minutes. But because he's been only making units, he has got no upgrades, no economy has been happening, right? So winning, he won the battle, but he lost the war in that one. Yeah, GG. GG. That's a funny game. A different game, for sure. All right. What turn rate you think they were playing on? Because I know DeWalt's, they're both in Russia, but DeWalt's in Siberia. It's not 24 high, is it? No, they, they were playing 24 low. 99% 24 low. When you play against DeWalt, what turn rate do you get? And you're in Denmark, right? Yeah, I, I can get almost 24 low, I think. Almost 24 low. No, but DeWalt is not so far. The wall is not that far. Isn't he's he not like... in like Vladivostok. He's like he's like middle of Russia. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I mean, don't remember. Russia name. is pretty big. <laughs> no, but it's not like Vladivostok or Novosibirsk. It's not like this. It's like uh, halfway through. So, yeah, and uh, and Gornich, I think, is in Moscow. I think I'm not sure if he's in Moscow. So easy connection for these guys. So do all free to Gornich. What is going to be the next map? So I guess, uh, wait a second, this is loser pick? It's loser pick, right? So before you tell me, I will, I will, okay, you already show me now. Okay. Oh, sorry, I see it now. Okay. Oh, Three it's one. Core Hall of, is it, is, is it Core Hall of, uh, Cor yeah, I know it immediately. Okay, I know it immediately. I practice that map also. Core Hall of Ceres, Crisis, Ceres, something like this. I don't remember. It's Core Hall of something, right? Yeah, I remember. I, I know exactly the layout of the map. There is a very weird path around, um, you know, the edges of the map. The, the ones, the, the outer corners we don't see that goes just across like a long, long path you walk around. And this is oh, another yeah. map that is absolutely impossible to build a base, second base. So, of course, it has been in, in, in main pylon. And uh, just to laugh a little bit about how the game has changed and the level of the game. So, there was a pro gamer, Kingdom. Protoss player, and he had a very infamous game on that map. So um, we will soon see that. But when the world is gonna scout and go to his natural base, he will. You will see that in natural base there is a lot of space. And Kingdom on that map playing PVZ decided to place two gateways in his natural base to rush his opponent. As you can see, we're going to that, and he would place those two gateways to the left of this probe left even left where the minerals are you don't see the minerals because just past the minerals but it would be there where the scouting probe was the problem was in that game and i think that was a wcg game he placed the gateways and the pylon in such an unfortunate way that all the zealots spawning out of the gateways were stuck <laughs> and that was that was the pro gaming level back in the days even though these were the best players in the in, a, in the world he just you know spontaneously threw a 9-9 gate kind of like a frontal 9-9 gate, or maybe it was in the sense that he was actually top left and he was trying to cheese the... I think it was maybe the other way around, right? So he was actually top left and he was cheesing the guy top right with the gates in his natural, and he was trying to hide them from the scouting pub that we've seen now, but he hidden them in a way 
but he couldn't produce. All right, we have a nine full speed here. So uh, kind of, I understand this choice, right? Because there is no way of uh, expanding and there's no ramp. But again, the wall with two gateways. Perfect answer to nine pull. So he just needs to be careful with not losing a pylon on his production and not losing too many probes. Is this forge again? Wow. The wall is really uh, worried about his uh, Zillot Micro. Should be able to hold it even without a cannon. He could have even pylon and probe and Zillot his uh, entrance. And then he wouldn't have been able. I think it would be, this would be enough. All right, it's gonna come down to micro, uh, to micro, LML. What do you think about this? Uh, I don't like it. It's, it's so open the map, the main base especially. So I think the cannon is actually a really good move. Otherwise, he can never get out of his base. Yep. Oh yeah. By the way, you also have that expansion that you see Gorinj has scouted to the right of his base. There's a, but that's just yeah. a mineral only. So in theory, you can take that base, but basically every base you take is completely exposed and it has got paths to it from other sides. So there's no way of taking a base that is just, you know, you, you cannot take a base that's going to secure another base, right? Every base is a liability on this map. Yeah, and it's so, so far away from the main base. Just look at the distance. It's not like an easy reinforcement. Yeah, it's an old map. Okay, yeah. so DeWalt managed to secure, but he's only on 11 probes. So I'm really curious what he's gonna do. Now when he added this uh, forge and, uh, and gateway, I hope he's just gonna add a cannon and he's just gonna go and to make sure that the backstab doesn't kill him, but he can still lose the gateways, right? So I'd yeah. be very worried for the world. He's 11 probes. This is the kind of a game again, where as we talked about, the world really doesn't thrive in this kind of games. So he basically goes all in on Zealots, hoping that he's gonna catch Gornage of Guard. And uh, he's just gonna add another cannon next to gateways, but this cannon is doesn't gonna do anything because if 12 links jump in as a backstop, they're gonna eat that cannon in under two seconds. I think this is Gorin's game, to be honest, because he sees everything. He has. Does he still have an overlord? Yeah, he has an overlord there. He knows everything. He sees that the wall is not making any more units. Okay, he can even defend it. I would go for a counter attack, but maybe I'm too aggressive. He will also be able to defend it. Just spam links and eat all those Zillas alive. There are no props for the wall. He built two cannons. Sanken is going to be in time also. So this fight is going to happen under Sanken in just a second. Yep. Way too many that is, That's going to be a clean clear. Yeah, clean clear. Uh, GG. Yep. <laughs> Tip out. That was rather anticipated. Interesting, Gorinj was building an evolution chamber. I think recognized that uh, the hold was pure zealot, just wanted to go Carpace here, which would be a very strong counter, obviously, too, versus a one base uh, product like this. Could you have gone plus one with legs and then rushed? Um, I think he should just kept on making props, first of all. Then he could have done something out of this. But definitely not making. 11 or 10 zillots and just two cannons and try to win the game. So he could have tagged, he could have just tried to expand to mineral only. I mean, there were options, I would say. But for sure, it was a Zerg, for sure, as still for sure, a Zerg favored map. Um, yeah, for sure, a Zerg favored map. Hey, did Koget sign up for your uh, tournament, LML? Uh, I don't oh, the think Fine so. Spirit one? <laughs> yeah. yeah, the crazy tournament. Can I still sign up? Yeah, you have until tomorrow morning. Do you know the format though? I do know the format. It's um, best of seven, best of seven. Yeah, but this is like free play, right? Like uh, we arrange any time with another player, we play over two weeks or so, right? And we report yeah. the results, something like this, right? That's right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So you guys don't crazy. have to rush it. So it's but actually it's possible to... Uh... <laughs> yeah. I, I can't believe people uh... are signing up for it. It's really funny. It's just on one yeah, map, you know that too, right, Koga? It's, it's just on Fighting Spirit. Yeah, but that's the best map. I told you that, Ox. This is no surprise <laughs> well, I you people were joking. are signing because... You know, look, if this was Caster's tournament, then probably not. But this is players, this is like, you know, this is like people's map, Ox. You have to understand this. Best of seven, best of seven on the same map over and over again? Oh my god. This is gonna that's be so Fighting funny. Spirit. This is, this is people's map, I tell you. This is the map, like, if you were to take, like, 
what is one game you take to a lonely island and you say StarCraft and then the guy continues and like what would be the map you take you can only play one map everyone well, takes fight there's, you know in the 2v2 community it's it's played on every single game almost so they, they don't really care about the map I mean Circuit Breaker is a weird map in 2v2s in some ways they just play Fighting Spirit so much and you know Circuit Breaker is like a standard really old map yeah but, Fighting Spirit uh, is yeah. good for many reasons but it's a different topic Anyway, um, I think I signed up. Uh, I hope I will show up. Um, I will probably need to join, yeah, join some Discord. So right I think you have until tomorrow. Yeah. I have already joined, so. And join the Discord server and the challenge page, yeah. And I did. So I'm in. So for all the viewers that love fighting spirit, there's a great tournament organized by LML. It's a $2,800 freaking prize for playing infinite games of fighting spirit. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's no better price than that. Are you playing Zerg playing or Terran game. or Protoss? Are you going to switch it up? No, I'm playing Zerg, Ox. I have switched to Zerg and I'm going to okay. keep my promise. Yep. <clears throat> I'm back to the game. About it. Yeah, back to the game. Tau Cross, uh, one of my another favorite maps for sure. So I actually like the picks. These are, you know, these are uh, like, like, you know, before Fighting Spirit, maps like Tau Cross were extremely popular. There was a period of time where we had like, a, what was it, like a trifecta of maps. It was like Gaia. Tau that Cross. map and this map and Fighting Spirit are made by the same person, Rose of Dream. Yeah, Fighting Spirit was much later period. This is much before Fighting Spirit, right? Cross is much before Fighting Spirit, and again, this is the times of like WSG 2004, five, where Draco was playing and this kind of stuff, and it's basically Gaia, Tower Cross, this kind of maps, and there was also Paranoid Android, which is of course infamous for sake of being completely unbalanced and ridiculous. But uh, but oh really? Okay, yeah, Par yeah, Paranoid Android was uh, yeah. Actually, I played a Marvel's SPX, not a game. But anyway, back in the game. So Ford Expand by, uh, no, sorry, is this Ford Expand? Yeah, this is Ford Expand by the Walt. So again, conservative, but knowing Goranich, knowing that Goranich is probably going to try some tricks. And I think that is uh, clear to us to say now. I mean, every game that Goranich won, he won with tricks. And um, and every game he lost was a standard game where he tried to, you know, make his third base go into mid game. And that's where, you know, the wall just gets too big too quickly and he can't punish him, right? So uh, got some good prop harassment on the natural base. Managed to move that hatchery, the first hatchery to the third base. Gorant is now gonna bail another hatchery with his additional drone. Made a couple links, so that's good for the wall because he ended up anyway made a cannon. This is a weird wall, but it's uh, this one looks solid. So it's a weird wall. This map actually has got some very weird walls. We will be able to easily hold it now. Yeah, two props. Okay, still four links. So he needs to respect that. But looks like a good hold. Gas coming in. Everything looks normal so far. Uh, no big deviations from play from either player. A bit too many links for my taste from Garnage, but maybe he had a plan. LML, you're a Protoss, right? Uh, yeah, I used to play Protoss. Oh, what do you play now? Uh, nothing. I don't play anymore. I just cast and organize. Yeah, and I play, play other games. <laughs> yeah. All right, but what do you think about that map and Protoss PvZ? Oh, there is hydrogen. Oh, hydrogen. Yeah, that's actually what I would expect on this map. I, uh, I really <laughs> actually think that's gonna be a mind game. Knowing Gornich is gonna start Lair in his natural now, as this is still going. I don't think he's gonna go Hydra. I think this is gonna be a mind game. I yeah, think he's gonna go he, Lair. Yeah, he's gonna he makes go Hydra the next the probe. So. Yeah, I think he's gonna be a Lair. I don't think he's gonna make Hydras. No. Nope. Maybe it's a I double don't... mind game. He wants. I think it's. He wants to yeah, see if he game. makes. <laughs> yeah. I th yeah. No, but it's a double mind game. It's. It's probably right. But because the, the thing that works for him is that the wall has got an absolutely ridiculous wall. And he cannot fit many cannons there, so the amount of cannons will have to be so, you know, so ridiculous to hold it, and he will still lose the gateway and fort very easily. So there is some sense in going Hydra anyway, but I would only make five Hydras. 
and just go draws from there. Five Pyros is good. And also, I don't know why this probe is not chased by all these links. I don't get it. When you have so many links, you can actually kill that probe as you chase it. If you yeah, have like one link, you can go a base scout, that's why. Yeah, I think he's just gonna be showing only drones in his... Oh no, he's showing a Hydra already. So actually, I think he shows everything at this point. This is a little bit... Oh, it's no mind game, but he's... No, he, he's, adding, he's adding an Evo Chamber, so this is a mind game. Yeah, so this is a complete mind game, there's no aggression. He's only gonna make Hydras, so Duol somehow overreacts. But Duol isn't overreacting, he's adding two only. Two Canos, and the, yeah, the Evo Chamber is probably for attack, and it's just gonna be mass Hydra from there. So... The wall, uh, sorry, Gordon is not even planning to go to tire 2. He's gonna add plus 1 attack and he's gonna have to go mass Hydra. 6 hatch mass Hydra before roll. That is his plan. Can work, but I think Gornish may be ready. He's going for like a 30 Hydra or his blast plus 1 before Storm. That's the big plan here. And he can make it. He's he has this timing. It's a very narrow window before Storm. But uh, I think Gorn, sorry, the wall is not interested in going Storm, so he's gonna have that. But he needs to start. Uh, sorry, it's gonna be five hatch. It's gonna be six. It's gonna be five hatch hydra for me, just with plus one and a bunch of drones. Also, zergling speed. So that is semi all in for Gorinch. Almost all in. There is a world also where Zerg goes Carpace here, because um, plus one from Protoss is later. And you can then hold different timings with just Zerglings and a bunch of Hydras. But the plus one would have been too late, maybe, in this game. In what scenario do you use it? I mean, when you, if you want to go Cracklings in late game, but otherwise, if you want to go Hydras and Lurkers, you will still go for, go for the plus one range, right? Yeah, so... Um, this... Back in the times, you would often play plus one Carpace. Um, it's, it's very good playstyle. If you have some kind of an economical advantage from the beginning, you can go for this. And then you basically fall with plus one Carapace and Hydra Lurker. The thing is that Zerglings really trade well versus Zillots if they have plus one Carapace, right? Versus plus one Zillots. Um, the problem is that current metagame and the maps... Oh, sorry, the big move out. Oh, and they will... Sorry, Gordon is not ready. This is gonna... Oh my god. He's gonna lose everything, so... Yeah, but basically, I mean, he played a suboptimal build here, right? Very much, very suboptimal because he went for the Hydra, but then he went for Tech, and then he went for Echo, and he did it in wrong order. We should go for Echo, and then for Tech, and then for Units, right? But he went for Units and Tech and Echo, and that way you always don't have something. In the so he's in a lot of trouble now. Even this Zealot here will be able to do a lot of damage, maybe even kill him. I think plus one is ready, yeah, so he's dead. He can't even hold him. This is too many hydro. It's sorry, too many zealots to even. You don't lose all the drones. So a bit of uh, dubious decision making maybe from Orange because of trying to do everything, but in the reverse order to mind game the world. But the world never got mind game. Just went two cannons and a corsair. Seen everything, just made a lot of things in one. So not much to be said about this game. The pro won it. The scouting pro won the game. Yeah, and he really looked away in the wrong second, <laughs> and all his fighters died in the front anyway. Okay. So this could have helped a lot with defending if he got a good strong draw. True. Um, Ox, I need to drop now too. Thanks for sticking More around. Time, so 400 IQ casting by Koget. Azalea, another of my favorite maps. So all the maps from the times. All the maps from the good time. I hope you get to cast okay. again for VSL too. Everybody really enjoyed it. It's nice that they have like different kinds of casters this season. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, but uh, I know uh, you enjoyed busy. it too. So yeah, it's just no time. I mean, I'm in a time of life where. <laughs> no, it's good, man. It's good, kind of busy. Like, you got a family. Missed, uh, yeah, it's yeah. least priority. I know. Thanks for joining us, my friend. Have a good evening. Stay warm. Thanks, Ox. Stay safe. As always, yeah. thanks, Ox, for hosting this and dedicating your time to this scene. So, yeah, really appreciate it. This is great. So, thanks for the viewers. Enjoy. Have a good night, a good day, wherever you are. And thanks, LML, also for joining. Cheers, yeah. everyone. Bye. Thanks for casting. Bye bye. Bye. All right, LML. Let's take off our clothes. Finally. Uh, if you abandon me right now, I would probably forgive you. That's fine. 
Folks, I try to get all kinds of casters today, but sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a miss. But uh, it was cool having you, LML, today, and uh, Kogit. Yeah, I Work. guess it's a miss since I'm here. <laughs> well, if you stick around, that's great. Otherwise, it'll just be uh, no casting and just observing, guys. Otherwise, you have to step up. Um... It's amazing how many games I've watched, how many casts I've listened to, and I just... I'm stupid. I don't understand this <laughs> game. Kogit was talking about so many things, and I'm just like, wow. So all this is really going on? I guess when you just don't play the game, it just doesn't sink in. I'm partially educated, people. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's a complex game. A lot of shit especially, is uh, Yeah, especially if you're on S-ranked, like Kogit and Quark, then... They understand the all the little things, right? Yeah, so there's just so much more that you take into consideration. But even you, I mean, you're like an A-ranked player, like you understand a lot more. Well, not more than our f rank watchers, but yeah. I guess that's why uh, most viewers enjoy like listening to you guys cast. Otherwise, they have no idea what the fuck's going on. And then there are some personality <laughs> casters who don't actually have that much knowledge, but they're just kind of fun to listen to. Yeah, like Obviously you. not me. <laughs> Do you like this map? Uh, what map is this? This is Azalea. Also an old map. Uh, I think it was Vydra against oh, what, Stork, I believe, and WCG, who just had to play this map over and over for a tiebreaker, and Stork kept losing on purpose, so he doesn't have to face another Korean in the quarterfinals or something. Is that right? That's funny. Yeah, they played so many games. It was so funny. Uh, R.I.P. Stork. Yeah, and... Uh, he's alive, he folks. He just retired. Yeah. <laughs> he's just quit StarCraft. Competitive, as far as I know. Yeah, I get their life back. Their parents finally forgive him. Talk yeah. to their family members again. Korean parents oh, yeah. fucking hate StarCraft people. I don't know if you've ever spoken to Korean parents. I have. I have some Korean friends and stuff. Like This game has ruined their children's lives. Because they worked very hard to uh, get South Korea to where it is. North Korea used to be the much more prosperous nation. And obviously over the decades, South Korea has become uh, quite an economy and stuff. But uh, they see the newer generation as not working hard enough. And as video games contributing to that. So. Yeah. Well, my best friend is actually Korean and lives in Korea, so. Ouch. Uh, I thought we were your <laughs> best friend. Uh, oh, that's yeah, cool. I mean, uh, my other best friend, of course. So many best friends. I can't nice people. Track. Good culture. Yeah, I wanted to visit him last year, but then COVID came along. So there goes that. And you're not welcomed in their country, I don't know. Yeah, not right now, anyway. Not ever. Oh, wow. No, I'm know. just kidding. But they, they, they are pretty homogeneous. I mean, there's, uh, you yeah. know, nationalism yeah, is pretty to... ingrained in some cultures. I might be sticking out. Tall, really bright, white, pale, beard, bald. You got German going for you. For me or against me? I think for you, most people have this like idea of the Germans and Japanese as being like technologically advanced, blah blah blah. Yeah, and very like a serious. good reputation, right? Despite some historical. Yes, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, the scouting probe actually goes down. So, right now, Gorinich has the option to do whatever he wants to do, which is every Zerg stream at this point in the game, and every Protoss is nightmare. Because Daywald saw that the gas went up, but he doesn't know what the follow-up is. Is it going to be Hydras, a lair, mass circlings even? There's so many options, and it's going to be an evolution chamber. <laughs> an evo chamber. Now, that's, now he's going to throw off Daywald so much with that. So that so make... I think that will mean that he is going to plan for the late game. Which is reasonable, considering the map. He gets an easy 3-3 basis. 
uh, and the Protoss does too. So you can really drag this out. What I'm wondering is what you're wearing right now, I don't know. Literally nothing. Yeah, same here. Top or bottom? Or both? Let's switch. It's a little too cold, I think, to be completely uh, naked. Well, uh, we got actually... Uh, Shrinkage. We got heaters in here, so... Not as cold as it is outside. It's actually just one degree outside right now. My pants is my heater. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, Keeps the temperature just right. It doesn't for me, sadly. I'm, I'm always cold when it gets cold outside, so it's why lost all our away. viewers. We, we have negative 20 people now. <laughs> yeah, because they're, <laughs> they're all busy with other stuff right now. After hearing us talk like this. Yeah, I hope DeWalt and Gory never watch this. They probably won't, but... They would never forgive us. <laughs> or maybe they appreciate it. Well, he but drowned we up. won't be as uh, as negative as Quark might be about oh, the game. Oh, I'm sorry, right? folks. I uh, I made the resource bar disappear for a long time. <laughs> we got 31 drones. How's my casting? Pretty good. I'm actually 30 right now. So, so that's that. Uh, we can see Gorinich going for a wall in the front, which is pretty common, especially on maps that protect so many bases at once. You would see this on other maps where you take another main base. And that's actually something you can do here too. You could just take another mineral only at a second hatchery and then make another wall. A lot of defenses and you have three bases for free. Of course you're susceptible to drops after that. So you don't want to spread yourself too thin. And he gets an overlord. There uh, are no Hydras out yet, one Spore Colony to protect the other Overlords, but that also means that there is no detection anywhere else besides the third base. And he doesn't know that Gorinich is going for drops. Reavers, Reavers is actually, if I remember correctly, a very common strategy on this map. It used to be really popular because you have the three bases for free, so you don't have to worry about expanding as soon as you usually do, and get, that gives you a lot of more, a lot more time and power to do some right. harassing. Seems like you can maneuver around the different bases with the shuttle pretty nicely. Yeah, and Gorin is actually taking the force base that's right next to his third, so that way he has a shorter reinforcement path. But at the same time, his fifth base will be a lot harder to take. Wow, three zealots just scouting <laughs> and running away. Hey, maps now have like 11 mineral patches, right? So a lot 11. of these old maps that we're seeing, they have less mineral patches, and I'm sure that has some sort of effect on the build order or whatever that you want to do. Yeah, that too. The old maps have generally eight mineral fields, and the new ones have nine, sometimes ten with oh, one or two of them having okay. reduced minerals. Not a huge difference. Yeah, that would be way different. <laughs> Yeah, but some of them have 10, and the 10 says like 500 or 750, so just half supply of minerals. But it still makes a little difference in the early and mid game when you have stronger mining. And they've just decided that they're going to leave it at 9 or 10, and it's not going to change again? Because that's really an interesting thing to me. Like, is that going to change in the future? Or somebody said that it, it changed the number. Like, they increased it because of, uh, I think it was Ivan. He said, like, PVT was Imba or something, and that was a way that they could have fixed it, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the reason, but at some point it was just a cut, and then they went from 8 to 9 basically on every new map. But if you look at the natural, I think this one has 8, and the new ones have 7. So I don't even know how big the difference is right oh, now, considering that everyone goes fast expand in every matchup. Hmm. Okay, here comes the speed shuttle. It's not anywhere close to the uh, Corsairs, so that can divert the, di uh, the attention of Garage. Damn. And... Oh god. One, two, three, that's a lot of dead drones. Oh, what an a escape. Or is it? Yeah. 
I had to just try to catch the shuttle, but the shuttle gets away easily. And an another drop. Oh, what's that? Three more drones? And he finds another base. But all the drones escape just in time. Yeah, I mean, dropping on this map, it's so convenient. Maybe you can say that for all maps, but, you know, the expansions are all so close. Yeah, it, it was basically just one flying pass and he got three bases. Yeah, but now that uh, Gorinich knows what he's up against, he has uh, defenses everywhere. And he's probably going to get uh, Burrow next, which is very popular against this kind of protest strategy. So you can just burrow your Hydralis, and then when the shuttle comes in, you unburrow and snipe it immediately before the Protoss can even unload anything. Yeah, maybe Korean pro gamers. Can foreigners do that? I'm just joking. Uh, yeah, even on B rank or A rank, I've faced it plenty of times back in the day when I when I played the strategy from time to time. It's funny. But uh... Amateurs are pulling off really fancy moves, and they're like floating 3,000 minerals. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> Sometimes that happens, right? You want to floss and do something really fancy, but it's like you have yeah. no units. You have also four the unborrowed yeah. uh, hydralis and 2,000 minerals. Yeah. And, and you might not even unburrow them in time many yeah, times. Yeah, exactly. It goes horribly wrong. Yeah. Uh, but it's the same the other way around. When I play this strategy as Protoss, I mess up a lot because I'm you're not used to playing it naturally. And then you get a lot of over minerals and not enough gates. And these TTs are just cleaning out this main base. And yeah, Gorinich notices when two drones are left, one of them dies. The spire is gonna go down next. Does he have overload speed yet? Yeah, he yes. does. Uh, the spire goes down either way. Queen's Nest finishes. So we are gonna see Hive, and the Hive is gonna be followed up by 3 3 upgrades. I mean, if DeWalt had taken his third, his mineral only, I'd feel a little bit more confident about his position. I think Gory has a pretty good economy, right? I don't know. Uh, no, I, I don't. Well, he had he had a pretty decent economy until the DTs arrived. I mean, 40 pro drones is not yeah, not ideal yet. He wants a few more. Oh my god, that scarab was massive. I wonder if he has the upgrade for Reaver damage. Can you find a Reaver, maybe in a spring? Of course he's building right now. <laughs> Do people get that upgrade? Uh, if you go for Reavers a lot, if you want plan on making a lot of Reavers, then yes, it's definitely worth it. Especially against Zerg, because the splash damage will kill Hydras, which doesn't happen when it's not upgraded. So it's basically necessary if you want to go for a lot of Reavers. There's like two Reaver upgrades, right? Is one of them is um, more capacity for Scarabs, and then the other yeah. one is damage? Exactly. One Which one gives... would you get first? Uh, always the damage. If you expect your Reavers to fight such a long fight where they have to use all yeah, five Scarabs, sense. plus the ones that were making while they were shooting, then yeah, Which then one's that's a cheaper? weird fight. I think both of them are 200 200, 200 200s, yeah, they're kind of expensive. They need to nerf that. Yeah, I'm, please. I'm just joking. Or maybe just add a second one so you can get plus 50 instead of plus 25. Yeah, exactly. Discount. Okay, so they were just slow pushing with those Reavers, sending in a couple of Zellers which don't even have speed yet. But that's a lot of Lurkers. Is the wall like blocking his expansion? Because he didn't even take it, he took another base. Maybe he wants a gas. Maybe that's more important to him. Yeah, that was really well done by Dewald. Gorinich was trying to surround him, coming from all sides, and Dewald stepped back and then took the fight where he was in a better position. Okay. Is that the shuttle also going down to the natural, I believe? Yeah, there it is. Uh... Two reverse dropping. Oh. oh my god. That's I nasty. I love watching that. It's one of my favorite yeah. things about watching StarCraft. And you know what? Even people who don't play Protoss and hate Protoss, they love watching like Reavers and Storms kill workers. Yeah, we all because love it. 
we all know that Reaver shots are so random sometimes. Like, look at that. It yeah, I guess that's part of the fun. <laughs> yeah. The Reaver shot goes... The it goes always does, a man. Like, pool and then way back. It's, it's so bad. But you can drop them right behind the mineral field and zap them through. They have to be kind of close to the workers. I've seen Scan do that. Yeah. They have to touch the mineral field in order to shoot through it. The way this... Like this. Like you just saw. The Scarab spawns basically on top of the... Mineral field and then it can go through it. But while Gorin is all his units back in his main base, they were just trying to attack, but he gets sandwiched. There are a lot of fighters coming from behind. They would immediately notice this. He storms most of them and they're all dead. Uh, just as they die, the reinforcements from the main base come, so that's the perfect anti timing for Gorin But he still holds. It's enough. The goons are no match for the Hydras. And there are just more goons coming. Uh, I think this is a moment that he might be able to take the Vault's expansion? He could, yeah. If he was Maybe. pressuring forward, he could definitely could. What's bad for Gorinich is that he lost so many of his Drugs. evolution chambers, but he remade them and he just started the new upgrades. So he's going for that 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Oh, he only has one carapace and one value attack. Is that a uh, Quite the opposite. <laughs> I'm wondering why he is only on one, one for his links. Yeah, yeah, he did have the economy for it, and he yeah, has he like went... four evolution chambers. <laughs> yeah, so he even gets a force upgrade, which we don't know about. Yeah, but he started such an early evolution chamber, so he was planning for the late game, but he seems to have only gone for plus one Hydras with that. And he had the early Hive, which you would also think comes in for the carapace, not the plus, uh, not for the ranged attack, usually. Oh, I think he sniped some of those Corsairs. He gets a good scout of the main base. He sees that there's no Ultras Cavern. No Defile amount quite yet. No Spire that got remade, at least not in the main base. Oh, and Gori wanted to expand top right. Oh, I think there's a drop at the fourth base. Oh, it looks like oh. he got some drones. Yeah. I think it's, it was a storm drop from the sound of it. Yeah, look at Gorinich drone count it's it seems to be consistently below 40 and every time it gets above 40 there's another drop killing a bunch of drones greenwich must be so annoyed at this point <laughs> just from making all those drones all those lavas that could have been units are just drones 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 all the time yeah and they all tries to deny a fifth space but there's nothing there right yet, trying to expand even. Oh, there's another drop in the main room. Oh, oh man. Boy. And once again, he drops below 40 drones. His drone count is cursed. And a DT drops too. That means he will get another scout, sees that there was a bunch of stuff getting built after his Corsair has left, and he's gonna get a bunch of drones probably. And he's sending one DT to the uh, third base, to the mineral only. And there's another drop on the fourth base probably coming in. Oh jeez, yeah. Christ. Oh, oh, all those drones coming in. Bad. Yeah, that would have been the perfect storm. Gorinich down to 30. He just, he has to use his lava for drones and nothing else. He's only making drones right now. And there's a DT killing more drones in the nature. They're drones. And in the main base. Ooh. Man. Yeah. And behind this Dewald is just getting stronger and stronger. He has three bases up, three gases. He's getting to 170 supply. He's almost maxed out. And Gronich keeps staying around 100 because he's just losing drones, making drones. Plus minus zero. He's just not getting any stronger right now. Oh 
more drones dying. Down to 36 again. And here comes the shuttle. <laughs> I was just waiting for you to look at it. Uh, he catches a few more. That's gotta be tilting. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I mean, if you spend all your time making drones, basically, it's making two defilers, free scourge, so he can get rid of that shuttle and 12 drones. That's all he's making. All right, this might be the death blow. Yeah, Devil is taking his mineral only now since his natural is getting mined out. Maybe he just wanted to save it for when uh, when he was getting low on economy. Because now he's down to one mining base right now. Another drops this time is Reavers instead of High Templars. That's interesting. He's <laughs> switching it up? What is this guy? Perverse? Yeah, two Reavers. Hit you with Reavers first, then a DT. Oh, switch it out with a Templar. Gornich must feel so abused after this game. Like three different ways he can kill workers. <laughs> yeah. It's funny if he drops zealots next. He, he, he uh, had two zealots in his initial drop, which also killed some drones. Uh, video. So, <laughs> a goon drop, arc and drop, that's next. There's not much left to drop. Maybe a dark arc and <laughs> a drone. So gross. <laughs> yeah, all drones. All drones. <laughs> I would also be very BM. The tries to attack, but Dark Swarm protects those lurkers from the goons. So, Garnish can stall for quite some time. He's also expanding in the bottom left, but the Vault is expanding in the bottom left as well, in the natural instead of the main base. I wonder at what point one of them is gonna find the other one. I think there was only an Overlord really in the main base in the bottom left. This feels like every every PVZ I've ever seen on this map. Fifteen years later, and it's still the same kind of game. Yeah, so like taking those four bases and being able to defend. Rotors going for reavers first. Oh, look at all those storms! Some of these lurkers are a little too clumped. Gornish sees that too, and he unburrows and repositions. Plague's almost done. Yeah, once once play kicks in, it's such a game changer for direct fights. But those circlings were just wasted. Oh, Goronish found the base in the bottom left. That's good for him. If he can kill it before the reinforcements come there. And Goronich finally has his economy up and stable for quite some time, but his supply just doesn't want to go higher because of these fights now. Oh my god, I caught it just in time. Yeah, that's what we get for claiming that his economy recovered. <laughs> I mean, you can't even really protect yourself from those drops, right? There's so many angles they can come in from. Yeah, he can drop in so many places. Look at that. Just comes in a different way to avoid any possible scourge. Oh, nice. So they will def manage to defend his fifth space in the bottom left. And then try to counter attack and wow, those scourge men, they are so stupid. Oh my god. No. It'd be funny if we have no more replays to show after this, because just Gory was like, fuck this, I'm not playing this guy anymore. <laughs> uh, oh, did you see that amount of uh, robotics facilities in the fourth space? Oh my god. That's a heavy investment on Reavers, man. He just and wants shuttles. to crawl over there. But he's slow on gas. He needs a force probe on his gas on that base, because it's so far away. To get a little more. But those Reavers are expensive as hell, and he's going for so much gas. He's getting Archons, Reavers, Dragoons. It's just too expensive. Okay. Well, going to manage to defend the first ambush on this base by getting Swarm and Zerklings, but the second ambush might break him just in time. 
might be the perfect timing, but everything except for the goose is dead, so here come a few more zealots. But I don't think those are going to be enough. Dark Swarm is just too good against Dragoons. How does that Reaver get there? Did he walk there? In the center of the map, I think. Maybe he added a decent. Well, maybe he dropped it, yeah. So here comes another shuttle with more Reavers, so... Yeah. What are you gonna do with your base if it has no drones, right? Oh, actually, I think there's been more channel. than 100 drones killed. It's not an exaggeration. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, he plagues just after they got picked up. Boom. Yeah, he can't defend right now. Oh, now he's trying to go the normal path and just run units in there, which could potentially work, but he might be a little bit too slow. But maybe he can take uh, Dewalt's base. So it's base for base. But Gurnish supply is just too low and he has not recovered from all the lost drones recently because he was so busy making units to defend. And without Swarm, he's not going to break that. Especially with Reaver Storm. It's already hard enough. Yeah, I would say this game is just has slipped away from Gorinich at this point. But GG. He agrees. He had a lot of gas at the end. 3.7k, but he just didn't have the economy to support anything else. That must be so frustrating. Yeah. Certainly, the same and in so PvP when you for the at the same time. Because you know, like worker kills is one of the most satisfying feelings ever. Oh yeah, when you get a good storm drop, man, you are rock hard afterwards, for sure. All right, we made it to the end, folks. It's the last map. Tell them what it is. So Ragnarok. Can you click on the preview? I this is one of the few maps I don't even recognize. Damn, man, that's that looks like a terrible map for Zerg versus Terran. For the Terran. <laughs> it just looks uh, like a terrible map. I mean, back then they didn't really yeah. have that many skills. I'm not even sure if SCM Giraffe was available. I don't think it was. Uh, I don't know when that came out. I only joined StarCraft Online in like late 2004. And I think it existed by then. Oh, okay, then maybe I'm not. But this map, on the other hand, is just terrible in every single way imaginable, at least for today's playstyle. Okay, and we got cross position. Goranich in the top right, and Dewald in the bottom left. This is the last game, right? So Goranich can still try and almost even out the score. Or Dewald can get double the points. I think Gori's done yeah, pretty good considering one it's Devault and this is really active Devault. Like he's been streaming and playing a lot. He he usually is online, but I, I think recently, for whatever reason, he's just been active more. Yeah, I see his stream a lot. Whenever I go onto Twitch during like the morning recently, or afternoon. right? He's always on for many hours. So for Gori to take some wins off him is pretty impressive. I don't, I don't think Gori's as active as he is. And obviously there's a uh, skill gap. Yeah. I mean, Goranich seems to be very uh, well different in his play time to time. Like sometimes he performs a lot better and then sometimes not so much, which might be because he doesn't play so much, but he still manages to play high because he's a really good player. He knocked out Devolt, I think, last BSL, right? He lost against Jayun and then against Goranich, I believe. Oh yeah, that's right. And Gorinich has been top 4 in BSL before, so he's definitely really good. Yeah, so I it's, remember uh, it's just 9 games. It's not it's not a best of 9, it's 9 games every single game is going to be played. 
Sorry, what were you saying? Uh, yeah, Gory is part of uh, eSport Fund as well. So it's been helping out the foreign community in terms of organizing, financing events. Yeah, there are a lot of people on eSport Fund and a lot of people who we don't, who most people might not even know who organize stuff if you don't participate in it, like CPL, people who keep right. Team Liquids, uh, Liquipedia up to date, people who organize teams. There's so many people doing so much to keep the scene alive. Everyone is investing their own time. So It's, it's a really good point. Yeah, I, I wasn't really aware of the Liquipedia editors until they, they started doing some for us. I was like, oh my God. You, why especially the bbt yeah. which was long and uh, i've worked on liquipedia articles before it's arduous the script like it's, it's not easy especially if it's like a different format and it and it's fast usually like bsl results for example they watch the games and immediately enter everything that happens yeah it's great about bsl that they do that oh, no, it's it's a uh, liquipedia editors it's not us so all the props go to them. Yeah, I think if you click on the history tab, you can see who's made contributions or revisions. Yeah. Do you have editor status? Uh, I don't think so, no. I've not uh, really done much on there. I've they gave it to sometimes... me. Really? I have no idea what I'm doing on there. I, I've made some simple ones before, like for our stuff. And like edited bonnets, but... I think nice. I added one map recently for some of for some tournament. Then you but must have it. Like if you have it, I don't think you need like somebody to approve your revisions. Uh, yeah, my mine need to be approved. They always Happy have to be okay. So they would want to get as we saw on all the old maps where you can't fast expand and five cellars are just walking into the Gornish's main base. Oh no, Gornish tried to surround him, but wasn't paying attention and they would kill a bunch of the circlings that's way too much damage this was our bread and butter back in the day the two gates micro intensive i miss these days yeah nowadays we see the micro from the one gate opening and since i was a sunken colony built in the main base they were just retreating to the later His salads are really spread out, that's not good for him. That's really good for Gorinich right now. And he makes the most of the situation, but I don't think he has enough circlings. Gotta be a close one at least. Yeah. Okay. Down to one zealot. But two more zealots come in. I don't think Gorinich needs to worry about his main base right now, thanks to the Sunken Colony. If he ever finished it. Yeah, he did. He needs one in his natural too. Oh, he's, well, he got speed links, so I think he's fine either way. He doesn't need to do that. Would be a waste of economy. So if he holds this... What then? Did he drone up? Probably. I mean... He's, yeah, he's, he just made two drones. Is he behind, he or more. it's kind of even? Uh, I don't know, I think it's pretty even right now. I should they want to post a lot of Zerglings, but he lost all his salads without, without really doing much damage besides killing Zerglings. And he still has enough to defend his own base, so it's really more of a stalemate, both of them tagging. Oh, there's one Zerglings that snuck around. That's nice, but I don't think he's gonna get any drones. Uh, Gronich is paying attention and he is, he is sending Zerklings back, so he saw it. Oh. Yeah, then it just goes to hide. Oh. <laughs> he went a little too far and gets around it. But they were just moving out with more, and I don't know if Gronich saw it since he had all the circlings away and the overlord wasn't in range but he might still be able to take this fight that was a good surround by the circlings 
speedlings are really important for this kind of scenario because they reach the zealots so much faster when getting stuck on each other that your damage just increases so much. Oh, gets the zealot. Down to one zealot. And it's gonna be Hydras behind this. <laughs> that's a that's Gornish Rams that is being blocked. Yeah, but Dewald is not gonna stay. He knows he's gonna get surrounded if he stays. So he's just gonna walk away, try and catch some of these overlords with his course there. And then get a scout off. This thing in the middle is pretty cool. Yeah, pretty fancy. There are a lot of cool dudettes that you don't usually see, but they're, they're like signs and shops that you can put into stuff. Or at least it looks like there's a shop. Yeah, I noticed one on Plasma, Tracy's Armory. Yeah. Like uh, Marines, I guess. Or a boutique store. A booty store, yeah. Probably. Okay, all the overlords are in the front, so no DT can snuck in into either base. And the Hydros are all just underneath. Except for the new overlords, which are getting sniped right away. Oh, he's actually... He wanted that overlord kill, so his DT can potentially do damage, but he needs to be able to sne sneak in. I don't know, are there any Hydras left at the Overlords in the front? Or did they all go after the Corsairs? Uh, one Hydra. So the DTs can just walk in. And they can just kill the Hydras too. More units coming in. Oh, that Overlord coming from the bottom. Gives just enough vision for the DTs to not be able to kill the Sunken immediately, but probably going to be able to snipe that Overlord. Yep. But he just runs into the next Overlord. Oh, he wasn't paying attention. Well, these Overlord kills by themselves are pretty good. I think yeah. the Waltz got this. It looks really good for him. Like, he has DTs in every base. He just has so much going on in Coronet's base. See, now he has to pull all his drones because he knows he can't defend. Coronet's defense, he holds pretty well actually. But he gets a DT now. It's hiding. And the other one is hiding in the main base. <laughs> Scumbag protest. Wait, the DT actually got away? Nope. He's dead. Get sniped. Yeah, I mean, you can't yep. really expand on this base, this Protoss. Yeah, you can't. You definitely can't fast expand. He can defend now, when he gets a forge, and he can make some cannons, maybe further in the front, so even if he gets breached, he has enough time to bring his own army back before the Hydras reach the Nexus. Yeah, it looks like that's what he's doing. He's building something in the front. I wonder if he forgot about that DT in the main. He might, but it's as long as there's an Overlord and the Sun Colony, he's no, probably he going not. to be safe. Oh, you mean... Uh, this one in the corner. It was Dewalt. underneath the resource bar. Yeah. So you meant if Gorinch forgot about it. But you meant Daywald. Yeah. Well, that's a few too many drones for that gaze here. Does he have any High Templars yet? Yeah, there they are. He desperately needs those. Storm is almost done. Uh, speed is done. He re That's a lot of Zerg units. He needs that Storm. Yeah, this would be cool finish. before he wins this, actually. Is he going to get one? Oh, he got one. That's so good for Goranit right now. He could potentially win this. Oh, that's oh. not good. The storm was very strong. That more Zerglings flood in. He didn't swallow that storm. 
Yeah, I bet a lot of these zealots are low HP. So, yeah, two of them are basically one hits, one is yellow, and two are full HP. Yep, <laughs> there go half the zealots already. That's it. Time to run the other way. <laughs> they just chase, uh, chase each other all over the map, over and over, back and forth. So got a spire. I think Bori might have won this. Maybe? Uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a, if you combine the zealots with the cannons, that's a lot of DPS, and that's not that many hydralists. Well, does he need to attack? Uh, he doesn't even know if DeWalt has expanded or not, huh? True. He probably thinks he has. Or well, is that he's expanding right now, but... Uh, yeah. I wonder if he knew that there's no expansion, if he'd be this aggressive. Oh, he snaps a high temper. Oh, he just clicked. I can just... Oh! Yeah. That's, I mean, he didn't kill it, but two High Templars down, basically. Two Storms gone. Oh, he, oh no. The Storm whiffs completely. He hits nothing and gets his stuff taken out. The Zealots are not reacting, besides him seeing the, the Hydras move in, considering that he stormed. Uh, I think Dewa's army is way stronger right now. He needs to run. Let's run back to the other base again. Seven Hydras are building right now. Those are desperately needed. Such a narrow pass to fight in. Which is perfect uh, for Gorinich, since he, uh, the, Ze uh, the Zealots can't surround the Hydralis right now. But he needs to snipe the Archon, which he's doing. Oh man. Okay, maybe he doesn't need his drones. It looks like he does. Best map GG. <laughs> okay, so Gorinich loves this map, guys. Well, I mean, there were a lot of maps in this. Uh, that's just a map pool for these show matches. A lot of these maps are very old school. Basically all of them, I would say. Some more old school than others, but that one space map we saw earlier, that's another one that's just so weird and nobody knows how to play on it. Yeah, obviously. I'm surprised some of them agree to play in these uh, showmat series because a lot of these players hate hey. old or new maps, you know? Yeah, but if you put enough money on the table, they play everything. I mean, look at FS Mania. Guess. People are willing to play so many games <laughs> yeah, as long as there's enough money in it. Point. Yeah, guys, sign up for that, please. I want you to suffer, LML. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be... Thousands of games of Fighting Spirit just in that one tournament. Um, you have over 40 participants? Uh, I think uh, we are reaching 60. Jesus. So the finals aren't going to happen until like April, right? Yeah. It, it looks like it. It looks like it, yeah. I mean, I'm going to remove a few players because they are not... I can't identify them on Discord. But we are still gonna stay with the same amount of rounds. More than 32 players. Okay, well, I try to spam around and let people know that they need to register twice. But... Yeah, after I posted on, on Team Liquid a list of people who are missing, a bunch of them joined, joined the server. So, I also picked players who didn't have support name and that fixed a few of them too so we're on the right path 61 players signed up right now Kogat is the newest one quarks the second newest one it's gonna be fun yeah we'll see how many of them you know hang in there yeah both I because of the many... format and just their like schedules and stuff but yeah i feel sorry that you're actually organizing it i mean uh... It's okay. I don't have to play. <laughs> yeah. I hope it's not a nightmare, though. Mm. Probably not worse than anything else. I mean, the most stressful thing is Chobo League in the first week, with like sometimes 90 players. Everything else is really 
Have you heard from the guy who sponsored it? Like, did he just disappear? Uh, yeah, he moved <laughs> me on on Discord, and I tried to add him again, but he didn't accept my request. And yeah, he has also not replied to me on Team Liquid, so it's like, okay, goodbye. Thanks for the bunny. Everyone in the community is grateful. Okay, so that's kind of funny that he just like made everyone suffer and he disappeared like we could have changed the format or you could have right but you kept true uh, to your word despite this yeah. guy just like disappearing we don't even know who this guy is his name is wind beach man well, i know a lot about him so as you know <laughs> i gathered a lot of information yeah, but he's not really known in the vw community right he just randomly appears on tl one day i think yeah i wonder if he has other accounts but uh, he also joined some other communities and did the same thing with donating money for some Command and Conquer tournament and some really? other Really? Was it like yeah. really weird and stupid like this one or? Yeah, it was also a weird format. Like I want to know, is, is he trolling? Is he serious? Or like, he must be, right? He yeah, must I mean... be. The combination of best of seven, best of seven plus fighting spirit, which a lot of people hate. And it's just like the same app. It, it has to be like trolling. That's so funny though, he's like, he has some sort of perverse sense of humor. Where he's <laughs> like, if I throw enough money in, they'll do whatever I want and suffer. Yes. Yeah. And he's Dance not monkey. wrong. That's the sad part. <laughs> he's showing I mean, how pathetic we are as a community. Well, not pathetic, but we appreciate everyone who contributes. Yeah, we do. Let's and it's not it that like way. that much money though, you know what I mean? It's just like, it, it is I'm... in some ways, but it's relatively small compared to like other games and... well i mean i guess we did, we are not gonna reach several millions like uh, league of legends or dota or whatever but for stark for the starcraft community it's a sizable tournament i guess i'm just joking i'm not trying to belittle the uh format um <laughs> well you don't have to belittle it it's just uh <laughs> it's still ridiculous system. either way everybody knows it he knows it i talked to him about it uh, <laughs> He's very well aware of it. I think everybody has understood the format, but I'm interested to like hear their feedback after they play their first one. And TVTs, I have no... I mean, I think they're going to rush every single game. It has to be. BBS against BBS in the middle. Yeah, the next I, I honestly <laughs> would. There's just best of sevens. Yeah. Best of sevens. I wonder how many people are just going to be like losing two of them, not even close. And then they are just disappear because they, they can't be asked to play more games. For each match, how many games is that? Like minimum and maximum? Uh, between 16 and 49. Oh my god. <laughs> so either you get like beaten 16 times in a row, which is already so demoralizing yeah, that you don't want to play anymore. Or you have to play 16 is if you 49. got four O's, right? Yeah, four four O's. Uh, okay, and 49. If it's like four three, yeah, three four four three three four. Somebody four, three, told me course. like you need to tweet about this. You need to get it on the news. Like people need to hear about this because it's just so crazy. It's so bizarre, <laughs> and nobody would understand what we are talking about. <laughs> it's funny. So yeah, anybody still listening to this? Register. You have until tomorrow, I think. Yeah, tomorrow Fine. morning, about 11 a.m., if I'm awake by then, otherwise it's going to start a little later. Uh, I'm going to sort out, do some seeding, and then start the tournament. There's a thread on TL.net, you can read about it. Uh, FS Mania, Fighting Spirit Mania is what it's called. LML yep. is organizing it. God bless you, and you've contributed to the prize pool. It's co-funded by uh, eSport Fund. Yep. That should be cool, man. It should be. Yeah, I might also, uh, Shalong has some um, uh, record prediction feature. I've never tested it out, but I'm going to test it out. And depending on how, how it works, uh, I might uh, give the winner some money too. Yeah, I think that's just being too generous. My opinion, though. Maybe it might be, but it gets people involved. So might, more people might watch, you know. Yeah, but do they deserve it? Yeah, definitely. Bunch of bums. They're, they're all so cute. They deserve it. 
I don't know. Okay, but, sure. Uh, there's something else starting next year, right? Uh, the New organizing. World's Map Contest. They'll be submitting maps. I know you're probably talking about the race. Or events. Yeah. The one I, I was going to let right you go because I know it's late and you've had a full day and stuff. I put it on the screen. I should have had it up earlier when we were doing the bonnet thing. Me who set. Uh, yeah, that, that should be kind of fun. Just three days. No mirrors. Uh, we'll see how many broken live games we get. Hopefully not too many. Hopefully, yeah. Koget playing too. First he casts and he plays. Yeah, a lot of people feel like the Zerg team is uh, underrated. So that's Eon Zerg, Koget, who are seen as inactive. Uh, Siki is kind of funny. He messaged me. He's like, <laughs> Eon Zerg question mark. Koget, are, are they playing? <laughs> like, are they retired right now? I'm like, they what? promised that they were trained for this. Otherwise, they would have given the spots to other people. Yeah. Eon Zerg is, play is streaming Call of Duty right now. <laughs> Yeah, I know, and he plays Protoss when he's played StarCraft, so it's oh, really? confusing as shit, but he, he said I have plenty of time, and uh, I guess when you've been playing this game as long as they have, uh, you could probably prepare for it. The first games are January 15th, I guess, that's a Saturday, so, you know, still have over a month. Yeah, I mean, if you play for a few weeks on this e level, even you'll if you train, I think, like... You know, what do you expect to... You can shake off some rust, but I think there's like a point where playing so many more games... First of all, you might not even have the time. Second of all, it just might not like improve you that much. You know what I mean? So there's just a minimum amount that you just need to play before the event to kind of get back in the groove of where you are. Yeah, and then be consistent playing a certain amount every day or something like that. And you don't want to go crazy yeah. gun ho about training, because if you do and you get your ass kicked, I don't know, it kind of like looks bad. It's like, it's like me back in the day when I used to really, really train and play a lot and, uh, you know, get my ass kicked. Yeah. Against some really good players like Guru and Elki. Um, but it was disheartening because you play as many hours as they do, but uh, it just weren't as good. And back then we didn't really, I don't know, at least from my memory, we didn't really blame races or like latency or stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that's a new age. Complaining. Let's blame the turn rate every single time. Not even time. Lost even Temple. But people tell me, yeah, back then people did complain about Lost Temple. I don't really remember that much. I mean, we kept playing it over and over again, so. Yeah, I mean, what choice did you have, right? was the I best just... map out of all the shitty maps that Blizzard included in the game. That's that's my era, my friends. I think I retired right before like uh, Luna and stuff came out. So I'm, I was kind of missing when uh, a lot of you guys were... I, I think the old school Brood War community that I'm familiar with now, they started playing like mid-2000s. Some of them maybe like 2008, 2009, you know what I mean? Uh, I haven't seen, well, maybe I just don't know a lot of people who've been around uh, since like 98, except Drone. That's that's the number one name that I recognize. Uh, he was kind of famous back in the day. Too. Anyways, yeah. it should be fun. Uh, we'll, we'll see how the Zerg team does. And then Dandu, Mihu, and Terror, and the Terran team, Bonnet, the Valtoya, Protoss. Yeah, Protoss and Terran teams are really stacked. And then, yes, Zerg team, two of them are inactive. Ziki is really strong, of course. So, how's, <laughs> really the, how's the money distributed? Like, does the team have to win? Is Ziki, like, is Ziki's price depending on Eon Zerg and Kogat's performance? Yeah, or? that's that's the thing. I think okay. uh, 1800 goes to first place. And um, the, the member of the first place team that has the most wins gets more than his team members. Uh, almost twice as much. Okay. But uh, second and third place teams, the prize is distributed equally. Uh, there's there's a guaranteed prize basically because there's three teams and there's a third place. Uh, second place prize I think is five hundred dollars or five fifty or something. And third place prize I think is two fifty. It's not bad. Each player is responsible for I think six best of uh, threes. Mm -hmm. all live so it's, it's not like 
a lot of games. We'll see how it goes. Really grateful for the uh, anonymous sponsor, uh, who also came up with the idea of doing something like uh, KCM Race Wars, and I uh, just modified the format to make it kind of like a round robin. A lot of people were asking for another BBT, which I'm not able to do, but this will be kind of cool because they all have to play each other, um, and no mirrors, and it'll be uh, live games. Yeah. So yeah. All right, I should probably let you go, my friend. I know it's late there. Thanks for uh, yeah. coming to I my mean, rescue. One thirty a.m. I always go to bed at like two a.m. Even when I have to work, so it's okay. No worries. Any other shout-outs? Uh, yeah, catch BSL. It's back next weekend. Round of eight is starting. A lot of good matches. Yeah, I gotta check out uh, the groups. Yeah, it's. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff. I think the both uh, the Chinese players actually are facing each other. Oh, they got placed in the same group. Uh, yeah, they got placed. Well, they got the ranks in their groups so that they have to play each other in the next round in the round of eight. And I think that's the second match. First match is going to be Bonnes against. Let's see where the page loads. Bonnes against Siki actually. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, that's gonna be a good one. And Dewalt is actually on the opposite side of bonus, so they can only meet in the finals. Which would be... Which I think Dewalt might reach. He has Hawk, Gypsy and Oya on his side. Gypsy has been performing really well, but against Dewalt, it's always a different beast, right? So, I think, I think uh, it's, it's, it's the most interesting, the most uh, difficult season yet. A lot of big names. It has to be, right? Yeah, I agree. And there's a lot of players who are active right now. The Walt, I'm sure, is really hungry for a BSL win. He, I don't think he's ever won first place. Uh, yeah, last then season he got he in there. Yeah. Gypsy played amazing. Uh, even Terror got knocked out. He's the BSL champ, so... Yeah. Really yeah, cool. Just... And, and besides the BSL seasons, you guys had amazing um, other events. Uh, Europe versus North America. Or South America, you had uh, China versus BSL, like those were just like awesome. Really spoiling yeah. people. Yeah, I was Zero is really putting in a lot of time into the Pro League and uh, yeah, everything that goes on. Good for really him, impressive. man. It's a thankless effort. Like, I know people enjoy it and stuff, but it's like a lot of like people have no idea until they, you know, do it themselves, organize something, and you just realize how time consuming it is and how much resources and stuff go into it but uh, I guess I don't know organizers get some sort of gratification from it and you know viewers players and stuff are really thankful and there's this whole thing about keeping the game alive that's that's basically how this game has sustained itself for so many years so seeing that when I came back that's probably why I stuck around I was like wow people really care about this game like, they really sacrifice to keep it going so I, I really like that it's a nice human virtue but yeah. I still think a lot of people are bums <laughs> <laughs> and they don't deserve to be spoiled with uh, so many free services True. half joking but uh, I do want to see more support of BSL uh, I do want to see more support of shield battery you know if everybody just donated a dollar or, you know just financially supported just a little bit uh, I think the game and community could be someplace else or there would be less pressure on a few individuals to you know finance and stuff like that. yeah especially with eSport funds not going to be there for us next year yeah and I don't know how long the CRVTs and pure pads and you know individuals who dish out thousands of dollars to help events meet their stretch goals they're you know if they disappear what happens yeah i mean i guess that was uh, a problem for us for a long time yeah my theory man is because i i've asked for donations i've received it and people who've donated before like 10 15 20 dollars they're always like i'm sorry this isn't a lot of money and i always have to tell them like 
you know, ten dollars is a ton of money compared to zero, which most people are giving. So I wonder if there's like a a general feeling among people like if I donated a dollar, five dollars is it's kind of too little or wouldn't mean much. But no, it yeah. does actually mean a lot. And if everybody did that, um, it would help. But I think this is probably just like a fantasy dream of mine. Probably never comes true. Maybe right now you have woken up so many people and I'll, I'll keep go trying. Donate a buck. My one dollar donation trains on BSL have failed so far. Yeah. Sometimes like you don't even see the message because like zero ran an ad, and there's a stream delay, right? So I don't know. I'm like fuck. But w yeah. one day we'll get a decent one dollar donation train going. Maybe get up to twenty dollars. One day. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your nights. Yeah, you too, man. Okay, let's shut this baby down. Okay, baby. You in bed. Yeah, I will. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, Ox. Bye-bye. <laughs>